I was in the house of the sign of the hammer and sickle. Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content. Anywhere on the internet, promise, swearsies, it's just a fact and it's totally science. Go ahead and look it up. <laughs> I implore you. Today we're jumping into r slash neckbeard stories. My goodness, this is actually a post that came from r slash neckbeard stories. But don't worry about that because I was DM'd on Discord. Dude was like, hey, can you read this for me? I was like, yeah, I got you fam. I've had a lot of DMs on Discord, so we've got some new sagas getting queued up. This was the first post in a uh, bourgeois beard, <laughs> which is just uh, a pretty ridiculous name. Some sort of communist going to community college, and that is just always adorable. <laughs> you know, I'm not here to crap on anyone's ideology or say this is right and that is wrong, but, you know, come on. <laughs> Mostly, I'm just here for that beard cringe, and hopefully that is exactly what will be delivered today. I do appreciate you guys joining me. So, without any further delay, I suppose let's get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we could dive into some of this neckbeard stories cringe. Bourgeois Beard, Part 1. A less than brave meeting. Brave meeting. <laughs> hey there, gang. Hi, valuable excuse 3288. Oh, you did one of those like email username generation things. <laughs> That's unfortunate. But it's not as bad as some of the other randomly generated names I've seen, I suppose. So, uh, welcome to, to Reddit. <laughs> this is what we do here. I've been listening to a lot of Red X, hey, for that sweet, sweet cringe for some time now. <laughs> and I figured that I ought to try my hand at writing a tale. I really have to give some love to Solid Adept, Ramtide, and A-Roxers for writing some of my favorite stories and getting me in the mood to talk about my own special monstrosity. Oh, my hands are rubbing already. <laughs> It's time to put it out into the world. To protect myself and others, I've decided to use a sock puppet. So let's not waste any time and we'll talk about Bourgeois Beard or BB. Oh, it is a sock puppet account. I had assumed that you were new to Reddit because I bring a lot of people to Reddit. But um, yeah, <laughs> welcome regardless to the channel. How about that? This story is from many years ago when I had finally completed community college and transferred to university. Oh, he's a university beard. That doesn't make it much better. <laughs> I was an excited young man. I had left the nest and I was stretching my legs for the first time in the real world and finally leading my own life. Good job. Things were coming together, or so I thought. I was gonna be staying in an on-site dormitory New here, I asked the passers-by where I could find my room number. With the new semester came many new faces, and plenty of them were unable to help me find my final destination. <laughs> That's alright, just let them know that if they do find the room, then they can come and kick it too. Sometimes, maybe. Some of the more seasoned students, however, knew these halls well, and they were willing to help see me to my room. Good. Well, that's a relief. <laughs> What bothered me was the end of every discussion, guiding me through those halls. They would whisper, good luck. <laughs> a friendly wish or an omen of things to come? Well, time would soon tell. And after I found myself at the door of my apartment, I knocked upon it. Inside, the voice of a virgin cherub, male, called out for me to come in. <laughs> Is that the right voice? I guess we'll see. It was unlocked, and as I stepped inside, I was greeted with a pungent aroma that permeated the apartment. Oh yeah, it was the right voice. <laughs> like some deviant concoction of unwashed armpit, stale food, and fungus-infested loins. Oh god, sent a shiver up my spine. <laughs> I retched as I looked around the room to determine 
Who could have stank up my dorm with such a delightful smorgasbord of fetid scents? With tears welling up in my eyes, I scanned the place and surmised that, yeah, it was a fucking wreck. Beneath a mountain of discarded domino boxes sat a curiously stained sofa, speckled in crumbs that had been torn open in one corner, exposing the soft, cottony stuffing inside. A tower of empty beer cans sat in the corner of a kitchen that I had not yet found the courage to brave. Even though the curtains were drawn shut, the yellowing of the walls was readily visible by the dim light of a single, incandescent bulb hung bare. On the walls, numerous propaganda posters from a bygone conflict depicted Russian soldiers beneath a red star. Oh boy. <laughs> I was in the house of the sign of the hammer and sickle. Get... <laughs> Hence the name Bourgeois Beard, I do suppose. The occupant, somewhere within, had long since stopped taking care of this place, never mind himself, and there was no telling how long it had been since he stopped caring for either. He must have been a hanger-on from the semester before, and his roommate was either now graduated, or running in terror, or dead from black mold. <laughs> Whoever he was, he had disappeared somewhere into the greater outside world. Now it was my turn to pass through this den. I shouted into the void, OP, hello? <laughs> Nothing answer but the mice and cockroaches. I heard shuffling from the back end of the house. Somewhere, an avalanche of trash toppled over. <laughs> and I heard a loud cry of, Ah, fuck! <laughs> As things clattered and cascaded onto the floor. From an open door at the end of the hall, in a dark room faintly lit by the glow of a computer screen, I saw a shadow fill the frame. It walked down the hall with a grin on its face. <laughs> Oh God, it's kind of terrifying, isn't it? He's trying to be friendly, but given the surroundings, I am already super scared. A My Little Pony t-shirt was tightly wrapped around his swollen gullet. It poked out beneath a massive woolen trench coat that flowed about him with each step. Perched on his long, greasy locks that had begun to dread was a Russian winter hat. <laughs> He's going full commie. It was a curious thing. It was March, in the South. It was already warm enough in this dorm as it was. Nobody needed that many layers, let alone so thick. Was this the Dweller in the Deep, who had infused this place with his fetid ambiance? Yes, I do think so. That's why it smells like armpit in there. He's sweating up a storm under all them layers. <laughs> he wiped his hand on his trench coat. The fabric darkened from some unknown liquid that was on his fingertips. He then held it out for me to shake. Bourgeois beard. That's with Anya. OP. What? Bourgeois beard. Oh, <laughs> it's Russian for hello. I'd never actually learned any Russian before, and I took him at his word. Until one day I decided to actually look up Dosvidanya and learned that it did in fact mean goodbye. <laughs> he speaks Russian just about as well as weeaboos speak Japanese. Rather fitting, I would say. OP, nice to meet you. I'm your new roommate. I guess the last guy moved out, huh? Bourgeois beard. Yeah. He graduated last semester, and so he's out of here. Honestly, good riddance. I'm glad he's gone. I was hoping for a second that I wouldn't get a new roommate. <laughs> but the housing office said they couldn't let me have the place to myself. I guess that means you'll be my new comrade in the people's revolution. <laughs> God, dude. Uh, yeah, I'm cringing super hard already. A bourgeois beard. Your room's down the hall on the left, across from mine. There's a few rules, newbie. Don't bother me while my door's shut. And don't touch my things, or use my stuff, or, or eat my food. Bro, I thought we were comrades. I thought this was all part of the coming revolution. 
We gotta share stuff. We're like a little community, right? It only works on paper. <laughs> he stood there with his chubby hand outstretched. He was waiting for me to grab it and shake it. Through this whole monologue? <laughs> Awkward. I did not do so, because I did not feel like braving the mysterious fluid that he had wiped into the woolen folds of his cloak. I mumbled, sure, in agreement to his rules, and brushed past him, heading straight for my room. I think that's the one and only play to make. Seek refuge. <laughs> I got inside, and I shut the door behind me. I double-checked to make sure that there was some kind of locking mechanism on it, which thankfully there was. Once inside, I examined my new accommodations. The room was already furnished, and there was little left for me to do, except for unpack the couple of suitcases that I had brought with me upon moving in, and cleaning up some garbage that had probably been tossed in there by Bourgeois Beard himself. I finished putting my things away. I went to look for some trash bags to clean up the mess that had been left in my room. Bourgeois Beard, meanwhile, had returned to his room and started playing some shooting game on his computer. Some Rudy Tootie point and shooty. Nah, nah, he's not cool enough for Red Dead Redemption. How about like, uh, Wolfenstein? No, no, I don't want to stain Wolfenstein either. It's probably best if we don't guess what game he was actually playing. <laughs> it's just gonna ruin it for me. My first stop in my hunt for trash bags was the bathroom. Even for a bathroom, it was unusually moist. Ugh. The glass on the mirror had milky yellow, red, and brown streaks on its surface. Probably residue that had been expelled from Bourgeois Beard's face with projectile force and just left there to become a festering texture. Oh god! <laughs> so heavy with the cringe. The lid on the toilet was left down. I considered for a moment opening it, but my better judgment told me to just leave it alone for now. <laughs> a scummy blend of blood, hair, toothpaste, and soap had gathered at the bottom of this yellowing ceramic sink. The drain had even gained sentience. I let the faucet run, and the water burped up stale gas from the deep. A trash can was overflowing in the corner, with numerous crumpled tissues. I didn't venture a guess as to what they could have been used for, because honestly, I already knew. <laughs> Something did strike me as peculiar, though. Despite all the chaotic mess that had overtaken the bathroom, the shower was absolutely immaculate. It looked as if it had barely been touched. And, you know, maybe it hadn't. I'd venture a guess and say, probably it hadn't. <laughs> Showering is not part of the revolution. <laughs> I looked beneath the sink for some trash bags. As I opened the door, several roaches scattered deeper into the darkness. I failed to turn up anything except for several dead insects and a couple bottles of cleaning chemicals that had never been opened. Lissai. I shut the cabinet and went to the kitchen to continue my quest. This is going to end in failure, I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> You think this boy has trash bags somewhere? The kitchen wasn't much better than the bathroom. Dishes had been piled in the sink and submerged in oily black water. Oh god, just like Stealth Beard's sink. Empty beer cans cluttered the countertops. A line of ants marched back and forth from a crack in the wall to a plate with stale, rotting food. The garbage can was overflowing, and its contents, of course, spilled onto the floor. The sick, sweet scent of decomposing booze emanated from it. I didn't open the fridge to examine the horrors that surely awaited me inside there. Instead, I started searching the cabinets for trash bags. <laughs> Luck would have it that I found a practically full box beneath the sink. I grabbed a couple and made my way back to my room. Well, the house is surprisingly well stocked, all things considered. I think the interesting part is that he's just too lazy to tra change any of the trashes. <laughs> like, it's pretty easy, bro. It takes like five seconds. But I do understand that five seconds could be used for the revolution. <laughs> I worked with the window and door open. The cross breeze did wonders on making the place seem habitable. I piled up the trash into bags, and as I worked, I heard Bourgeois Beard getting up from his gaming chair. 
He paused outside of my door and looked into my room to see what all the racket was about. Bourgeois beard. What do you think you're doing? OP. Oh, I'm just cleaning out this room. There's a bunch of garbage in here. Before I got comfortable, I thought I'd just, you know, pick it up. Bourgeois beard. I told you not to touch my stuff. OP. But it's all trash, Bourgeois beard. Bourgeois beard. Yeah, well, it's my trash. <laughs> okay, then I'm just gonna go dump this bag in your fucking room. You keep it, OP. And your trash is in my room, Bourgeois Beard. I needed a place to put it. I told you not to touch my stuff. You don't know what's trash and what isn't. You'll probably end up throwing out a bunch of valuable stuff that I want to keep. Ah, uh, yes, Bourgeois Beard. Which of these boxes holds your fucking stocks and oil bonds? <laughs> uh, well, you want to keep this, uh... Promotional Doritos bag from Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> I promise it's never going to gain in value. You really want to keep it? You keep it in your room. Easy. I looked around. It was plastic wrappers. Takeout boxes full of rotting food. Dirty napkins. Empty beer cans. Outside of its recycling value, nothing in here was valuable. Especially not bourgeois beard. <laughs> OP, well, it's in my room, and I want it gone, Bourgeois Beard. Uh, look, I'll clean it up. I offered him a trash bag. He shook his head, Bourgeois Beard. I I'm busy right now, uh, but just leave my stuff alone, and I'll come back when I'm not busy, and I'll clean it up. Bullshit. <laughs> he left and went back to his room. The sounds of gunfire resumed as he sat back down at his game. Super busy, bro. <laughs> I knew for a fact that he was never going to help me clean this room. One look at the rest of the house confirmed that suspicion in spades. The only person who would do it was me. I waited a few minutes until he was deep back into his video game. I shut the door and continued to clean. It took about an hour to get the room up to my standards, and I filled maybe three or four trash bags in the process. Jesus Christ, dude. I guess in my mind I underestimated the level of trash that he just flung into that room. <laughs> when all was said and done, I went back out into the hall, and I deposited those trash bags one by one in front of Bourgeois Beard's door, and then I knocked. From the other side, I could hear shuffling. The door opened, and Bourgeois Beard stood there. He had taken off his trench coat, but he still wore his winter hat. Bourgeois Beard, I told you not to bother me when my door is shut. OP, I picked everything up and put them in these bags. I'm leaving them here, for you. You're welcome to go through them and pick out whatever crap you want to keep. He's probably going to keep it all, dude. I'm sensing, like, severe mental illness, 100% a hoarding disorder going on here. And I might have some sympathy if he wasn't, like, a total dick about it. <laughs> Bourgeois beard. What the hell, dude? I told you I would clean it up. I had everything organized the way I wanted it. You just mixed it all together. It's gonna take me forever to sort through all this. <laughs> oh, yes. Everything in its right place. I'm so sure. OP. It was all empty pizza boxes in a fucking heap, bro. I don't even know what would be in there that you would want to keep, Bourgeois Beard. <laughs> a typical bourgeois mentality. Wait until the system collapses and we have to burn cardboard to keep warm. And now it's going to be all soaked in old beer. <laughs> <laughs> no way, dude. Are you serious right now? It's gonna take forever to dry all that out. Oh, yeah? <laughs> what if it all comes tumbling down tomorrow, huh? Don't you know, Trump just got elected. Did you even think about that? <laughs> oh, boy, dude. This is such a politically charged episode. I look around years later, guess what? It's the same shit, different day. Did you dry your cardboard boxes out? <laughs> Ha ha ha.
Are you ready for the revolution that is surely around the corner? <laughs> God damn, this is too ridiculous. Uh, OP, it's spring, and we're in Georgia. I don't think we're going to freeze to death, regardless of who the current president is, bourgeois beard. Yeah, but we'll still need to cook once the utilities get shut off. OP, I wonder what a steak cooked on a styrofoam fire would taste like. <laughs> you know that there's like hundreds of trees right outside, right? We could just like burn wood if we really had to. And on top of that, I don't think that this dude has done any cooking in his entire life. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm working for the proletariat. Now hold on while I order some Uber Eats. <laughs> Bourgeois Beard, of course, refused to get the point. You don't get it, do you? That trash is apocalypse gold. <laughs> he seriously has something wrong in his brain. He seized the bags one by one and tossed them into his room to uh, possibly sort through them later, maybe. OP, well, look, man. If you want to hang on to this stuff, can you please hang on to it in your room? I'm going to clean the place. It's total chaos. I'll bring you all the trash bags. And you can sort through them and pile them and keep them with your stuff as you see fit. Bourgeois beard. Uh, but it won't all fit into my room. And besides, this is my house. You don't have a right to handle any of my stuff. I'm pretty sure that this house was assigned to you by the college. <laughs> this is not your house. But OP goes a different route, saying, It's all trash. You can either pile it up in your room, or you can come home and find out that I've taken it all to the fucking dump. It's your call. I am not going to live like this. Bourgeois Beard. You're even worse than the last guy. <laughs> At least he could see the value in not wasting things. But you, I, I bet you grew up with a silver spoon in your mouth. You don't even know what it's like to be poor, do you? I mean, I've known my fair share of poor families. I've been in a poor family and... We never grew up in a trash pile. <laughs> you can be poor and keep your house clean. The two are not mutually exclusive, all right? And then he says uh, bourgeois beard here, but I think it's supposed to be OP. OP, I grew up in a very poor neighborhood. We lived in a trailer and never had much of anything. Roof leaked, cars always breaking down, never went on vacation. Oftentimes, mom and dad would go to bed hungry, just so me and my brothers and sisters could eat. I tried hard in school because my mom and dad honestly believed that getting a good education would make life easier for me and they wanted me to succeed. I did them proud. I worked hard. I got straight A's and AP classes throughout high school, got a job, went to community college, and eventually got accepted for several scholarships after years of work. It was a struggle, but I did it. Nobody has ever given me a free ride or a handout. You fucking let him know, OP. It works if you work it. That's all I'm saying. It's like insanely frustrating that dude presumes that he knows anything about you. He's like, oh, you clean up trash. You're a rich boy, aren't you? <laughs> like, if I was that rich, wouldn't I call somebody to come clean up the trash for me? But whatever. Fuck this dude in general. <laughs> Bourgeois beard. Well, you must not have been that poor if you didn't keep your resources. You just came in here and thinking that you could throw away everything of value that I owed. You're a disgusting oppressor. <laughs> oh, God. And when I lead the revolution... <laughs> oh, and when I lead the revolution and we overthrow this fascist state, you'll be punished for your <laughs> God damn it, dude. This is so over the top. I'm, <laughs> I'm dying. OP just says, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll see how that comes about. Bourgeois Beard retreated into his room, slamming the door. Another mountain of trash fell down from the force of the impact. <laughs> and he cursed again. 
Even though he loved his hoard, he certainly hated it when it juiced all over his carpet. <laughs> I ignored him and returned to my room. It was finally clean-ish, and it smelled significantly better without the decaying mountains of bourgeois beard's filth cluttering it up. <laughs> I laid down in my bed and opened my laptop. It was getting late. I decided to put on a movie, and I passed out. I hope you remember to lock the door, because this first day feud between roommates, ooh, it's not going to go well, buddy. <laughs> I awoke the next morning. It was still a few days before classes would begin, and I had the weekend to take care of some essentials, errands, and chores. Bourgeois beer had not woken up yet, and so I took the liberty of going into the kitchen and going to task on the crusty mess that had taken over that room. Bag after bag, I filled and piled them with care outside of his door. <laughs> Eventually, you're just going to box him in. Good. Nobody has to deal with him ever again. <laughs> it was getting to the point that I couldn't walk through the hall to my room without rustling bags of garbage as I passed. Then I secured the chemicals from the bathroom and set to work, washing the dishes, wiping down the sink, cabinet shelves, countertops. Every pass of the rag returned a damp black cloth. Oh, God, you're so much braver than me, OP. You know it's just going to revert to this as soon as you stop cleaning. This odd couple situation. Fucking Oscar and Felix. <laughs> Oscar? Felix? Is that reference too old? <laughs> Maybe so. I opened the windows and the front door and let the wind pass through the house. Gradually, the scent of rotting food and detritus began to disappear. People walked past in the hall. They paused outside as they caught the strange scents that emanated from my dorm room. I imagine they wondered whether they should volunteer to help purge the nest, or whether they should simply run. Run. Run! <laughs> run. There's no saving it. Run. Eventually, I moved on to the fridge. The smell of rancid meat and curdled milk gleh, greeted me <laughs> as I opened the door. I discarded every last item in the fridge, save for a few bottles of condiments, the only things that had not completely spoiled, and I ran the rest of it out of the house. I returned, armed myself with bleach and detergent, and attacked every surface inside. They call me Mr. Clean. <laughs> Is that a Mr. Freeze reference, maybe? Let's kick some ice. I knew Bourgeois Beard would be pissed off the moment that he woke up. Of course, there was no telling when he would wake up. It was now pushing up to noon, and still there had been no sign of our bold revolutionary who would be upset that I had tampered with his apocalyptic treasure trove. <laughs> Half of me wanted to catch his fury. The other half of me was absolutely starving. There was nothing to eat in this house. That would need to be fixed. Quietly, I grabbed a few bags of garbage and took them with me as I exited the apartment. Several people stared at me as I wandered down the hall with my questionable oversized load, but I paid them no mind. Gotta do what you gotta do. I deposited them in the dumpster, glad to see it all go. Bourgeois Beard would never know that I had gotten rid of uh, some of his stuff. <laughs> he had plenty of empty soda bottles to keep him company after all. Then I went to the grocery store. I spent what little money I had on me on typical college fare, ramen noodles and beer. <laughs> I also got some bacon and eggs as a little treat. With my errands complete, I returned to the house. Now you realize three of those four items are going to need to go in the fridge, correct? Bourgeois beer is going to eat that shit right up. <laughs> I guarantee. The only thing that is safe is the ramen noodles. You better not put them in the pantry. You got to keep those in your room. <laughs> I went inside. Bourgeois beer had woken up while I was gone and had closed the windows and drawn the curtains once more. I could hear trash bag after trash bag being tossed into his room. He was an obese squirrel, piling up his rotting nuts for the long winter of a Georgian summer. <laughs> uh, the whole time, he swore up and down and that he was going to hang me at my trial for war crimes. <laughs> I didn't pay him much mind, 
It just deposited my purchases in the kitchen cabinets and the fridge. Mistake? With freshly cleaned dishes, I fried up my bacon, and the delicious aromas of breakfast wafted throughout the house. Bourgeois Beard finished loading his detritus into his bedroom. When his labor was complete, he came out front and joined me, casting dirty glances my way. I paid him no mind and served myself a hot plate of delicious breakfast and sat down at the table to eat. That's right, you ain't gonna ruin this for me, fat boy. <laughs> Bourgeois Beard, I can't believe you. A man's house is sacred. I swear it's gonna take me hours to sort through all that. OP, calm down. It's already sorted. Cans are with cans, bottles are with bottles. You got like a hundred bucks in recycling right there, and I already did the hard work of sorting it out for you, so if anything, you should thank me. Bourgeois beard. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> He went over to the fridge and opened the door, looking for something upon which to dine this early afternoon. Bourgeois Beard, Hey, where the fuck's all my food? OP, I cleaned out the fridge. Just about everything in there was rotting, so I threw it out. Bourgeois Beard, What? No, it wasn't. <laughs> OP, dude, it was all rancid. That shit would probably kill you. Bourgeois Beard, you threw out all my food. What the hell? What am I going to eat? Don't you see? He was training himself to dine upon spoiled food for the revolution. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ. OP, I don't know what you're going to eat. Go order some Domino's, I guess. Bourgeois Beard, nah, that's not cool at all. You threw out my food, and I paid good money for that. You have to share your food with me now. Oh yeah, communism intensifies. <laughs> OP, what? No, I don't, dude. Go down to the grocery store and buy some, man. Bourgeois Beard, hey, fuck you. You come in here, violate the sanctity of my personal belongings, and you won't even share with your fellow proletariat. <laughs> You've got some nerve. <laughs> no, you, bitch. <laughs> uh, uh, OP, wasn't one of your first rules, don't use my stuff or eat my food? You're really going to hit me with the not sharing card? Come on. He stammered as he sought a pithy response. It did not come. Instead, he settled on opening the fridge and producing my bacon and eggs. Uh-oh. I got up from the table. OP, don't you fucking dare. I spent my last 20 bucks on that bacon. I swear to God, if you eat it, we are going to have some fucking problems. Bourgeois Beard whinged and whined about how it was my duty as a participant in the glorious communist revolution <laughs> to share my bacon with me. <laughs> it's so over the top, man. <laughs> I'm dying. I stood fast, wielding my fork like a weapon. He eventually caved and set the meat back in the fridge. He looked sullen and I ignored him. I was new here, and boundaries needed to be set. Oh, you're a good boy, OP. We could probably kick it sometime. <laughs> I wasn't going to allow myself to be trampled by some obese revolutionary LARPer. <laughs> the way he lived was simply unacceptable to me. If I had to share this space with him, then something would have to change. He could dwell in his garbage mound all that he wanted, but I was not going to live in it. Christ, what if I met a girl? I couldn't bring her back to a literal roach motel. Bourgeois Beard. Fine, I won't eat your bacon. I'll just ask my mom for some money. <laughs> oh, God. Spoken like a true revolutionary. OP, yeah, do that. You can bring me back some orange juice as an apology while you're at it. Ooh, OP. Already letting this beard know exactly where he stands. Beautiful. He scoffed at me and lumbered back to his room to contact his mother and beg her to fund the glorious people's revolution. 
this has gone on for long enough now, and I have other things that I must attend to, but I will return. I had to live with this particularly fascinating specimen for quite some time, and our tale will continue. God damn, dude. I am so looking forward to it. This one cracked me up. <laughs> so ridiculous. The dude obviously does have uh, some deficits. <laughs> Maybe more than just a few, but god damn. The fact that he's such a jerk about it makes it really easy to laugh at him. I'm glad to do so. I'm so glad that you shared the story with us. Honestly, I probably would have gone to the uh, housing director and been like, look, this is untenable. But <laughs> I'm glad that you didn't. You stuck it out. And now we've got a glorious, beautiful new saga to sink our teeth into. So thank you very much, OP. Beautifully written. I can't wait for some more of it. Ask Bourgeois Beer what it's like to not have a job. To ask your mama for money all the time. <laughs> um, can you give me some money, please? Bourgeois Beard, part two. Bourgeois Beard goes hungry. Yeah, that's what happens to communists. <laughs> Isn't it? Welcome back, valuable excuse. Glad to see you, my friend. Hey, guys, it's time for part two of Bourgeois Beard. And all the children cheered. Yay! <laughs> I guess some people really enjoyed it. And Red X picked it up, so I'm gonna continue. Oh, you were doing this for me? Oh, thank you so very much. <laughs> I've been a little busy with work the last couple of days, but now I've got some time to sit down and write, though, so let's not waste any time, and we'll get on into it. Yes, bless you. I'm sorry work was keeping you busy, but it's better than not having a job, right? Ask Bourgeois Beer what it's like to not have a job. To ask your mama for money all the time. <laughs> um, can you give me some money, please? Mom, give me some fucking money, please! Let's feel blessed that we're employed. Here's a brief cast list, by the way. BB, that's Bourgeois Beard. An overweight, wannabe revolutionary LARPer who lives in a literal garbage heap. <laughs> He's big, he's loud, and he swears that I will someday be thrown into a gulag. Yeah, good luck with that, bro. OP, hey, that's me. <laughs> Just arrived at student housing and forced to share an apartment with Bourgeois Beard for the foreseeable future. Ah, uh, unfortunate. The cast list is short and sweet, though. Two of our main players just go and head to head, and I like that. Where we last left off, I had just moved into my dormitory. When I arrived, I met Bourgeois Beard. He was a fat, garbage-dwelling commie boo. <laughs> uh, that's a new one. Who hadn't cleaned out his nest in ages. I moved in and decided that there was no way in hell that I was going to live like that. I cleaned out the nest and he basically hated me for it. After my job was finished, I rewarded myself with some delicious breakfast. Bourgeois Beard was mad that I threw out all of his rotting fucking food and demanded that I share what little I had with him. Uh, for the revolution, of course. <laughs> and I told him to get wrecked. He was upset and decided to call his mom for some money so that he could eat. <laughs> what a revolutionary! God damn, Bourgeois Beard, you're really showing us how it's done out here. He took that phone call in his bedroom while I greedily wolfed down my meal. I assumed that things were going very well when I heard screaming and cursing coming through the paper-thin walls of the apartment. I was intrigued, and so I sat there listening in to the events that were unfolding. Bourgeois Beard, uh, what the fuck do you mean, no? Uh, God, Mom, you're such a stupid... Radio edit. You won't even feed your own son? Fine! <laughs> oh yeah, mommy's cutting him off. We've seen this one before, and I always love it. Loud screeches and falling garbage could be heard echoing throughout our tiny apartment. I had to wonder how frequent an occurrence this was, and if perhaps the neighbors were used to it by now. It went on for a few minutes before... He must have tuckered himself out <laughs> and committed himself to just sullen rage. Yeah, the endurance stat of a beard. <laughs> Can you go into the negatives? I paid it no mind and checked my class schedule on my phone. 
I got distracted and derped around on my phone for a bit, as one does, and I lost track of time until the sound of the opening bedroom door caught my attention. Bourgeois Beard emerged from his room in full Soviet regalia. <laughs> God, dude. Uh, he's a LARPer for real. He was wrestling with several bags of garbage. He paused to catch his breath, because moving around trash is tough work, don't you know? <laughs> and he looked up at me with a flushed face. Bourgeois Beard, I hate you so bad. I'm supposed to be raided with my guild. And now I have to postpone because you had to go and fuck with all my shit and throw out my food. And now my mom is being a... Radio edit. And won't even send me money anymore. <laughs> Can you believe that? You know what she said to me? She said, maybe you should budget better and stop eating out. <laughs> God, I hate her. Yes, the person who gave you life and provided for you for far too many years. That is definitely where you should direct your rage, you fucking pathetic man-child. <laughs> uh, I'm glad he's starving, honestly. OP didn't mention, like, what he looks like or anything like that, but I'm just imagining fat. So yeah, he's, he's probably gonna be fine. He can make it through the winter. <laughs> OP, not my problem. He didn't pick up on my disinterest right away. Instead, he continued to ramble at me about the vicious struggle that he endured. Oh, my heart goes out to you. <laughs> Bourgeois beard. And now I've got to go and recycle my stash. I was saving that for the collapse, but uh, I've got no money to eat. I don't even know where the recycling center is. And I don't have a car either. You need to give me a ride. Bro, what's all this you need to give me? Give me, give me. It's time to figure your own shit out, okay? You don't work, you don't eat. That happens before the revolution and after the revolution, from what I've heard. OP simply replies, no. <laughs> Bourgeois beard. But my guild is waiting for me to get back. What am I going to tell them? I can't just cancel. I mean, you can. What are you, primary tank, primary healer? It doesn't matter. Nobody wants you there anyway, Bourgeois Beard. OP says, not my problem. Bourgeois Beard. I fucking hate you. Don't think that you're going to get away with this. I already have. <laughs> I shrugged and just returned to my phone. While he resumed struggling with the trash bags that he had brought to his door, trying to get them all out at the same time. <laughs> it's like a Three Stooges episode. Spread out. I watched him struggle out of the corner of my eyes for a bit. Finally, with one mighty tug, he managed to loosen the bags from the door frame. One of the bags had caught on the jam and tore itself open, <laughs> spilling its juicy contents all over the hallway. I tried not to snicker. <laughs> God damn it, dude. Bro, that is... A beautiful fail <laughs> of the highest caliber. The juicy contents. Now there's stale beer in the hallway. I feel kind of bad for OP about that because you know bourgeois beard isn't going to even try to clean it up. <laughs> I guess the hallway just smells like rotten beer now. Great. <laughs> bourgeois beard stormed past me and went under the kitchen sink. He grabbed one of the garbage bags, perhaps for the first time in years and began to pick up the scattered cans. The whole time he muttered soft curses under his breath. The amount of physical labor it took to pick up those items off the floor just exhausted him. <laughs> By the end, he was huffing and puffing like the big bad wolf himself. He smelled like that same wolf had rolled in the carcass of a deer to try and mask his scent. Who knows when the last time he actually bent over was. Not I. <laughs> Surely, it is a rare occurrence. And again, I am imagining this dude as like an excessively fat guy. Not just because most beards are, but one, he hasn't bent over, and two, he's really prioritizing food over this raid that seems super important to him. Like, you could just do without food for 3-4 hours while you raid, can't you? You better get used to being without food because, you know, the revolution. <laughs> 
With the garbage repackaged and free, he made his way to the front door, only to repeat the same, <laughs> the exact same scene. I love it. He learned nothing. He had not yet learned his lesson, and once again forcefully dragged all the bags through the frame, only for another one to tear itself open. <laughs> Uh, I couldn't help but laugh as he went to the kitchen yet again for another bag and painstakingly repackaged its contents. <laughs> OP, do you maybe want to take a couple bags with you just in case you, you know, rip them open again? <laughs> Bourgeois beard. Go fuck yourself! <laughs> I mean, I thought it was sound advice that I was giving, but... He believed it to be a personal attack. He slammed the door shut, leaving me alone in the apartment. Bless. <laughs> I zoned out for a bit, back into my phone. It was strangely serene knowing that he wasn't in the house. I could do as I pleased for a little bit without having him mouth breathing down my neck the entire time. Yeah, that's roommates for you. I mean, Bourgeois Beard drew some boundaries. I hope that you drew some boundaries as well, OP. Don't bother me when my door's closed, all right? We're trying out this little thing. It's called mutual respect. I know it's probably new to you, bourgeois beards. <laughs> but just give it a try. Uh, I got up from my seat and put my plate in the sink before going towards my room. It had been a long morning, and I was ready to take it easy for a little bit. Halfway down the hall, I paused. Bourgeois beard had left his door ajar. Oh my god. <laughs> Curiosity compelled me. I simply had to examine his lair. Don't do it, OP. Don't do it. It's never going to be worth it. <laughs> it's time to stop. It's time to stop. I pushed the door open and was greeted by a noxious breeze, reminiscent of fermenting butthole. <laughs> it's probably accurate. I wiped the tears from my eyes and stepped inside, crunching aluminum and cardboard beneath my feet. <laughs> yeah, you bagged up all the trash in the house except what was in his lair. <laughs> I stared into the darkness. It took some time before my vision readjusted, and I could make out what precisely the hell it was that I beheld. The dirty drab carpet was just cluttered with trash, and dirty laundry was carelessly tossed aside. One could play The Floor is Lava and never ever lose in this lair. <laughs> if one played The Floor is the Plague, it would definitely be a hardcore run. <laughs> yep, you gotta stick on the ceiling. Drawn curtains kept the prying gaze of the outside world at bay. Shut windows contained the odor of fermenting jism. <laughs> oh god. I'm glad you're not assaulting the neighbors with that, but holy hell. Why you gotta do that to yourself, your roommate? Have some mercy! The yellowing walls were decorated much like the living room. Archaic propaganda posters of bygone wars hid the peeling paint. Chiseled Russian soldiers stared with disdain at the shameful mess that Bourgeois Beard had created in the name of the motherland. <laughs> <laughs> Above his bed hung the hammer and sickle. His poor choice in bed sheets was not lost on me. He had opted for black. Oops. <laughs> Peculiar white smears stood out in stark contrast like some poor impressionist painting from an art student major titled Loneliness and Despair. Accurate. I give it an A+. Plus. <laughs> now please, burn it. Let's never look at this again. A light dusting of dried and flaky dandruff spotted the pillowcases. Unceremoniously jammed into the corner against the wall sat his pink-haired waifu. <laughs> Her stuffing was pouring out in curiously placed holes, which were ripped in the fabric. Oh my god, I'll give you two guesses where those holes are, and uh, you're probably going to get both of them right. <laughs> Beyond the bed was his apocalypse gold. Trash bags were stacked on top of each other all the way up to the ceiling. A couple were open, and their contents were scattered on the floor. He had been sorting his treasure. <laughs> I thought that was just an excuse, but no, he legitimately does value this shit. 
His computer desk was its own special brand of chaos. A pair of headphones, complete with fox ears, uh, <laughs> were draped over the back of his computer chair. In the dim glow of the monitor, one could see the crust that had caked itself between the keys. Jesus. Empty CD cases were strewn about the top of the desk and tumbled down onto the floor. What the hell is this? Physical media? Maybe he really is getting ready for the revolution. <laughs> uh, everything I own is digital. My computer doesn't even have a disk drive. Ugh. What piqued my curiosity the most was a glass mason jar. Inside was Catwoman. Oh no. Up to her neck in milky, yellowing fluid. Ah, Catwoman cum jar. I can't, dude. Holy shit. I don't want you to touch it, but I do want you to destroy it. I'm so conflicted. <laughs> oh, God. I had seen enough. More than enough, in fact. I hurried to the door and shut it behind me. When I got to my room, I opened my laptop in desperation. I needed eye bleach. I needed soul bleach. <laughs> I opened up Google and spent the next half hour looking at kittens. <laughs> It helped, but it wasn't enough to clean out the filth that had found itself a home inside of my soul. I mean, after seeing the cat woman, I wouldn't be looking at kittens. It would be puppies only from that point forward. <laughs> I'm more of a dog person anyways. I eventually settled in to play some games of my own. Several hours passed. Bourgeois Beard must have had quite the journey to find somewhere that would take in his recycling. It wasn't until after sunset that I heard the front door open. Muttered curses and rustling plastic made their way down the hall. Out of curiosity, I opened the door. Bourgeois Beard had returned with all of his garbage in tow. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, the trash can't even take itself out. OP, what happened? I thought you were taking all that to recycle. Bourgeois Beard, yeah, well... I finally got there and the place was closed. I had to bring it back. OP, why didn't you just leave it at the gate? I know you wouldn't get any money for it, but I'm sure you've got plenty of other recycling that you could bring in to make at least a few bucks. Bourgeois Beard, and squander my hoard? <laughs> at least he knows it's a hoard. Of course, he's thinking Dragon's Hoard, where I'm thinking more, uh, you know, hoarder hoard. <laughs> Fuck that! No, I'll just hang on to it until the place opens up on Monday. I still don't know what I'm gonna do about food, though. I still don't have any money. Go beg. Find a fucking talent and, and go do it on the street and hope that people will give you some money for it. Mr. Bean, he dances on the street, just lays out his little handkerchief. <laughs> <laughs> Surely you can do that much. He looked at me pleadingly, and I thought about it for a minute. I had no money either. I was looking at a steady diet of ramen for the next week outside of what little bacon and eggs I had. However, I did feel bad for him, to an extent. He would have to begin his semester on an empty belly. Then I had to remind myself that it was not my fucking job to take care of him. God damn, I love this OP doesn't give a damn, not putting up with any of this shit, like, look, figure it out for yourself, bro. You think me giving you some top ramen's gonna keep me out of the gulag? <laughs> it ain't, he's gonna be just as ungrateful and horrible about it, so, yeah, feed yourself. And OP says, well, good luck. <laughs> I started to close the door on the red-faced beard when he stuck his foot in the way of my frame. Break it. <laughs> Bourgeois beard. Come on, bro. I already missed my raid. Just let me have a little ramen. OP, don't touch my food. Now move your foot, Bourgeois beard, or I'm gonna force this door shut with your foot in it. Ah, this OP, so refreshing. I love it. <laughs> he began to descend into a fit of curses at me between those same old prying excuses. I'm your roommate. Uh, I'll kick you out. Uh, we should look out for each other. Uh, fuck you. Uh, do it for the revolution. 
<laughs> Just trying every play in the book back to back. None of it's working. It's beautiful. I love to see it. I began to exert pressure on the door, crushing his foot. Bourgeois Beard howled in pain and withdrew back into the hall, and I sealed the entrance to my room and locked it. From the other side, I could hear him screaming at me. I ignored him and just put on some relaxing music as I heard the garbage being rustled into the garbage room. <laughs> ah, oh, the garbage room. That's what we're going to call it from now on. I slept good that night, and I woke up the following morning. Bourgeois Beard, again, was sleeping in. I puttered around the house for a bit before I decided to take a little walk around the campus. The place was huge, and even though class wasn't actively in session, crowds of people were still out and about. I took a big tour of the place, just enjoying the fresh air. Lord knows you probably don't get much of that with Bourgeois Beard around. Leisurely, I walked around, finding my classes one by one, and getting a feel for how my daily routine was going to go. I was enjoying myself, but I started to get hungry after a few hours and decided that it was time to head home and enjoy some lunch. I didn't want to go back to that apartment, but it was home, and home is at least a partially stocked fridge. I wonder if Bourgeois Beard woke up and like helped himself to some of that ramen. I want to be sure that OP is locking his door when he leaves, because if he's not, then uh... That's precisely what's going to happen. <laughs> when I got inside, Bourgeois Beard sat on the couch. He was sullen and sulking, clutching his bulky belly in misery. I closed the door behind me and turned to face him, asking, Why the long face? <laughs> Bourgeois Beard, I can't take it, OP. I haven't had anything to eat in almost 24 hours. Aw, oh, poor baby. <laughs> I'm starving. I don't have any money or food, and my mom won't help me out. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm probably just going to waste away. <laughs> uh, yeah, slim down for the summer. I sized him up. He probably had enough fat on him to survive until the summer, and his best attempts to be pitiable were clearly an effort to make me give him some food. I had a sneaking suspicion that he had already touched my ramen packets without asking, and now he was trying to weasel some more out of me. I just shrugged my shoulders and went to the kitchen to prepare some lunch for myself. OP, well, maybe you should get a job. Then you could afford some food. A uh, dur. <laughs> he prickled like an obese cactus. His jowls shook with fury as he began to rail about a capitalist depression. <laughs> <laughs> uh, holy hell, dude. This is a lot to take in. Bourgeois beard. And make some fucking boomer rich off of my labor? No. It's a matter of principle that I don't get a job. I refuse to get a job. I'm not going to support the system that oppresses me. OP. Well, then I guess you're not going to eat either. <laughs> Pretty cut and dry, isn't it? Oppression or starvation? You decide! <laughs> I opened the cabinet and looked inside. Amazingly, my ramen hadn't been touched. I opened the fridge and checked my bacon and eggs, still intact as well. I was impressed. This dude had exercised some extreme restraint since I had been out of the house, and he did not touch my stuff. Maybe he was being respectful. Maybe he thought his odds of weaseling it out of me were better if he appeared honest. I mulled over my choices. While I was saving the rest of my bacon and eggs for breakfast the following morning, I didn't know how much longer Bourgeois Beard could exercise that restraint without sustenance for his copious corpulence. <laughs> I would be mighty upset if my bacon was suddenly gone. I decided to fry up the rest. The delicious smells of sizzling meat once more filled the apartment. Ah, oh, blessed bacon. Food of the gods! Bourgeois Beard stared at me in quiet desperation, like a begging dog, as I mumbled things to myself like, Oh, so delicious. Oh, man. This is gonna be great. Can you smell that bacon cooking? <laughs> I could tell it pained him, but he was transfixed, and he could not stop watching me. <laughs> 
Use it to get him to do some stuff. Get him to clean the house with the bacon. You don't want to work outside the house to feed yourself? That's fine. But you're going to work inside the house to feed yourself. I settled into the chair and dug in with a hearty yummy. <laughs> Eating slowly and taking my time. Intentionally over savoring every bite. His jowls shook with nervous energy as he watched me eat. <laughs> the hunger was driving him mad. <laughs> he whimpered as I finished my plate and washed it. In one final deliberate act, I took my ramen from the cabinet and brought it into my room and hid it away. I grabbed a book off the shelf and settled into a chair to read. I must have dozed off because when I woke up, the sun was beginning to set. However, something had woken me. There was a loud banging and rustling coming from the kitchen, and I decided that I must investigate. Man, OP is pretty hardcore. Of course, the roommate did start this whole thing off on the wrong foot, you know, so... <laughs> I would give him no quarter either. But when OP went out to investigate, Bourgeois Beard was standing in front of the fridge with a large trash bag. and He was unloading his trash into the fridge. <laughs> I wiped the sleep from my eyes. OP, what's all this? Bourgeois Beard, I couldn't take it anymore. I went out and got some food. OP, what? How? I thought you were broke. Bourgeois Beard, I am. I tried asking people, but everybody told me I should lose some weight. <laughs> <laughs> That's hardcore. Nobody's taking pity. Well, I was at the grocery store and I saw some guy throw out half a sandwich and I got an idea and I started digging through the trash. I went around to Domino's and opened up the dumpster and it was full of chicken wings and pizza and so I grabbed a bunch and brought it back with me. OP, so you're eating trash. <laughs> Dumpster diving ain't all that bad. Don't look down your nose at people for doing it, OP. Desperate times and whatnot. Hop on, pal! Yep, sir! Hey, it's not so bad once you get used to it. Bourgeois beard? It's still good. Look, you want a piece of pizza? I got tons of it. He opened up one of the pizza boxes. Inside was a pie that had metamorphosed into the consistency of a stale rock. Hey, food's food, man. <laughs> Crunch it down. <laughs> I poked it. It was a miracle that he wasn't spitting out chunks of his broken, rotten teeth with each bite. Despite my misgivings, I wasn't surprised. I mean, he already lived in garbage. It was only a matter of time before he began consuming it. <laughs> you are what you eat, after all. God damn, dude. This OP is so hardcore. OP? Don't you feel ashamed digging through the trash and eating stale pizza? Bourgeois Beard? No! Look at all this perfectly good food that they just threw away. Why would I feel ashamed about taking it? I looked into the bag. Mysteriously greasy chicken wings had rubbed their strange coating onto the black plastic. I caught the faint odor of cleaning chemicals, dish soap and bleach. Something unsavory had been dumped into that bag. OP, dude, this food smells like dish soap. Bourgeois Beard, no it doesn't. You're just trying to convince me to throw it out. I know how you are. You're a fucking sadist. You think it's funny that I'm going hungry. <laughs> no, actually, I just don't want you to die from poisoning no matter how much I dislike you. He's going to get super sick in the next episode, I'm pretty sure. OP, you seriously can't smell the bleach in the bottom of the bag. Bourgeois Beard. It doesn't smell like bleach, OP. OP. Well, don't say I didn't warn you. You should really double check things before you just go eating them, man. <laughs> Bourgeois Beard. Whatever. You're just mad that I figured out how to eat like a king without spending any money. I shrugged. If he wanted to eat stale dish soap pizza... I mean, I couldn't stop him. <laughs> it was a lesson he would have to learn for himself. I knew what his hasty, hunger-driven actions meant. Fallout was coming. 
I just wondered whether it would be coming from his mouth or his ass. <laughs> Anyways, this has gone on for long enough for now. I have work that I need to get back to, but I will be back with a third installment of Bourgeois Beard when I get some free time. God bless you, OP. Working hard, you soldier of industry. Nobody is entitled to the fruits of your labor. And I love how you didn't fall for any of his tricks. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. It's such a, a shift from uh, many other OPs that we've seen on the channel where these beards just kind of take advantage of somebody who's unwilling to stand up for themselves. But this OP, oh no, <laughs> he's like not taking any of that crap. And it's just really awesome to see. Super refreshing story. I am loving it so far. Definitely looking forward to part three, leaving my convalescent roommate to rest up and heal from his bleachy meal. <laughs> Bourgeois Beard Part 3, Technicolor Pizza of Pain! <laughs> hey, y'all, the pizza here! Oh! <laughs> ah! Ah! My ears burn! I mean, I could have told you when the pizza smelled like bleach that, uh, you're gonna have a bad time. Welcome back, user Valuable Excuse 3288 59 minutes ago. What? <laughs> I told you. I jumped right on top of this one. It's probably gonna be a day old by the time you see it, but hey, it's good to be ahead of schedule. Anywho, hey guys, it's me again. Welcome back! Finally got a little time to flesh out the next installment of our story regarding Bourgeois Beard. It looks like Red X is reading this story, so I'll include a link swarm if you're not up to speed. Oh, God bless the link swarm. I totally didn't even ask him to do it or anything. I did, though. <laughs> you gotta get your plugs where you can get them, you know? We all want this channel to be the biggest that it could be. And, uh, yeah, if it wrangles a few people in, then I'm all for that. And if people don't want to watch it, then they ain't got to. <laughs> it takes half a second to skip over that part. Anyways, here's our cast list so far. We've got Bourgeois Beard, the solemn vanguard of the People's Revolution. <laughs> he lives in a pile of garbage that he's saving up for the collapse of society. <laughs> uh, he's mad at me because I refuse to share my food with him. And he has instead resorted to eating uh, questionable food from dumpsters. <laughs> God damn, dude. Just that one paragraph. Elevator pitch me. You already got me hooked, bro. Jesus. OP? Hey, that's me. I mean, not me, but the OP. Okay. First semester at university and Bourgeois Beard's roommate during my stay. I'm just trying to live my life and get my education, and I have had to draw some boundaries. Oh, God bless. Beard boundaries is the best boundaries. We've seen a lot of OPs bending over backwards trying to make these beards happy, so yeah, it's really interesting to see what happens when an OP pushes back right out of the gate. And I guess that's it for the cast list, so into the story we go. I left Bourgeois Beard alone to gorge himself on bleachy trash pizza <laughs> and return to my room. Tomorrow was my first day of class. I had that post-nap fatigue and returning to sleep was relatively easy. I didn't sleep for long, though. The sounds of sobs awoke me in the small hours of the morning. They were coming from down the hall. I wiped the sleep from my eyes and made my way towards the bathroom. Yeah, your insides are gonna get turned into outsides. Like, this is not good. You can't eat bleach pizza and just think that everything's gonna be fine. At least not the first time. Maybe he could build up a tolerance if he continues to do it. <laughs> uh, the door was cracked and the light shone through. From the other side, I could hear retching, weeping, and farts. <laughs> the stink of bleachy bile seeped out from the doorway. Oh god, that's hard. <laughs> I raised a knuckle to the wood and tapped lightly. From the other side, the voice of a familiar virgin cherub, male, moaned the state of his stomach. OP, what's going on, Bourgeois Beard? Are you okay? Bourgeois Beard, do I sound okay? OP, what's going on, bud? 
bud. <laughs> like, you guys are actually buds. I guess this could be a bonding moment, but I like to think that that was, like, a sarcastic one. How you doing, pal? <laughs> Bourgeois beard. I don't know. I was fine when I went to bed. And when I woke up, I had to puke. And so I came in here and I, I can't stop. Oh, God. Here it comes again. <laughs> Splashing toilet water filled with questionable chunks expelled with violent force. Oh, God, dude. Would it violate the social contract too harshly if I just pretended not to hear? If I stayed inside my room and let him deal with this all on his own? Because, I mean, it is kind of his decisions that brought him to this point, is it not? You still don't really owe him shit, but... OP being a good roommate despite those firm boundaries. OP, did you ever think that when I told you that pizza smelled like bleach, I wasn't just telling you that to be a dick? Bourgeois beard. Shut up! You are a dick! And it wasn't the pizza! That food was perfectly fine. I just caught a stomach bug is all. <laughs> Whatever you need to tell yourself, I suppose. OP, whatever, dude. Are you going to be okay, or you need me to call an ambulance? Bourgeois beard. Uh, no, no ambulance. I can't afford medical bills. I just got to tough it out. OP, I need your help. I gotta go to class today, but I, I can't. Can you go for me and record it? <laughs> <laughs> no, bitch. Just show up and, and put the video camera on play and hope nobody steals it. OP refuses. What? No, dude. I've got my own classes that I've gotta go to. Bourgeois beard. Please, OP, I need your help. I can't go to class like this. I need to stay here so I can get better. My schedule is on my desk. Take it. Just go to my classes and see what's going on for me. OP, fine. I'll see what I can do. Oh, that is more than I would have done. Dude is like, hey, I just gotta tough it out. But also, can you treat me like a little baby and go get my homework for me? <laughs> No, bitch. First of all, it's the first day of class. There's really not going to be anything going on. This is basically just going to be like running down the halls to all of his classes and collecting the syllabuses. Syllabi? <laughs> Whatever. The paper they give you on the first day of class and nothing else happens. So don't worry about it. Although I think he probably will continue eating the uh, trash pizza and miss uh, <laughs> a few more days. But I guess we'll see. So, OP went into Bourgeois Beard's room. He must have woken up passing bleachy gas because the room smelled slightly cleaner <laughs> than the last time I entered it. <laughs> it, however, was still a garbage-ridden mess. I looked on top of his desk for anything that looked somewhat like his class schedule, shuffling through discarded bags of chips and soda cans. I threw them on the ground in frustration. I could not find this dude's schedule anywhere. Then, I saw it, tucked beneath a familiar mason jar filled with questionable fluids and action figures. <laughs> oh, no! His class schedule sat directly beneath his coom jar. <laughs> why this? Of all things in the world, why this? Ugh, oh, I didn't want to touch it. Catwoman taunted me with her sticky gaze. <laughs> I looked around for something that I could write with so I could just copy the schedule and get the hell out. Sadly, there was nothing that I could copy the schedule with. So gingerly, I picked up an old chip bag and used it as a glove. <laughs> ah, now you see the value of trash, don't you, OP? <laughs> I seized the jar and moved it aside. The schedule, however, was <laughs> stuck to the bottom of the glass. <laughs> because of course it is. I sighed, grabbed another chip bag glove, and separated the schedule from the bottom of the unholy container. A wet ring from the bottom of the glass had imprinted itself onto the paper. Ugh, God, no! <laughs> 
Just look around. Surely there is a pen or something. You don't want this coom paper in your pocket all day, do you? Jesus, bro. Uh, and he says, I wasn't about to take that schedule. Mystery fluids are not something that I have the stomach to handle. I went to my room, got my phone, came back, and took a picture of the cursed document. I examined the schedule. Almost all of his classes were humanities, most notably several poli-sci classes, and all of them were in the late afternoon or the evening, which didn't surprise me in the slightest. By contrast, I had most of my courses in the morning or the early afternoon. I could go to his classes for him and bring him back the syllabus and notes for the classes if I were so inclined. But why would you be so inclined? I thought we were just going to be mean to this beard throughout, and uh, I'm not liking this softer side of you, OP. <laughs> but I guess he, he is a human, you know, he's like, oh well. If today's his last day on Earth because he ate bleach pizza, I guess I'd like to say that I helped him out as he shuffled off his mortal coil. <laughs> uh, but the morning wore on quickly, and I got dressed and headed out for the day, leaving my convalescent roommate to rest up and heal from his bleachy meal. <laughs> My morning was a convoluted mess of trigonometry and calculus. I returned back to the apartment for lunch and fixed myself up some ramen for lunchtime. I checked my schedule. I had one more class that I needed to attend for the day. To fill out my humanities requirement, I opted for a philosophy course. The class flew by pretty quick. I was laden with homework and required reading that I needed to complete before the next class in a couple of days. For a second, I debated even going to Bourgeois Beard's classes at all, as would I. I've already spent my whole day in class. You think I want to spend the other half of the day in class? <laughs> Bullshit. Although maybe if all you got to do is like set down a recorder, press record, and get to work on your homework, maybe if he was a cool dude, which he isn't, so I probably wouldn't do it at all. <laughs> but OP, a bigger man than I. I was going to do it. I felt that even though he wouldn't admit it, he had learned his lesson about digging through the garbage, and just this one time, I would help him out. I went to his first class, anthropology, and I recorded the lecture and even took notes for him. With the day wearing on, I was getting tired. I really didn't feel like going to his second class, political science, which I assumed was his major. Terrifying. That is Terrifying. <laughs> Still, I trudged through the halls toward the class and took a seat. I screwed around on my phone for a bit while we waited for the professor to arrive. Students began to file in and take seats at their desks. I was jarred loose from my distraction by a curdling smell that drifted down the rows of desks. Had Bourgeois Beard restored his health and arrived at class after his morning purge? Was I finally off the hook? Nope. <laughs> oh no, a second beard? <laughs> How could this happen? That's when I saw him. Similar in stature to Bourgeois Beard himself, but of an entirely different alignment, he approached. Bottle glasses sat on his nose, and he wheezed from the exertion of carrying a camouflage backpack full of books. His belly brushed against several people as he squeezed through the aisle of desks towards where I sat, and he apologized with each bump that he delivered. But, oh, sorry, eh, my bad. <laughs> A bright red, make America great again hat shadowed his pinpoint black eyes hidden behind some fat folds. An overly patriotic truck stop shirt about guns and freedoms. <laughs> with eagles and flames and shit contained his form. Maga Beard plopped down in a seat next to me, and I suffered a stroke. Of brilliance, that is. <laughs> Different alignment indeed. Holy God. These two are going to eat each other alive. Yes! I love where this is going. I'm still not sure what voice he should get. Like, two neckbeard voices might be... Sort of confuse him, but we'll give him the neckbeard voice and I'll, I'll think about it a little more <laughs> before the next episode when Bourgeois Beard and Maga Beard start talking to each other. <laughs> Just so it's not a complete mess. 
OP. Hey, dude. How's it going? Maga Beard. Oh, hey. Uh, I'm doing good. Are you taking poli size a major or to fill out some credits? OP. Well, actually, I'm not even taking this class, Maga Beard. What? Hey, then why are you here? Are you auditing the class? OP. Well, funny thing, actually, my dorm mate is the one who's supposed to be taking this class, but he's not feeling very well today, and he asked me if I could come in here and get the notes and the syllabus for him until he feels better. I agreed, so, yeah, here I am, Maga Beard. Oh, well, that's really nice of you. OP, yeah, I guess. But it's been a long day, and I am already swamped with a bunch of work and reading that I need to get into. Call it a silly question, but do you think that you could help me out? Maga Beard? Uh, what, what do you need? OP? Well, since you're taking the class, do you think you could come pay me a visit after you're done back at my dorm and bring a copy of the notes and the syllabus, and if you can, just please record the lecture? I'm sure my roommate would be more than grateful for your help. <laughs> OP knows exactly what he's doing. Mortal enemies they shall be, Maga Beard. Ah, uh, well, sure. Yeah, I'll help you out. This is my last class for the day as it is. Where are you gonna be? OP, here's my dorm number. I'll be back there. Just knock and I'll let you in. I gave Maga Beard a piece of paper with my dorm number on it and got up from the seat, sidling past the professor on my way out the door. I went back to my dorm and headed down the hall to my room. As I passed Bourgeois Beard's den, his door was open. The sounds of gunfire rang out from over the speakers. He was back in the battle, it seemed, <laughs> and healing quickly. I paused to watch him lift a piece of pizza from the box atop his desk to his mouth and swore to myself that I wouldn't attend any more of his classes. <laughs> I told you, dude, ain't that just like a beard? He learned nothing. <laughs> He's like, nah, it can't be the bleach pizza. Why have I been sick for three months? It couldn't be the bleach pizza. <laughs> OP, hey man, how you feeling, bourgeois beard? Uh, why are you back so early? And shouldn't you be in poli sci right now? Yeah, you mean your poli sci class? No, I fucked off. <laughs> OP, dude, I got the notes and syllabus for your other classes. I'm tired, so I came back. I asked someone at the poli sci class to bring a copy of the stuff back here, though. He should be here in a couple of hours. He seems like a reliable dude, so when he knocks, make sure to get the door. <laughs> Bourgeois beard. Yeah, sure. God, dude, this is all boiling up, and I am absolutely loving it. I hope as soon as dude opens the door, they just start biting each other right in the face. <laughs> I toss the paperwork from Bourgeois Beard's classes into the trash heap to never be seen again, and I headed back to my room. I laid back in my bed and opened up one of my textbooks. Exhausted as I was, it was hard to focus. I committed myself then to just read it tomorrow. I didn't have another course until Wednesday that week, and it was Monday night, and I would just spend the rest of the night decompressing. Yeah, sometimes you need that. Take a little mental health day, you know? Walk away, come back, things look a little bit easier. I made myself a bowl of hot ramen and sat in the dark dining room eating my soup in peace. A knock on the door got my attention. Rather than get up and answer the door, I yelled at Bourgeois Beard to get up off his bloated ass and come get his notes. <laughs> he emerged from his den of shuffling garbage, and he walked down the hall towards the front door. Oh, a meeting of fate we shall see. <laughs> he was fumbling with his winter hat the whole time. He opened the door, and the blood drained from his face. On one side stood Maga Beard, clutching a sheaf of papers. His rat eyes took in the sights of the Soviet propaganda posters behind him. On the other, our bold revolutionary, Bourgeois Beard. <laughs> the blood drained from his face, his hand outstretched to receive the papers that he was purportedly too ill to get. Neither said a word. The papers passed between them in terse silence. Each one 
beheld the other with quiet, seething scorn. <laughs> Bite each other in the face! <laughs> Without so much as a word between them, their business concluded, and the door was shut. Bourgeois Beard paced back and forth for a little bit in the silent apartment before he chucked the papers at the couch in anger. Bourgeois Beard, What the fuck are you doing? OP, what? <laughs> Bourgeois Beard, You invited a literal fucking fascist back to my apartment. OP, the kid in the MAGA hat? He repeated, The kid in the MAGA hat? In a mocking tone. Bourgeois Beard, Yes, look at him! He's a literal fucking fascist! He's wearing the equivalent of a freaking clan hood! <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think so. Is it possible we're grasping at straws here? I mean, honestly, both of these beards seem like they're cut from the same cloth, just different sides of it, if you know what I'm saying. OP, well, I was tired, and he was in your class, and he seemed nice enough to copy down the notes and bring them back for you. I didn't think it would be such a big deal to you, Bourgeois Beard. Now he knows where I live. Oh, God. I have to be ready for him if the power ever goes out. The fucking brown shirts are gonna come and steal my shit. <laughs> uh... None of that. It, what what fantasy is this guy living in? God damn, dude. If you're going to live in La La Land, at least make it like a happy version of La La Land. <laughs> what are you doing? OP, nobody's going to come and steal your shit, dude. He doesn't even know that you've got a uh, stash, bourgeois beard. You think that's going to stop him? If fascists like that are sworn enemies of the revolution, and you brought him here, you put a target on my back, and now I've got to take him out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please. Yes, I'd love to see it. i got to take him out before it all comes crashing down. OP, what are you going to do? Kill him? Dude, that's that's how you go to prison. <laughs> Can you imagine Bourgeois being in prison? Oh, God, that would be beautiful, too. Oh, God damn, this series is so good. <laughs> Bourgeois Beard. Yeah, I won't kill him. Not until society falls, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just put it off until society's over. <laughs> just a couple years at most. But I can hedge my bets by getting him removed from campus. I just need something that'll get him expelled. <laughs> and then he'll never be coming back. OP, well, I don't think wearing a MAGA hat is an offense that someone can be expelled for, so uh, good luck with that. I finished my bowl of ramen as Bourgeois Beard pulled out another box of questionable trash pizza. <laughs> and I went to my room. Bourgeois Beard sat alone in the dining room, thoughtfully chewing more bleachy pizza in the dark. <laughs> he was absolutely seething over this newfound rival. Expelling him from the campus would soon become a singular, all-consuming obsession. I was curious what form this rivalry would take. I had a hard time falling asleep, unable to purge the image of two jiggly lardasses grappling with each other. <laughs> each pausing occasionally to ask the other to let him catch his breath, or whining about how the other didn't fight fair. This has gone on long enough now, and it's time for me to return to the demands of real life. I'll continue this tale when I find myself with a bit more free time. Oh, don't leave me hanging. God damn, I want to know what happened. <laughs> I'm pretty sure OP knew exactly what was happening when he set all this up, didn't he? Was all of this fate, or was OP like, this is somebody that my roommate is going to hate, why not bring him over? <laughs> and I feel really lucky that they didn't exchange any words, they just looked at each other, because I still got to decide on a voice <laughs> for MAGA Beard. I guess uh, the comments are open if you got suggestions. I'm sure a Gollum voice would be good, but I don't know if MAGA Beard's going to have like some sort of soliloquy that I'm going to have to golem my way through, <laughs> which can be pretty painful. 
It was captioned, The God Emperor Rises. <laughs> Bourgeois Beard, part number four, MAGA Beard Strikes Back. Strikes back? I mean, <laughs> really nothing happened. He's just like, here's your notes. I guess Bourgeois Beard didn't say thank you. How dare he? <laughs> Anyways, welcome back. Use a valuable excuse, 3288. And uh, hey, guys, I finally got a little bit of time to write again. So let's talk a little bit about Bourgeois Beard. Yes, a fan favorite instant classic <laughs> if you're not up to speed you can find the story so far narrated by red x here part one part two part three god that is glorious i wonder how long this saga is going to go on for but i don't want to get too ahead of myself <laughs> and of course here is our cast list we've got bourgeois beard tried and true proletariat living off of mama's money <laughs> Probably never worked a day in his goddamn life like shooter games, political science, and jerking it into jars. One that contains a Catwoman figurine, if I remember correctly. <laughs> he probably also likes peeing in jars, honestly, but he's good about emptying those out. His seed? That must be saved. <laughs> Since he got cut off by Mommy, he's taken to dumpster diving bleach pizza from the local pizza joint. Now I gotta wonder if the pizza joint is like pouring bleach on the pizza purposefully to try and get rid of homeless people or if that's just how it happens, how they throw the trash away. I don't really get why the pizza is always covered in bleach, but uh, okay, we're rolling with it. Of course we've got Maga Beard, the enigmatic Maga Beard. He uses the best words. <laughs> <laughs> he likes guns, trucks, and freedom. I encountered this guy in Bourgeois Beard's poli sci class after Bourgeois Beard got sick from eating that bleach. <laughs> from the moment they met, I could tell that they would quickly become sworn enemies. Oh, so that means you didn't do it on purpose? I think you did it on purpose, though. OP, hey, that's me. Stuck between a rock and a hard place, forced to dwell with a garbage-dwelling, bleach-eating neckbeardo, trying to stay sane and just survive the semester. <laughs> Hold on tight, it's gonna be a bumpy ride. And we're into the story. So, I awoke that Tuesday morning as the sun began to flood in through the curtains. I passed the open bathroom where Bourgeois Beard, once again, up much earlier than usual, hugged the toilet and moaned about his fate. <laughs> he whimpered my name as I walked past. He stammered out something about God, these classes again, but I ignored him. <laughs> it was an off day for me, and I had reading that I needed to catch up on. I got myself a glass of water and then returned to my room, settled at my desk, and began to read. Eventually, the toilet flushed and I could hear Bourgeois Beard just lumbering about the house. He shuffled down the hall and materialized in my doorway. I ignored him as best I could and stared intently into the page. <laughs> it's not working. He's not going away. Stay very still. Their sight is based on movement. <laughs> Why would you not lock the door, bro? Don't disturb me when my door is closed. Just like throw his line back at him. Not that I expect Bourgeois Beard to actually respect boundaries, but it would be a good effort. But Bourgeois Beard asks, OP, I don't know what's going on, but I'm still sick. Can you? OP, no. Bourgeois Beard, you didn't even let me ask my question. I'm sick, OP. And please, just... OP, no. I'm not going to your classes again. Bourgeois Beard, what? Why? Because <laughs> I got my own shit to attend to. What do you want? OP, because that pizza that you pulled out of the trash is what's making you sick and you're still eating it. Even though I've told you multiple times that you should probably stop. I'm not here to get your education for you. I'm here to get mine. I'm not going to hold your hand because you keep eating fucking trash pizza. <laughs> 
<laughs> this situation's too ridiculous, bro. Frankly, I'm behind, and I don't have any time for any of this. So go to your own classes. I'm not doing that for you again. Now get out of my room. Bourgeois Beard just stood in the doorway, dumbstruck that he couldn't milk me for any more kindness. I mean, really, you gave him more than I expected you to give, but I'm quite relieved that we are cutting him off once more. Bourgeois Beard tries to negotiate, saying, What, what do you want? Uh, just please go get my notes and I'll... Uh, I'll, I'll pay you. OP, don't lie to me, dude. You wouldn't be eating dumpster food if you had any money. <laughs> You've got nothing that you can offer me that will change my mind. So get out. I've got work that I have to do. Bourgeois Beard. Please, isn't there anything that you can do? I wasn't going to his classes again. I remarked that I would think about it, but that I wasn't making any promises. <laughs> yeah, basically just any excuse to get him out of the room. I turned my attention back to my books for several hours and did my best to ignore the oscillating retching from the bathroom and ambient gunfire from Bourgeois Beard's room. <laughs> Lunch was drawing near and Bourgeois Beard had retired for a nap when I got up from my seat to fix a bowl of ramen before returning to my trig homework. I passed the mildewed sofa and paused, picking up the syllabus from the poli sci class. A crudely drawn caricature of an extremely buff Donald Trump was inside the margins of the first page. He was ripping off his shirt with one hand and shooting an AR-15 with the other. <laughs> it was captioned, The God Emperor Rises. <laughs> <laughs> you killing me! My stroke was back in full force. Of genius, that is. That's so adorable. Maga Beard just drawing a little cartoon, and this probably sent Bourgeois Beard over the edge. <laughs> God damn it. I made my lunch and returned to my room. On my desk sat my phone, and I unlocked it and looked through my contacts. I had saved Maga Beard's number during our brief exchange back at the poli sci classroom, and I decided why not give him a call. A ringback tone played as I waited for him to pick up. The national anthem, of course. <laughs> Until the other end of the line did pick up. Heavy breathing greeted me. Maga Beard, I wish you a, a wonderful day. Hello? <laughs> OP. Hey, Maga Beard, it's me, OP. How's it going? Hey, I wanted to ask you a favor. Maga Beard. What do you want? <laughs> OP. Well, my roommate's sick again, and he keeps trying to get me to go to his classes, but I really don't have time for any of that, bro. I got a ton of homework and reading that I need to take care of, and I can't take care of him. I was wondering if maybe you'd be willing to help him out instead and get the lecture recorded and just bring him any paperwork. Maga Beard. Why would I want to help a demon rat communist like him? <laughs> OP, he, he says he'll pay you. I take it up, dude. His mom's loaded and is totally covering his expenses. He says he'll give you 50 bucks if you bring him your notes until he's feeling better. So what do you say? I could hear the gears of the enterprising patriot and capitalist turning on the other end of the phone. <laughs> That thing OP has a boner for Maga Beard. <laughs> What's going on here? Is that sarcasm? I hope that's sarcasm. <laughs> Getting paid for something that he already had to do anyways was just too much for Maga Beard to decline, especially since it meant depriving his sworn ideological enemy of the valuable resources that he needed to finance his anti American revolution. Maga Beard, if he makes it a hundred. We've got a deal. <laughs> Tremendous. Tremendous. Amazing. <laughs> OP. Yeah, I'm sure he'd be more than willing to do that. Like I said, dude, he is totally loaded. His mom pays for everything. You just come back here with those notes, okay? The line clicked and I set my phone back on the table. I was deliberately stirring the pot to send a message. 
It was not my responsibility to take care of Bourgeois Beard just because he refused to stop eating bleach trash. <laughs> if he was intent to continue on his stupid, painful path, then yeah, he would suffer the consequences of that path. I prayed that the consequences of that path would make him consider choosing a different one, but after watching him stubbornly continue upon it, I was just not so sure. Either way, I had set something into motion that would soon spiral completely out of control. I tapped on the doorframe of Bourgeois Beard's room and told him that his notes were coming. He mumbled something which I couldn't discern and returned to his video games. Another box of delicious stale pizza pie sat on the edge of his computer desk, half eaten. God, dude, <laughs> Beards really don't learn their lesson. They're like, yeah, I just caught a little stomach bug. It couldn't have anything to do with this pizza that burns my mouth as I eat it. <laughs> like, what are you doing? You must be really hungry. At that point, you know, you take up eating paper or something like that, right? Go outside, touch some grass, and then eat it. <laughs> anything that would fill your stomach without uh, the chance of killing you would be a better idea than bleach-soaked pizza. Ugh, the hours melted off the clock. I returned to my room, and I had finally caught up on all of my assignments. Confident in my understanding of the course material, I settled into my bed and opened my laptop. Well deserved. I put on a movie to waste away the rest of the evening and wait for the arrival of Maga Beard at our apartment. A knock on the door jarred me loose from the fantasy on the screen. I shouted across the hall for Bourgeois Beard to get up off his lazy ass and answer it. No reply came. Had he finally killed himself from eating bleach? <laughs> That's dark. I can't help but laugh, but it's really dark. <laughs> I got up from where I reclined and went to the living room. I noted that Bourgeois Beard's door was shut on my way past his room. Maybe he was taking a nap? Whatever. I went to the front door and I opened it. Maga Beard stood there clutching yet another sheaf of papers. I said hello and invited him inside. <laughs> I told him that my roommate's door was just down the hall and that he should go knock. OP, <laughs> this is evil. You could just take the papers and be like, okay, thanks. But you have engineered something here. We're going to call it a social experiment instead of what it is, which is like abject dickholery <laughs> trying to get a fight started. I mean, I'm all for two neckbeards fighting, but usually you want to have it happen naturally so you can take notes about what started it. In this case, OP started it. <laughs> I led the way to Bourgeois Beard's room and then went back into my room. I shut the door and climbed back into bed. I could hear Maga Beard knocking through the paper-thin walls. I wanted to be in a nice, safe space behind a locked door when those fireworks went off. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the door open, and muffled voices exchanged curt greetings. I assumed then that the papers passed hands, and Maga Beard now stood there with his hand out, expectantly awaiting the 100 bucks that Bourgeois Beard was supposed to tender for these services that Maga Beard had rendered. An awkward explosion of shouts ensued. Maga Beard, what the fuck? What do you mean you're not going to pay me? You owe me a hundred bucks. Cough it up. Bourgeois Beard. Why would I give a literal fucking fascist anything? And besides, I don't even have any money. Get the hell out of my apartment before I get the campus police in here. Maga Beard. Maybe you should recycle all that fucking garbage you got in there, fat boy. <laughs> Tremendous. <laughs> Bourgeois Beard. Get out! I'm gonna call the cops, I swear! Maga Beard? Call them. I don't give a shit. I hope they drag you off to jail, you fucking con artist. Don't think this is over. <laughs> con artist, he says. Oh, that's rich. <laughs> Bourgeois Beard's door slammed in what I can only presume to be Maga Beard's face, and I heard him shuffle about in the hallway of our apartment. Several bangs ensued. Was he beating on the door of Bourgeois Beard? No, later I would find out that he was punching and kicking holes in our drywall in a fit of rage. God damn, dude. Total man-child tactics. Maga Beard might be a bit more beard than uh, the comments had initially suspected, I think. 
<laughs> he seemed decent for a second, but yeah, just because we only knew him in passing. Now the mask is coming off. A final cry of, this isn't over, echoed throughout the apartment as the front door slammed. I smiled as I went to bed that night, <laughs> only being awakened by the sound of retching and bleach farts in the dead hours of the morning. <laughs> Uh, at least we know he's not dead. Those noises are confirmation of that. So yes, rest well. I dismissed them, and I put in some earplugs to catch a couple extra hours before I actually had to begin my day. I awoke that morning, took a shower, got dressed, and gathered my belongings for the classes ahead. As I walked out of my dorm that morning, I paused at the open door. Tacked up on the outside of our door was a flyer. Still bleary from sleep, I took it down and examined it. It was a letter of condemnation. <laughs> a quickly mass-produced printout remarking that a rapist lived in our dormitory wing. <laughs> oh boy. Was Mogabeard so scorned over such a small sum that he would go to such great lengths to bring punitive attention to Bourgeois Beard? Well, it certainly seemed like it. Unless Bourgeois Beard actually is a rapist, in which case, get out of that apartment right now, OP. But the timing is too convenient. It had to be Maga Beard that made the flyers. The flyer described an obese man, adorned in Russian LARPer regalia, who was responsible for several rapes that had happened on campus, and that victims of his heinous crimes were encouraged to come forward to the campus police and tell their stories and see about getting him expelled from the college. Bro, this got really real. That is a huge accusation to level at somebody else. Like, can't you just be content with kicking holes in the drywall? <laughs> oh, yeah! God damn. I had a hunch that it was a total fabrication made by a steaming mad MAGA beard in the middle of the night so he could get his revenge on the stingy petite bourgeoisie who would not pay him for his work. <laughs> Irony. <laughs> One look at Bourgeois Beard confirmed that he probably didn't even know what a vagina looked like. <laughs> I was highly dubious that Bourgeois Beard had ever even left the apartment to attend classes in the first place, let alone that he ever got invited to parties where these alleged rapes had occurred. Still, I took the flyer down and threw it in the trash. Hey, don't throw that away. That's part of the revolution. <laughs> uh, when I exited the apartment, I locked the door. I looked down the hall. Every single door in our dormitory had been canvassed with these flyers. Maga Beard must have been pissed. The entire hallway was covered. As I walked down the hall and towards the staircase, I paused at each floor below mine to look and most certainly, they had been flyered too. That's quite a price to pay in order to get some revenge. Maga Beard's like, I don't need to eat this week. Print up the flyers. <laughs> My rage will fuel me. <laughs> I had no inclination to try and rip them all down. It was simply too much to do before I had to get to class. Also, people were beginning to file out of their rooms and look at the curious papers that had been summarily taped to their doors in the middle of the night. I could only wonder what the end result of this flyering campaign would entail. Yeah, uh, talking to the campus police, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I shrugged my shoulders and went outside. Lamp posts, newspaper boxes, trash cans, bulletin boards, fences. Everywhere I looked on my way to Trig that morning had been plastered with these flyers. This is like a hundred dollar endeavor in itself. What does it cost for a copy? Like 10 cents? And there are very likely thousands of these things. So dude spent like two or three hundred dollars on the one hundred dollars that he didn't get. Oh my god. Yeah, he's hopping mad for sure. And now that the greater student body was beginning to wake up and walk around, they were reading the contents of its pages. For a moment, I wondered if any of this fallout would find its way back to me, and for a second, I was nervous. Then I said, screw it. I wasn't the one getting slandered. <laughs> I wasn't the one doing the slandering, so, uh, not my problem. I mean, you did set these events into motion, but, yeah, I don't think any of this is going to end up getting traced back to you. 
When I arrived in Trig that morning, the professor hadn't arrived yet, and the classroom was buzzing about some communist copulator. <laughs> some students were huddled together, jabbering about the latest news. Life is a game of telephone, and somebody somewhere in the circle decided to run with the story and interject with their own version of events. Chismosa. <laughs> yeah, gossip is silly that way. It was now getting relayed to the rest of the student body. One guy sat in the circle of the others and was telling his version of the events. <laughs> oh, he just wants to be included. But yeah, he's totally lying about a rape that never happened, which is uh, one of the worst things that you can do ever in life. So, male student, he's getting a, a neckbeard voice. But he's a whiny neckbeard. <laughs> Male student one. Yeah, he raped one of my friends. She told me that he stopped her on the way home while she was drunk after a party, and he took her in an alleyway. And the whole time he kept saying shit like, Oh, full of muscle lad, and filthy American whore. I guess he does it to try and demoralize people, isolate them from their national identity, you know? Make them think it's bad, so that he can try and start a revolution or whatever. It's crazy. Female student one. Oh my god, that's so scary. Somebody should do something about him. Male student two. If I ever find out who that guy is, I'm gonna kick his ass. Several of the students murmured in humble agreement. I couldn't help myself and walked up to their little group and interjected the truth behind the Russian rapist. <laughs> the communist copulator. <laughs> There's so many good alliterations here. OP. Dude, where did you hear that garbage conspiracy theory? That is not it at all, bro. One of my friends got raped by him, too. Oh, OP, come on. <laughs> God damn it. Do I gotta give OP the neckbeard voice now? <laughs> all of my hate. I'm not gonna do it, but know that this is a uh, strike one. And she told me that after he was done, he told her that she was gonna carry his superior seed the term so he could breed a race of Russian super soldiers to take over the government. <laughs> if you're gonna talk about it, at least tell the truth. Female student two, that disgusting. So he's going around trying to knock up girls so they can make his babies? OP, I mean, isn't that the point? I don't know. All I know is that this guy is on the loose, so. <laughs> So you all should be careful walking around campus. If you see him, you should probably call the campus police. Hopefully we can get this guy thrown in jail where he belongs. <laughs> Female student one. Yeah, but he's still out there. What are we going to do in the meantime? It's not safe. I smiled. She was absolutely gorgeous. OP? No? Bad? <laughs> You're going to get a bonk. The horny police are going to come. <laughs> Horny police, open up! <laughs> a short little blonde with radiant blue eyes that was fit as a fiddle. Well, I played it cool. OP, you can hang out with me if you want. I'll protect you. I ain't scared of some commie. <laughs> and suddenly we're back in the 50s! She giggled but politely declined my offer. I shrugged and went to take a seat at the back of the class. The lecture ensued and I took notes for the next couple of hours. When it finally ended, I packed up my things and proceeded out to the courtyard. The flyers still flapped in the breeze, and I decided to take one down and stuff it into my pocket. Despite everything that had happened, I didn't want Bourgeois Beard to find himself the subject of undue harassment, and I surmised that if I could prevent him from appearing in public with his Soviet regalia, he might save himself some unnecessary headache at the hands of a spiteful MAGA beard. I don't think you need to worry about it, OP. Honestly, I don't think Bourgeois Beard appears in public anyways. <laughs> I returned home for some lunch. It was about midday and Bourgeois Beard was sleeping. He had no idea about the turn of events that had taken place overnight and dreamed instead about waifus and tendies, as neckbeards are wont to do. <laughs> rather than slide the flyer underneath his door to get lost in the garbage heap on the other side, I pinned it to the wall directly across from his room, so that he could see it when he woke up. Hey, that's a big brain play. Then I made myself some lunch, took a quick break, and returned to classes for the rest of the day. 
When I finally got home in the early afternoon, after all was said and done, Bourgeois Beard paced back and forth in the living room. He was covered in a nervous sweat that glistened beneath the bare light bulb. He had donned his trench coat and hat, perhaps to comfort himself, and he marched back and forth. The woolly cloak swished with each turn. I came inside and he stopped to look at me. He tried to speak, but all that came out was a whimper. For the first time since I had met him, I actually felt bad for him. OP, what's going on, Bourgeois Beard? Bourgeois Beard? Uh, I'm scared, OP. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Is he actually a rapist? Oh, bro, this is too deep for me already. Although I do still want more, but unfortunately that's where the story ends for now. <laughs> This has gone on long enough for now, and real life duties call, I shall return with some more bourgeois beard in the not too distant future. Oh, and we are on the edge of our seats, waiting with bated breath, I tell you. God damn. <laughs> there is something horrible going on with bourgeois beard. If he's actually scared, that is absolutely not a good sign, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> he did something bad. Otherwise, you'd just be like, whatever. Somebody slandering me. Call up my lawyer. I'm going to ask my mommy what I should do. <laughs> oh, what a wild ride. And it is only getting wilder. But my mom bought me this trench coat. It's my favorite coat. <laughs> <laughs> Also, check out my podcast. Also, uh, mine and my wife's channel, Mr. and Mrs. Red X. Yes, indeed. A little bit of bonus content over there for you if you're hungry for it. <laughs> so here we've got Bourgeois Beard, Part 5, Propaganda Wars. You knew it was coming, especially with two uh, extremely opposite political alignments. Yeah, it's all going to come down to a war for hearts and minds. <laughs> Of course, I'm not really won by either of these combatants, but it sure is fun to watch him fight it out, isn't it? <laughs> so yes, hey guys, back again with a little more free time, and thank you so much for spending it with us, Valuable Excuse 3288. Let's not waste it, and we will continue our story. If you're not up to speed, you can find the story as narrated by Red X here, part 1, 2, 3, 4. Yes, dude just jumping right into things, Talk about not wasting any time. Oh boy, he's a man after my own heart, isn't he? For as much as I talk in the videos and kind of waste time, I don't like wasting time in my personal life. I'm like, oh, I got some free time. Let's go ahead and make another video. <laughs> it's kind of just habit at this point. And honestly, I will give massive respect to anybody else who was able to grind in the same way. It's all about that grind, baby. So here's our cast list before we get into the story. Of course, we've got a bourgeois beard, a trash-dwelling communist LARPer who is currently dying of gradual bleach poisoning, <laughs> which shouldn't be funny, but it is. <coughs> and he just won't stop killing himself. <laughs> After a vicious slander campaign that began over a paltry $100, the Moscow molester is sweating like a hooker in a confessional. Maga Beard, Maga Beard, he pays tribute to the God Emperor just by existing. <laughs> he likes guns, trucks, freedom, and the flag. After getting slighted over a hundred bucks that he believed that he was going to get, he started a propaganda war to stop the communist revolution, <laughs> which was never coming in the first place. The revolution or the hundred bucks. And OP is the one who set all this into motion. OP got a lot of heat in the last story, man. We gonna have to watch this fella closely. So OP, hey, that's me. <laughs> Forced to dwell in Bourgeois Beard's nest. I'm just trying to survive the semester as best I can while also watching, you know, the bonus fireworks. <laughs> Probably also a sadist. I'm gonna go ahead and go out on a limb and say, yeah, almost definitely a sadist. After hitting Bourgeois Beard with some uh, assault accusations, OP jumped on in there and corroborated everything, which 
is definitely not the move to make, especially when you know to yourself that you're the one that started all of this. So, not very nice, OP. I will acknowledge that, but goddamn, I am enjoying the story so far. <laughs> so, let's see if there's a, a chance for redemption for you. Bourgeois Beard had been crying. Oh, don't make me feel bad for the beard. <laughs> I looked into those bloodshot, doe-like eyes and realized that things were rapidly spiraling out of control. I will admit that I did feel bad. See? He felt bad. You will. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Are you going to atone? Apologize? No? Just feel bad? Alright then. I felt a pang of consciousness. I quickly buried it, however, because I really did not want to let this guy live rent-free in my head. Instead, I pressed him for answers about his predicament. Bourgeois Beard, I'm scared, OP. I don't know what I'm gonna do. OP, well, what's going on, bud? Why are you upset? <laughs> Just playing the innocent role. God damn, I loved OP for being a jerk in the first few parts, but <laughs> this is like, oh, he's gone so far over the line. Perhaps it's time to come clean, and if not completely come clean, then at least pretend you're aware of the situation and take steps toward remedying the mess that you've made. <laughs> come on, man. Bourgeois Beard held out the crumpled rape flyer in his greasy mitts. I didn't take it. For some reason, the flyer was wet and covered in stains. Ugh. Did everything this guy touched just get soaked in mysterious liquids? It seemed to be the case. Yeah, that's what happens when you're hoarding trash. Trash juice is real and it gets everywhere. <laughs> OP. Yeah, I saw that on the door this morning. I thought I'd put it somewhere that you could see it so you could see what's going on. This seems pretty serious, dude. You should definitely make sure that you address this the right way. Bourgeois Beard. I just don't understand who would do this, OP. OP, I... I know this might be hard to believe, but... I'm a virgin. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> I've never even kissed a girl before. I'm shocked. <laughs> I don't even have any friends. Gasp. Nobody invites me anywhere. <gasps> I don't understand who would do this. <laughs> yeah, he, he does seem to pretty much keep to himself. Except if there's somebody else living in the apartment with him. And then he tries to make their life a living hell and they end up biting back and sometimes, you know, some horrible stuff happens. It's like that meme where the smaller dominoes bump into bigger dominoes. Like, you know, monkey eats fermented fruit and then all the dominoes go up and it's like, now I gotta spend eight hours sitting in front of a spreadsheet all day. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Beardo insisted on hoarding trash. Now he's kicked out of college and his life is ruined. <laughs> it's not as funny a meme. <laughs> I stood there in disbelief, all right. I mean, not at the fact that he was a kissless virgin with no friends who never went to parties. No, that much was basically common knowledge. <laughs> I was in disbelief that he believed himself so desirable that the world had decided to needlessly smite him with such a cruel fate. I was in disbelief that he couldn't put the giant-sized pieces to this puzzle built for developmentally disabled children together. Oh, don't come at the, the giant puzzle piece, kids. <laughs> That's not nice. I was in disbelief that he couldn't put the events of the last 24 hours together and determined that, uh, it must have been Mogabeard who had it out for him and started a smear campaign against him. Yeah, that does seem to be like the one and only event aside from the being horribly sick, but also being horribly sick can take it a lot out of you, man. Dude has consumed a lot of bleach. His brain parts might not be working too good. I give him the benefit of the doubt. But OP says, the absolute audacity of this guy. And then I remembered the trash pizza, which he had insisted on feasting on over the past few days, and my disbelief sort of faded away. This guy was about as sharp as a marble. <laughs> OP, tell me, Bourgeois Beard, is there 
anybody that you can think of who might have it out for you. Because if there is, I'm going to bet that that's the guy who did this. Is there anybody who you've made upset in the last few days? His eyes lit up with a profound understanding. He puffed up his chest, rolled back his shoulders, and pointed his finger at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got the right guy, but for the wrong reason. <laughs> Bourgeois Beard said, It was you, wasn't it? You did this. You've been nothing but a thorn in my side since you showed up to this apartment. You think it's funny that my life is going to hell? You piece of shit. I should knock your goddamn teeth out. Perhaps in an indirect, roundabout way, he was right. <laughs> However, his accusation was misplaced, and the probability of his flabby arms packing enough force to actually knock my teeth out was pathetically low. See, he remembers the events between him and OP because he wasn't dying from bleach trash. Now, <laughs> he doesn't remember what happened with Maga Beard because of the bleach trash. I'm pretty sure. But OP corrects him. No, you idiot. I didn't print those flyers. I don't have the time or money to just run off hundreds of those to plaster them around campus. I'm eating a diet of ramen just to survive, man. Funny as it is to watch you have a hard time and learn your lessons, I didn't do it. Try again. Who did you piss off lately? Why are there holes in our drywall? Bourgeois Beard. Uh, and there's holes in our drywall because you're a dick. <laughs> Wrong again. My hand hit my forehead with an audible slap. I could feel a migraine coming on as I tried to reason with this neck beard. It was like talking to a wall. I shook my head and asked him again, encouraging him to really think about it this time. Put on your big boy pants. Put on your thinking cap. I know you can do it. <laughs> Once again, profound understanding lit up in his eyes, and he spoke softly. His voice dripped with venom. It was that fucking fascist. If I had a cookie, I would have gladly given it to him. Cookies, gold stars, banana stickers, he, he earned them all. <laughs> oh, banana stickers? Those are my favorite. I would do basically anything for a banana sticker. It's a banana sticker. By God, this neckbeard was actually beginning to understand the rudimentary laws of cause and effect. Oh, surely not, this goes against all the research data. <laughs> I was proud of him, as proud as a mother of her corpulent, mentally challenged child could possibly be. <laughs> Jesus Christ, OP's really going in hard. He's like doubling down on all of this. He had successfully identified one of his problems for perhaps the first time in his life. And now that he had armed himself with this understanding, I wondered if he could possibly use it to fix the situation at hand. Bourgeois Beard? I still don't know what I'm gonna do though, OP. I'm scared. I can't go outside. People will probably think that I'm some kind of molester now. I don't know what I should do. <laughs> Yeah, this is a hard one to brain out, I'm gonna tell you that. But OP swoops in with some advice. Look, if I were you, I'd probably sit tight for a bit. Just let it blow over. I doubt that Mogabeard has the steam, the motivation, or the resources to keep this up all week. By the end of it, there probably won't be any flyers around anymore. I'll do you solid, because accusing an innocent person of something like this is honestly pretty messed up. Stuff like this legitimately ruins lives for no reason. So I'll tear him down and throw him out whenever I see him, okay? Do you have any more classes this week? I mean, it is kind of cleaning up your mess. <laughs> but it is, uh, I guess, a good thing to do. Although, let's make a mental note that <laughs> OP kind of went along and accused an innocent person in the last episode. But maybe he's just caught up in the moment. He's just having funsies. He didn't realize uh, what a life ruiner it could be. But yes, do consider it. Think before you speak. Bourgeois Beard luckily says he doesn't have any classes. At least not until Friday. OP. 
then that gives you some time to sit tight and let things settle down. Let people get it out of their systems a little bit. When you do have to go to your classes, don't wear your freaking commie clothes like an idiot. They're looking for somebody like that to socially lynch. You keep that crap in your room. Hell, just throw them out with your garbage and turn over a new leaf. Because you're probably not going to live this mess down if you go outside wearing those. That's just putting a target on your back, bourgeois beard. But my mom bought me this trench coat. It's my favorite coat. <laughs> <laughs> is it worth being socially or perhaps physically lynched over i would say not save it until after college if you like it that much <laughs> op whatever take my advice or don't it's not my problem but you probably should if you're not gonna take my word about the pizza then at least, please, take my word about the stupid trench coat. Do you want to come out on top of this or not, bourgeois beard? <sighs> I can't believe I'm caving to a freaking fascist like him. God damn it. He's gonna get his, I swear. The gulag is too good for him. <laughs> Where is the gulag? Have you built it yet? <laughs> is this just like... Uh... It is a fantasy. I'm not even going to ask that question. He took his trench coat and hat off and threw him on the couch. His eyes were still wet. I could tell that being forced to grow up <laughs> was a painful process for him. He, however, was in a war. A propaganda war. And he needed to act accordingly if he was going to survive. And this realization was slowly beginning to dawn on him. My god, this, this does throw all the research out the window. He's actually taking advice, beginning to learn. Maybe he's not as neckbeardy as we thought initially. Uh, we'll have to take more notes. My day was coming to an end. I was ready to unwind, and so I fixed myself a little lunch and retired to my room. My coursework could wait until tomorrow, and I chose to just get comfy instead. Bourgeois Beard milled about the house a little bit before returning to his room, and the evening slowly wore on. Neither of us really felt like doing anything. He was content to raid with his guild and live down the events of the last 24 hours. I was content to sit back and watch movies and remind myself that this was, in fact, not my problem. Nobody wanted to answer the door when a fist pounded against it. I shouted from where I reclined, OP, Bourgeois Beard, get the damn door, dude. I mean, I'd like to say it's not OP's problem, but yeah, I don't think not my circus, not my monkeys applies when you, you built the circus. <laughs> you had a rather large hand in this, but I don't blame you for not wanting to get the door. I don't do that crap either. <laughs> Bourgeois Beard shouted back from across the hall that I should fuck off and get it instead. The fist insistently beat on the door again and I dragged myself up from where I sat. I went to the front door and asked who it was. From the other side, I heard a gruff voice respond, Campus Police! Ah, crap, I called this one out in the last episode. Yep, yep, <laughs> we knew this was gonna happen. I unlocked the door, and I opened it. Two officers stood there. They looked like they had just got off a couple of bicycles, judging by their short shorts and bicycle helmets. Oh, they just ran a cop's... We don't need you here right now, officer. You you come on back when the big boys are on shift. <laughs> I'll talk to them. Not you. But he still has an Arnold voice. Officer 1. Hey there. We've seen some flyers around campus lately. Talking about somebody who lives in this dormitory building. Do you know anything about them? OP. Yeah, I saw a few of those flyers on my way to class this morning. Guess they were talking about some sexual assaulter or something like that. You guys are looking for him, or what? Officer 2? Yeah, we'd like to see if we could find the guy that they were talking about and ask him some questions. You don't happen to know anyone that matches that description on the flyer, do you? OP? Hmm, can't say that I do. <laughs> Officer 1? What's with the posters? OP? The posters? They're mine. <laughs> Now you're getting this some hot water, boy. Officer 2. Do you live here alone, or do you have a roommate right now? OP. 
I have a roommate. Do you want me to get him for you? Officer 2. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> this is getting hot already. A little bit too spicy for me, boy. How about a little spicy meat? <laughs> yeah, boy. And you lied to the cops already? You know they're going to take notice of that. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I stepped away from the door and shut it, leaving the cops outside while I went to Bourgeois Beard's room. His door was shut, and I knocked. He opened the door. He looked upset. I must have dragged him away from his gaming or something like that. <laughs> he was mumbling something into his foxier headset to his guildmates, telling them, hey, to hold on for a second. Oh, I don't know if he's going to be back anytime soon, friends. <laughs> you might need to find a new healer or, or, or tank or whatever the hell he's doing. OP, dude. The campus police are here, and they're asking questions about the flyers. They're looking for a guy who matches the description. I already ran interference for you, man. They asked about the posters, and I said they're mine. And then they asked if I had a roommate. They told me to come and get you. Just don't go out there in your stupid hat. And play it cool, man. All right? Oh, I, <laughs> this is not going to go well. Have you ever known a neckbeard to play it cool? No matter how hard they try. Bourgeois Beard didn't say a word, and he pushed back through the garbage and passed me. He went to the door and opened it. I stayed in the hallway and listened to the conversation that was unfolding over by the entrance to our apartment. Was I going to see Bourgeois Beard on Cops later tonight? I could already hear the screeching. Yeah, that would be quite an episode. Make sure you TiVo that! I don't think anybody uses TiVo anymore. <laughs> Bourgeois Beard? Uh... Hey, Officer One. Hey, we're looking into some flyers that appeared on campus. Do you know anything about them? Bourgeois Beard. Uh, yeah, uh, my roommate showed them to me earlier today. Uh, that's about it. Officer One. Well, we're looking for the guy mentioned on them. You don't know anything about the individual described on these flyers, do you? Bourgeois Beard. No, uh, can't say that I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same line. Oh, God, that's beautiful. Officer One, what's the deal with the posters? Bourgeois Beard, I don't know. My roommate hangs them up. I, I personally hate them, and I, I think they're stupid. I voted for Trump. Yay, America, and all that. <laughs> He must be so salty after having to regurgitate this line, and I love it. Officer One, do you mind if we come in and take a look around? Bourgeois Beard, uh, not without a warrant. <laughs> Got him. At least Bourgeois Beard knew his rights. I will give him that. He asked if there was anything else they wanted, to which they responded, no. And he shut the door on him after telling them to have a good day. Wow. He acted way cooler than I thought he would act. <laughs> God damn, dude. Like, 9 out of 10 people would let them in without a warrant. All right, so that's plus one point for Bourgeois Beard. He's only 998 points in the hole for those keeping track. <laughs> Bourgeois Beard walked down the hall where I stood. The blood had drained from his face. I patted him on the shoulder and told him to take a deep breath and relax. I assured him that if he played his cards right, he could easily live this nightmare down. Bourgeois Beard. Uh, this is so fucked up, OP. I've never had sex with anyone. And now the cops are coming to my door looking for a communist copulator? <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I had to recycle communist copulator from the last episode. That was too good to just leave it behind. OP, you're kinda lucky that you're a virgin, Bourgeois Beard. There's no spiteful ex-girlfriend that could point the finger at you because she feels like it, so count your blessings, man. I don't know how long that'll cover for you, though. People are talking, and I already ran into several people making some stuff up in one of my classes. Yeah, leave out the part where you jumped in on it and you're like, hey, <laughs> I corroborate this whole thing. <laughs> Bourgeois Beard. Oh, man, 
That is such bullcrap! I can't believe people are just making all this mess up. Don't they know that just lying about people can ruin their lives? At this, he drove his fist into the drywall, putting a good fist-sized hole next to the ones that Mogabeard had left in our drywall. At least he wasn't breaking intact walls, but yeah, still, it's the principle of the matter. Who's gonna clean this crap up? Nobody. <laughs> Whoever moves in it next is gonna have to deal with it. Or I don't know, some maintenance man who doesn't get paid enough. So I left him there and went into my room and settled back into my bed to watch the rest of my movie. I could hear Bourgeois Beard pacing up and down the hallway. It wasn't until about maybe 30 minutes later that he materialized in my doorway. Bourgeois Beard. Oh, P. <laughs> I have an idea. Uh-oh. <laughs> I put my movie on pause and sat up in my bed. I was curious what his pacing had revealed to him. Bourgeois Beard. Uh, people are talking about this and, and making shit up even though it's totally fake, right? Well, I can't make them stop talking about it, but uh, I can make them talk about something else. LP? Hmm. Go on. Bourgeois Beard? I can make flyers too, OP. <laughs> I've got plenty of paper just sitting around in my stash. It'd take a while, but I could make a couple thousand. I could start a campaign that would take people's attention away from me and put it on something else. I just don't know what I would do. I need something that would get people's attention more than a molester running around on campus. The Kremlin Creeper <laughs> was on to something, all right. I was frankly surprised that he was even capable of coming to such a realization on his own. Pause. Yes, this is way outside the research. We are dealing with, like, a new level of beard here. He's learning lessons. He's forming his own thoughts. It's unheard of, honestly. I hope at some point we could do a comparison with Maga Beard and see how political alignment might factor into this. Maybe he wasn't as stupid as he looked. <laughs> it would prevent a fabricated accusation from surfacing if people found themselves with some new, shocking, juicy event over which to obsess. So OP questions, well, what are you thinking? What's more pressing in the court of public opinion than somebody being assaulted? Because that's pretty severe and it is not going to be quickly forgotten. Oh, I don't know if you know the court of public opinion, OP. <laughs> it shifts interest pretty fast, all things considered. Even for things that heinous, you give it a month, nobody's gonna remember. Bourgeois Beard? I don't know, but I want to kill two birds with one stone. I want the attention off of me, and I want to make Maga Beard hurt. That fascist has it coming. I just don't know... What would do that? OP, bro, what happened to all the talk about lies that needlessly screwed up people's lives? Bourgeois Beard? Hey, fuck him! He deserves to have his life ruined! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, sorta, Maga Beard deserves it, but OP is pretty deserving of it too. I might even say more, since he's engineered this entire situation <laughs> for his own amusement. Oh yeah, well, so much for the moral high ground. Bourgeois Beard returned to his room, and I heard him digging around in the trash pile. For the first time in his life, he had a real-world use for his dragon's horde of detritus. <laughs> I didn't hear the sounds of gunshots coming from his speaker system. No, he was busy hatching his plan, his comeback, his revenge. Left to my own devices, I finally finished my movie and eventually dozed off. I woke up the next morning for another long day of studying, and I saw that tacked up in the hallway were several flyers. They were all different. Was he asking me to, like, A, B test them? <laughs> I pulled the flyers down one by one and examined them. Most of them were garbage, literally and figuratively. A burglar doesn't really supersede a sexual assaulter. Nor did a home invader. One by one, I crumpled them up and threw them on the floor. 
They were garbage ideas on garbage paper written by a garbage person living in a garbage nest. <laughs> then I saw it. The one flyer that catered to the societal hysteria blasted at us from every direction. The news screeched about it. The professors preached about it. The student body was quick to socially lynch even the most milquetoast of heretical opinions over it. I fished out a pen and drew a little check mark on the corner of it. The bastard had done it all right. He had found a sin so insolvent by virtue of the societal narrative that it would ruin any man's life. He found the sin that trumped sexism in spades. He found the magic word. Racism. Oh boy, this is getting hot and heavy, isn't it? Jesus Christ, man. It is a propaganda war in the purest terms. I'm really not even sure who to root for anymore. Like, <laughs> OP just has no guilt over it. Bourgeois Beard, he's willing to go the full nine, ruin somebody's life on behalf of his life getting ruined. Uh, Maga Beard, he's obviously willing to ruin people's lives as well. These are just not good people to be hanging out with. But I will give them this. God damn, it makes for one engaging story. <laughs> does racism uh, trump sexism? I guess it does. Really, I turned my nose up at identity politics and basically politics of any kind because it's just a waste of time and mental energy. I'm like, whatever, bro, let the boat sink. I'm going to worry about me. <laughs> That's fine. As long as we can have a laugh along the way, I'm good. And there were some laughs in this one. Obviously, I had to lighten it up on the language because, like I said, YouTube is watching for me right now. I had a bunch of videos get slammed with demonetization. And uh, while some of them did regain their monetized status, uh, about six of them did not. So that is super sad. But they are all parts of sagas, so hopefully people will watch the demonetized video and then watch the other four or five videos in the saga. So I guess it's not a complete wash, but yeah, it does hurt just a little bit. Yeah, how about Reverend Jesse Jackson? I'm pretty sure South Park let me know that he was the representative for all black people, so you apologize to him, you're basically good. <laughs> apologize. Kiss it. You want me to kiss your... That's right, apologize. Bourgeois Beard, Part 6. Bourgeois Beard Needs the BBC. The British Broadcasting Company. It might also mean something else, but we're not going to go there quite yet. It's too early in the video. <laughs> YouTube's going to knock me around for it. So, uh, hey guys, how's it going? Hi, user valuable excuse 3288. Thanks to Red X for carrying me through the week. Hey, I got you, fam. I am getting older, you know, my back's starting to hurt, but I am a cringe-powered conveyance device. As many people as need to be carried through the week, I can do it, don't you worry. <laughs> I finally found some time away from work to get back to the story of Bourgeois Beard, so uh, let's get into it. Yes, let's shall. But first, a link swarm, part one, two, three, four, five. Hey, I linked those in a playlist at the beginning of the video because that is the smart thing to do these days. We've also got our cast list, of course. BB, that's bourgeois beard. The valiant vanguard of the People's Republic here in the United States, or so he likes to think. He likes shooting games and garbage and Catwoman. And a lot of Catwoman. <laughs> He's currently under fire after a targeted propaganda campaign from Maga Beard that smeared him as a sexual assaulter. Yes, we call him the communist copulator. <laughs> I'm really holding on to that one. MB is Maga Beard, tried and true Trumpian acolyte sworn to do the God Emperor's bidding. Flag-waving, Bible-thumping, orange man-idolizing constitutional acolyte. He doesn't know it, but Bourgeois Beard is about to give him a taste of his own medicine. Or oh, what goes around comes around, that's what I know. I really do enjoy how I go into the comment section and this story is super polarizing. People are like, Bourgeois Beard's the worst, and other people are like, Maga Beard's the worst. <laughs> Basically just like, lining up on their little political lines. 
when really they're both cut from the same cloth, just opposite sides of it. You know what I'm saying? Hey, there's also our OP. That's me, uni student and garbage dump neighbor, trying to navigate the bumpy road of this semester as best I can, and admittedly, getting my kicks in while doing so. And somebody in the comments did point out that OP couldn't have known how this would progress, how MAGA Beard would take his vengeance against Bourgeois Beard. But he's definitely stirring the pot. He definitely uh, confirmed some allegations in attempts to get some chick's phone number. And uh, that does drop him a few points in my book, but I gotta give him somewhat of a pass, you know, because he is the one that brought the story to us. Though, I do sincerely hope that he shapes up so we don't have to ship him out. Honestly, I probably wouldn't ship him out though. I'd just start roasting him every single episode, which, uh, maybe that's more fun. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, now we're back into current events. OP threw away the crumpled draft flyers in the kitchen and went to grab the book bag. I had one class for this morning and I needed to get a move on. There was no time to wait around for Bourgeois Beard to wake up and see his reaction. Either way, it was unlikely that he would even be up before noon, so I was sure to encounter him at some point when I came back. I headed out into the thronging masses that populated the campus that morning, and found myself sitting in the back of a classroom, waiting for the professor to arrive. Oh, now that's professionalism. <laughs> <laughs> That's the biggest red flag. You walk into a class, professor doesn't even give a fuck enough to be there. Bro, you're supposed to be here before everybody. What's going on in your life? Not that I actually care. Just shut up and teach the class, all right? <laughs> I'm paying to be here. You're wasting my time. But yeah, that's a tangent. <laughs> People were still whispering about the bothersome Bolshevik bachelor that threatened the young women of this campus. Albeit, they weren't as interested as they were yesterday. I guess the public was starting to get bored already, as they do. Give it a month, nobody's gonna be talking about this thing. It's like Twitter outrage. It booms for like a week and then it just goes away forever. <laughs> you never hear about it again. Once the professor finally freaking arrived, class was, uh, boring and routine. <laughs> Got a syllabus, recorded the first lecture, Got some assigned reading and got sent on my merry way. Yeah, that professor doesn't give a single damn. <laughs> you need to drop that class ASAP. With the rest of the day now my own, I had work that I needed to do, so I headed back. It was just a little before noon when I returned. Bourgeois Beard had gotten up earlier than usual, it seemed. At least judging by the faint aroma of bleach and a massive stack of greasy stained papers and half-crumpled napkins covered in hastily scrawled sharpies set on the dining room table. This was his pile of flyers. <laughs> That's so pathetic, dude! Oh, I don't know if anybody's gonna buy it. They're just gonna pick up the flyer and mistake it for trash and throw it away. <laughs> Why am I gonna read this trash? Ah. Oh. Beside them sat a toilet paper tube covered in loose bits of tape that had been hastily attached. Bourgeois Beard was indeed going all out. Yeah, in between still snacking on his bleach pizza. And I don't think that the bleach pizza is the reason that he seems to have completely lost his mind, but uh, it probably doesn't help. <laughs> I called out into the apartment and heard a familiar cascade of garbage and a familiar curse. Bourgeois Beard came out of his room and into the living room while I watched him from the kitchen. OP, I see you've been busy. Bourgeois Beard, yeah, I have. <laughs> I'm taking a break, though. My wrist is starting to cramp up from riding so much. Hey, OP, I need to ask you a favor. OP, no, dude, no favors. <laughs> and that is the correct response. Bourgeois Beard, uh, come on, OP. I need your help. I want to make this believable. I want this to screw over Maga Beard so bad that he can't come out of his dorm for a month. Yeah, fair's fair, I do guess. But really, all one is doing is making the other hide away for a month. That's not how you win a propaganda war. To win a propaganda war, you gotta inundate the people. Never let them forget about this crap that you're shoving down their throats. I learned from the best. God bless America. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, OP says, dude, whatever you're cooking up, I really want no part in it. Bourgeois beard. Uh, but I can't go out there, OP. Not until the heat is off me, anyways. Come on, man. Do me a favor. I've done you so many favors. And by so many, I mean one. But that's more than you deserve, <laughs> considering the welcoming that he got into this apartment, right? I wasn't going to do it. There was no way in hell that I was going to do it. My involvement in everything that had transpired had gone on long enough. Still, despite my resolve, I couldn't help but ask him, mm, What do you want, bourgeois beard? Uh, I need you to find a black guy. <laughs> Hi. Okay. And bring it back here. What the hell? OP, what? <laughs> Why, bourgeois beard? Well, something you said the other day got me thinking. <laughs> You said, at least you don't have an ex-bourgeois beard to make your life totally worse over this fake rape thing. And then, it hits me this morning. What if we could get someone to back up the story that Maga Beard is a racist? Yeah, how are you going to get the black dude on your side? I guess just tell him that he voted for Trump. You just need an anti-Trump black guy. I think that's basically everybody except Kanye West. <laughs> I love this guy right here. OP, dude, you don't even know if he's racist, Bourgeois Beard. Yeah, of course he's racist. He's white. All white people are racist. <laughs> oh boy. Here we go. I mean, I was pretty sure I was under the impression that Bourgeois Beard was white himself, but I guess Marxism purged his identity or something like that. This is really weird. OP, oh, is that how it works now? Racist is just a slur for all white people? Bourgeois beard. Uh, all white people are racist. And look, you can just go down to the basketball courts or the, <laughs> or the Popeyes across the street. And <laughs> God damn it, dude. He did not say that. You've, you've got to be embellishing that for this story. If he said that, that is <laughs> the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Oh, God. Maybe he's just embracing his own theory or something like that. Oh, even reading it, I am horribly uncomfortable. <laughs> and find a black guy and just get him to come back here so I can talk to him. <laughs> And I'll explain why I need him to come out and talk about how Maga Beard's a racist and, and try to start a bunch of crap with him just because he's black. And then, Maga Beard will never hear the end of it. <laughs> OP, you're asking me to help you manufacture a hate hoax, Bourgeois Beard. It's not a hoax, OP. It's who Maga Beard really is. We just need somebody to accuse him, and it will all come to light. <laughs> I'm actually sure that he really does believe this in his heart of hearts. But overall, Maga Beard did seem like a, a decent guy before it got into this political war, and he freaked out over $100. <laughs> That's what I lost respect for. But the first day we met him, I'm like, all right, as usual, don't agree with your politics, but maybe you're okay. Or... Maybe he's a complete psychopath, <laughs> as we've seen depicted. OP, suppose I go down to wherever and find a black guy. How the hell am I going to bring him back here in the first place? Just walk up and say, hey, I don't know you, but I need you to come back to my house for no reason at all. It's urgent. That is absurd. Bourgeois beard. Uh, I don't know. You could offer to pay him. OP. Hey, random guy, I don't know you, but I'll give you money to come back to my house. <laughs> I've got a puppy in the van. <laughs> yeah, because that doesn't sound even worse. I'm going to get arrested for soliciting prostitution. Besides, I, we don't even have any money. Even if on the off chance he did say that he would come back here, we have literally nothing to pay him with. 
Unless you pay him in ramen packets, which uh, got to have some financial value. You know, 10 for a dollar, that's uh, a shiny dime. <laughs> also, might I remind you that that's basically the core of how all of this mess started in the first place? Promising payments that would never be paid? Bourgeois beard. Help me. Come on. Just bring me a black guy. <laughs> Say ooh. Say ooh. Uh, this is the most ridiculous thing I think I've ever read. I, <laughs> I have seen some tall tales, but this is out of control fast. OP, and then what are you going to do, bourgeois beard? I'm going to point the finger at Maga Beard and say, uh, I don't know, he called him the N-word or something. OP, what makes you think that this hypothetical guy would be willing to blame somebody else for something that they didn't do? I think you're letting this whole situation get to your head, bro. He definitely is. He is out of control at this point. Just wants to lash out in basically any way. And he's obviously not scared to pull innocent people into the crap pile with him. Because, like, I don't know, why would you help him out at all? There's no reason to accuse this kid that you don't know of something that he did not say for another kid that you don't know. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, Bourgeois Beard began to pout, as beards often do. Once again, I was a foil to his grandiose plans. First, by defiling his garbage heap, and then by not feeding him, and now by refusing to rope any more people into this absolute mess. I wasn't about to offer random strangers money to come back to my house and ask them to participate in a hate hoax. I had to draw the line. As you should, because this is madness for sure, in its purest form. I already knew that Bourgeois Beard was slightly crazy, not just because of his political leanings, but hoarding trash, eating bleach pizza, like... <laughs> these are not things that a normal human being should do. I'd really like to get a psychological profile going of this guy, because that would be an absolute mess to dig through. And probably easier than digging through the actual mess, which is his house. <laughs> Bourgeois beard. Uh, whatever, dude. I don't need you to find someone anyways. Uh, though, I do need you to... OP, no. <laughs> Bourgeois beard. Uh, why do you keep cutting me off? Uh, come on, bro. If you won't find somebody, then uh, uh, could you at least help me put these flyers up? OP, why can't you do it yourself? Bourgeois beard. Because people are still stuck on that whole rape thing. OP, so? Go after dark. Nobody has to see you go out and do it. Yeah, but isn't that a bad one? <laughs> Possible sexual assaulter caught out after dark. I mean, I think he'd be honestly fine if he didn't wear his commie clothes, which it's been established that he got rid of, right? Right? You did get rid of the commie clothes, didn't you? <laughs> no, he didn't. His mom bought him that coat. How could he throw it away? <laughs> Bourgeois beard. But it have to rain with my guild. I told him I'd be there tonight. And we don't have another healer. I can't flake out on him, dude. I promise them. Well, that's a lie. Who's raiding with only one healer? <laughs> Even a tiny raid, a 10-man raid, you're gonna need at least two healers, probably three. But I don't think that OP is as into the MMOs as I once was, and still am, depending on <laughs> how I'm feeling. OP, well, then I guess your flyering campaign can wait, because I'm not doing it, man. And that is the best argument of all. You don't need to bring up how many healers. Just say no. You do it. <laughs> Why would I do it? No! <laughs> Bourgeois beard. You owe me. If it wasn't for you, this wouldn't have happened. OP, you really want to start playing the cause and effect game? Because we can go back and trace this whole chain of events right to its start, man. I am not budging on this. Do it your damn self. Go do it when it's dark. Hell, go after your raid. 
I don't care. I am not putting them up. Well, that's so sad. How's he gonna canvas the entire campus like Mogabeard did? He's gonna have to sleep until noon. Oh, wait. He does that anyways. <laughs> Do you think that Mogabeard did all of this by himself? I mean, he doesn't seem like the most pleasant person with his anger management issues, but maybe he's got some friends. I don't really know. How big is this campus? It was a hell of a lot of flyers as it was described. So anyways, I left Bourgeois Beard in the front of the house as I tucked off to my room with a steaming bowl of ramen and locked the door. I cracked open the books and got to work. The first week of classes was drawing to its conclusion all too quickly, and I was already falling behind. Yeah, that'll happen when you get all caught up in shenanigans. You need to keep your nose to the grindstone, your face in the books, you know what I'm saying? Concentrate! Do the things that are going to improve your life in some way. Please, for God's sake. <laughs> Thankfully, Bourgeois Beard was quiet, busily shuffling through his trash hoard to make the accoutrement needed to weigh psychological warfare against Maga Beard. At least I didn't have to drown out the thrumming pulse of a subwoofer as it belched out the sounds of gunfire this evening, so I made good headway. And now, finally exhausted, I settled into a lovely sleep. Ah, well-deserved, I guess. One class. <laughs> ah, but no, that's fair, that's fair. Homework is hard, too, all right? Morning broke once more, as it does, and I held the pillow against my head, trying to drown out the pulse of automatic gunfire. <laughs> yeah, not at night, but in the morning, here it comes. I guess Bourgeois Beard hadn't even slept. Sadly, the gunfire was too loud, and I dragged myself from my sheets and out of the house to the bathroom. I splashed some water on my face and rubbed the crust from my eyes. I let out a sigh. <sighs> I still had a mountain of work to do, and with the noise coming from the den of detritus, I knew that I would not be able to focus. Today was going to have to be a library day. Yay, library day! Except they don't have, like, the cool books at the college library. It's like all studying stuff. Like, bro, just give me some fictional trash to sink my teeth into for a couple hours. How about that? But no, OP did the right thing with his nose in the right books. I went up to my room, I loaded up my belongings, and I got dressed. I started down the hallway and towards the flight of stairs. I was still fairly true to my regular morning routine, and I saw that the halls were mostly empty. I descended the flight of stairs and walked out of the building onto the campus. Bourgeois Beard had been up all night. The campus was a mess. On every feasible surface, held on by a patchwork of mismatched tape and or tacks, were half-crumpled, damp, stained, stinky flyers written on old notes, invoices, drawings, of course those infamous pizza boxes, and shipping labels. <laughs> All that waited was for the student body to wake up and find them. Isn't that another great reason to use actual paper? It's super obvious <laughs> whose trash this is. It has addresses on it. You can trace it back to its source instantly. Some nice white paper? That's like totally anonymous unless you lick it or something stupid. <laughs> I made my way to the library and passed the cheese-crusted box lid that decried some evil resident racist who had allegedly unduly maligned some hypothetical poor guy or girl, and I went into the library. You gotta be specific, don't you? <laughs> I don't know. Why would I ever expect Bourgeois Beard to be able to keep his thoughts straight? I passed the empty tables and found myself a seat in a nice soft chair near the back and settled in. A soft chair in the campus library? What is this? They got Starbucks in the corner or something like that? I remember all those library chairs being wooden and disgusting and horrible. <laughs> the hours began to melt away as I tackled my reading assignments. The morning was rapidly fading and I stood up to stretch my legs. I took a walk around the library. From between the rows of bookshelves, I could hear the whispers. I guess the trash flyers were somehow surprisingly effective. First a rapist and now a racist? What the hell's even going on on this campus anymore? 
I didn't know we had a clan chapter at our school. <laughs> Somebody should really get the dean involved. Did you see what they were written on? Clearly, it's serious. Some poor, underprivileged soul had to go digging through the trash just to get the paper to let other people know. <laughs> oh, so the trash actually adds to the credibility. This is some 4D chess moves right here. I can't foresee what the outcome of this will be. <laughs> My friend met the guy, and he told me the telephone was ringing off the hook. Figuratively and literally, as it turned out, my phone buzzed in my pocket. I pulled it out and saw that Mogabeard was calling me. Uh-oh. <laughs> round and round we go. I couldn't take the call since, you know, I was in the library, and I let it go to voicemail. After a moment, a notification popped up. New message. I played it. Margabeard. Hey, OP, it's Margabeard. I hope you're having a tremendous day. It seems I've got a little bit of a problem, and I could use your help. No, it's nothing to do with my taxes. Some garbage person thought it would be funny to post a bunch of flyers around campus, and now I have a pack of screeching soy boys following me around demanding I apologize to black people. <laughs> <laughs> it's becoming a big pain in my ass. I had to take my hat off and lose them in a crowd just to get away. I got an offer for you. Take down any fly you see, and I'll pay you 50 bucks. Well, they sure singled him out pretty quick, didn't they? <laughs> you have to apologize to black people. Which black people? All of them. <laughs> uh. Yeah, how about Reverend Jesse Jackson? I'm pretty sure South Park let me know that he was the representative for all black people, so you apologize to him, you're basically good. <laughs> uh, apologize. Kiss it. You want me to kiss your... That's right, apologize. Honestly, 50 bucks ain't too bad, but I'm not going to go touching <laughs> Bourgeois Beard's trash after seeing his Catwoman cum jar. <laughs> Hard pass on that. Thanks, though. I shot him back a text. OP, why can't you do it? Maga Beard, because everyone's looking for me. I need to get back to my dorm and lay low. I know this probably surprises you, but uh, I don't have anyone else I can ask. Please, OP, mm, make it a hundred. <laughs> Maga Beard agreed. Oh my. Playing both sides of the fence, I see. And that also answers the question of whether Mogabeard did it himself. It must be a relatively small campus. If both of these neckbeards are able to just make one night of it and have the place completely covered, ridiculous. So, I was now beholden to two beards, promising to discard the propaganda that they had fabricated against one another. Instead of doing my duty, however, I returned to my classwork and reviewed my notes from the lectures. Nose to the grindstone, that's a good boy. Proud of you. I wondered for a minute if things would continue to spiral further and further down, or if perhaps the two diametrically opposed beards could enjoy a moment of peace, realizing that they each could easily mold and wield the power of public opinion against one another. It might have been too much to ask for. Yeah, if you know neckbeards. <laughs> They don't get along too much. They do congregate, but they stab each other in the back first chance they get, especially around miladies. There's no milady involved, but now that they've locked horns, yeah, I think it's going to be a duel to the death. <laughs> One person is going to end up leaving this college. Either way, I hope that they would at least dial it back and agree to the doctrine of mutually assured destruction. It is a mad, mad world, after all. Ain't that the truth? We get a little slice of it every day, but it's rarely as enjoyable as it is in the Bourgeois Beard Saga. I really do like this one a lot. So, the day was wearing on, and sometime in the early afternoon, I began to feel the pangs of hunger. Mmm. As I walked around the campus, I took down the flyers of each beard as I encountered them, and made a nice, healthy stash inside my backpack. The ones accusing Bourgeois Beard of preying on women found their way into the trash. A couple of times, people asked me what I thought I was doing, and I remarked that I wanted to keep one for review, just in case, you know, I ran into Lecherous Lenin or the MAGA racist. 
a little blustering of how I was uh, preparing to kick their asses put my inquisitors at ease, but they still had the stink of suspicion about them. Whatever. Yeah, it's a free country. Go ahead, try and stop me, bro. <laughs> With a healthy pile now inside my backpack, I called Mogabeard and told him that I was on my way to collect my payment. I arrived and Mogabeard answered. His bright red trump hat, of course, perched back proudly upon his head. He hissed at me to get inside quickly before anyone saw us. <laughs> I shrugged and walked inside. In the center of the room sat a massive terrain layout for Warhammer, along with an army of men wearing power armor and brandishing rifles. Of course, they were painted in red, white, and they bled blue. American Space Marines <laughs> through and through. <laughs> an American flag hung above a crucifix on a wall. The apartment was kept well enough, from what I could tell. Slightly trashy, but nowhere near as bad as Bourgeois Beard's dumpster den. But it did have a very onion-like odor that clung to everything. I'm guessing that this was Maga Beard's natural pheromones. Yeah, gotta keep those pheromones strong for the maladies that never come around. <laughs> Maga Beard. Did you take down any flyers, OP? Yeah, dude. I got a whole stack in my backpack. Take a look. I pulled them out and dumped them on a nearby chair, and Mogabeard breathed a sigh of relief. Mogabeard, you're a lifesaver. A bigly. <laughs> uh, there's just one problem. I don't have a hundred bucks. I've only got fifty. Bro, how dare you! But yeah, I'd take what I could get, I guess. The deed is already done. <laughs> OP is cool about it. He says, no worries, man. I took the money and slipped it into my wallet. Despite the chaos that I had sown, the cards were coming up in my favor. All's well that ends well, it seems. As I turned to make my way out, Mogabeard suddenly stopped me. Mogabeard, it was that freaking red commie, wasn't it? OP, what? Mogabeard, he was the one who put up those freaking flyers, wasn't he? My suspicions are tremendous. <laughs> OP, I mean, yeah, he did, man. But at this point, you would think that this had gone on long enough, huh? You guys have both learned a lesson, dude. Making up lies about each other and spreading them around can fuck both of you over. If I were you, I would just let the matter lie. Mogabeard, what are you talking about? OP, you did put up the flyers about Bourgeois Beard getting handsy with the ladies, didn't you? I mean, you were super pissed when he didn't pay you for taking notes for him, and you did yell, THIS ISN'T OVER, a bunch of times. I put two and two together, and figured that you were the one who went and made those flyers talking about him being a predator. Maga Beard, that honestly was not me, OP. OP? Well... If it wasn't you, then who was it? Oh snap, dude, the plot thickens. Maybe he really is a gross, disgusting neckbeard that can't keep his hands to himself. Or maybe there's another uh, commie on campus. <laughs> I mean, OP doesn't know everybody, right? We're just relating it to the person that closest fits this description, I guess. Oh man, this is getting heavy. Maga beard. I don't know, but it seems to me like you might have bigger problems on your hands. Whatever. Look, I'm not gonna retaliate, but it sounds like your roommate has some explaining to do. Bro, is is Maga Beard lying about this right now? I am so confused. <laughs> I let out an exasperated sigh and shook my head. Maga Beard saw me out. As I stood in the hallway of his dormitory wing, I felt a painful sinking in my chest. This is getting heavy, dude. I don't even know what's up and what's down anymore. <laughs> Who do I believe? The plot has thickened so much I can't even choke it down. Somebody did predict this in the comments when the flyers got dropped, and I don't recall who it is, but they definitely knocked that one out of the park. Absolutely crazy. Who could have seen this coming? Is Maga Beard lying? Is Bourgeois Beard lying? Somebody is lying. And, ah oh man, I can't wait for part number seven as we dig even deeper. So we came back with a giant bag of fried chicken that night from the Popeye's dumpster. Oh lord, he's probably looking for a black guy. <laughs> Here you go. 
Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, you think I can get some get that on my place? Bourgeois Beard Part 7 Amelioration. Oh, that means to like make something better. That's a, a five dollar word that I do know, as a matter of fact. <laughs> So who's making what better? I don't know. I guess OP is trying to make up for his past sins. That's my theory anyways. Because he's taking all those posters down. So hello everyone. Hi valuable excuse. Finally found myself with a little bit of time with which to continue the tale at hand. Let us delve into bourgeois beard. It seems that Red X has made a playlist of our previous installments, which you can find here. Oh, it's just a, a playlist. Isn't that so convenient? We don't have to list out a bunch of parts anymore. Shouts out to the people encouraging me to make a playlist a couple months ago. <laughs> I think that makes things a whole lot easier. Anyways, here's our cast list before we jump into things. We've got Bourgeois Beard, of course. The communist copulator himself. Born from a den of trash. <laughs> he lives in squalor and forges grand plans with old pizza boxes. <laughs> what the f <laughs> He retaliated against Maga Beard after a bunch of accusatory flyers appeared, accusing him of being uh, an unwanted diddler. Maga Beard, sworn soldier of the God Emperor Donald J. Trump. <laughs> The ideological rival and basically polar opposite of Bourgeois Beard in everything but his den dwelling tendencies. He swears up and down that he didn't post no stinking flyers. <laughs> it's kind of interesting that uh, Rasputin and Mujahideen had polar opposites yesterday. Is this going to be like a theme for the new year? Just two beards that are so different that they have to go head to head? Yeah, I'd welcome that. That sounds like fun. <laughs> OP, of course. Hey, that's me. Caught between a trash nest and a coom place. <laughs> Trying to survive the semester as best I can while I admittedly get my kicks. Yes, indeed. But this is the episode where you ameliorate them, right? <laughs> I'm so happy to use that word. It's like a word a day calendar every time I jump in here. Anyways, I left Maga Beard's apartment that day feeling low. I didn't know what to believe. Maga Beard denied that he ever put up the accusatory flyers that Bourgeois Beard swore up and down slandered him. Nothing was what it seemed. Were one of them lying? Was there some piece to the puzzle that I just wasn't seeing? I couldn't know. Not yet, anyways. And I didn't feel like seeing Bourgeois Beard anytime soon, so I decided to take my crisp 50 bucks and get myself something to eat instead. I headed across the street and stopped in at the nearest slop shop, <laughs> getting myself a burrito, which I gnawed on as I walked around campus. Oh, don't walk around while you eat. That's no good. Sit down, relax, take your time. What's up with this? You can think just as well sitting down, can't you? I don't understand that. <laughs> Walking around with a burrito. What's wrong with you, son? <laughs> As for whether Bourgeois Beard or Maga Beard lied, it is a complicated question, and I wouldn't put it past either one of them. So yes, OP is right. We need some more information to be unveiled before we can make that judgment. Anyways, with my belly full, I wandered around campus a little bit more, Bumming cigarettes where I could find them and pulling down flyers along the way. Oh, look at this dude. Just got 50 bucks in your pocket. Can't go buy your own pack of cigarettes. <laughs> you got the cigarette? ah! Come on now. Eventually, I got home and retired for the evening, locking myself in my room with my movies. Seems like you got a lot of movies too, man. What are you watching over there? <laughs> As the weekend wore on a bit, I would review my work during the day and listen to the shuffling around of my roommate in his den. He had finally finished his first bag of trash pizza. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> he decided then to move on to a different restaurant. So he came back with a giant bag of fried chicken that night from the Popeye's dumpster. Oh, Lord. He's probably looking for a black guy. <laughs> 
Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, you think I can get some sleep? Get that shit out of my face! That <laughs> part slayed me so hard in the last episode. God damn. I hate to bring it back up, but... Oh. <laughs> Bourgeois beard said it, okay? Uh, I examined the chicken for his health, of course. And I observed that this food, while a little stale, was actually palatable. I might have even taken a few pieces myself the first day that he came back with it. Ended were the days of bleachy bile and sobbing vomits, it seemed. After the rote and routine of the day, I had taken to walking around the campus in the evening hours to get a little bit of much-needed exercise, while also removing flyers during my route. Well, it seems like OP is committed to rewinding this, so I'll give you some points for that. A week had passed since that last Friday, and sometime in the middle of that first momentous introduction to my roommate and his blood nemesis, I noticed something peculiar. Flyers continued to materialize, accusing some communist copulator of doing the dirtiest deeds. So it could be Magabeard going back on his word and deciding to keep putting flyers up, or it could be a third party and Magabeard was telling the truth. The plot thickens indeed. The sun was beginning to set, and I had stopped outside one of the lecture halls. Its walls, too, were plastered with the accusatory propaganda that had mysteriously continued to materialize, and I started to peel them down, one by one. I heard a familiar question repeated back to me, one that I had heard multiple times before during my efforts of campus cleanup, and I turned around to see who was speaking. Beneath danger-colored hair, <laughs> poked out two black eyes that silently screamed, I'm not like the other girls! Oh god, it's unfortunate, Nookie. <laughs> she found her way into a different timeline. The Beardiverse is expanding, or, or collapsing, I guess, depending how you look at it. <laughs> a bullring dangled above a mustachioed, buck-toothed fish mouth that drew in sucking gasps. <laughs> oh god. The refrigerator-shaped humanoid regarded me with intense scrutiny. I had never seen her before. I gave pause as she spoke. I shall name her Yandere Beard. Yandere Beard? What the hell do you think you're doing? OP. Well, I figured I'd take a flyer for myself so I could maybe figure out who this guy is. Can't let the Dusvadanya Diddler roam free now, can I? <laughs> Someone needs to find him and teach him a lesson, Yandere Beard. Well, I'm glad somebody's doing something about it. I went to the campus police about it, but they said I couldn't do anything unless I did a rape kit. I had to explain to those shitlords that men can rape women in other ways. Can you believe that? The patriarchy needs to go. Oh, God, dude. <laughs> What is up with this, like, completely polarized edgelord college? <laughs> like, everybody has just the crappiest takes imaginable. You would think that her and Bourgeois Beard would get along, since they're both so far left, but no, because Bourgeois Beard is a man, of course. OP says, wait, so you weren't actually, you know, Yandere Beard? Of course I was! Didn't you hear what I said? Besides, all men are rapists. That's why they wouldn't do anything about it. OP, I seriously resent that. Anyway, you legitimately know this guy? He violated you? Yandere Beard. How could I forget him? We shared the same poli sci class for a couple of semesters now. I have to see him every day. I've tried the professors and the counselors. I've even contacted the Dean's office, but nothing ever happens to him! OP? Well, do go on and tell me about this horrifying incident. Which could have been a legitimately horrifying incident, but I have the sneaking suspicion that he just looked at her wrong or something like that. Honestly, I find it really hard to believe that somebody would just go after somebody for basically no reason, you know? My suspension of disbelief is just hanging by a thread. <laughs> but I guess we'll just have to see what happens. And so, Yandere Beard began to recount a tragic tale. 
One late night evening in a semester gone by, she had been part of a project group with an alleged socialist sex maniac. After one night, the group had a small feat with a few drinks upon completion of their finals project. Things were going well, and after finishing up their project, this bachelor had asked her if perhaps she might want to go get a beverage with him at a nearby cafe where they could talk about it in a more private setting. They went there together and sipped their libations while discussing the dismantling of the fascist American government and the impending revolution that was sure to sweep the nation by storm. <laughs> it was then, however, that this abdominous anarchist revealed his motivations for asking her to accompany him. He was <gasps> attracted to her and wondered if perhaps she felt the same. They grew close for a while, almost amorous, one could even say, until one night, after a heated argument over some asinine aspect of their cherished secular beliefs, she stormed out on him. Not long after, she caught herself a rebound with some flannel-wearing hipster at a poetry night. <laughs> when does this take place, dude? Hipsters are dead and gone, aren't they? Aren't they? Please tell me that they are. <laughs> However... The sundered heart of Yandere Beard could not let go of the anger that had rooted in her soul. Her once beloved had scorned her when he failed to purity spiral into oblivion alongside her, and her trust was shattered. She could never trust another man again. When she voluntarily broke it off with this guy, she realized that she had been emotionally raped. Oh my god, not that. <laughs> is, is that a thing? I mean, okay, I'll accept that you can be emotionally violated by someone, no matter how soft the entire interaction seems from the outside, but really, if you're going to make posters and put up signs about somebody assaulting you, you should really be more specific on the sign and let people draw their own conclusions from it. There's a reason that she left emotionally off of the sign, isn't there? God, again, my suspension of disbelief just barely hanging in there, but <laughs> we're going to keep rolling. We've got seven parts so far, so I must see it through to its conclusion. Yandere Beard says, uh, Of course, the system is protecting him. They're all cishet scum who get off on oppressing women. Every last man. I, I won't let him live it down, though. He, he deserves all of the misery that's coming his way. And if he had forced himself on her, like, okay, I completely agree. But all he was doing was asking for consent. I like you. It seems like you like me. Let's take this to the next level. And she's like, oh my god, how could you? <laughs> well, I mean, that is the next step, isn't it? I'm relatively shocked as well that Maga Beard was actually telling the truth. And now we've got another leg beard in the mix. This is another one of those hybrid stories. You can't just divide it into neck beard stories and leg beard stories anymore because they're merging together in <laughs> it's like pond scum. We are sure to encounter something unconceivably foul. <laughs> I wanted to back away and run. What abominations hath the humanities wrought inside of their wretched halls? <laughs> I dare not even conjecture upon it. I thank my lucky stars that I was doing STEM, and I only had to dabble in introductory courses to meet some credit requirements, and that Yandere Beard would be far, far away from me. OP? Oh, that's a tragic tale. I'm sorry? <laughs> Yeah, dairy beard. Your apology means nothing. Not until women are free from the yoke of masculine oppression. You want to do better? You can start by dropping out of this college so somebody else can enroll instead. Preferably a person with a vagina, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> this is like so ridiculous. Unfortunately, I have seen proof there are people like this out here, but for somebody to encounter this many beards in a row and, and they're all just infighting and making life hell for OP as much as he's made life hell for them as well, 
Oh, God. I don't know what to think. <laughs> I can't formulate a thought on it quite yet. LP just says, you know what? You're absolutely right. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to go drop out right now. Bye. <laughs> this is probably the best response. Vacate this situation. There is no winning. I scampered away, leaving the mustachioed refrigerator where she stood, huffing and puffing like an aroused bull, scanning the grounds for any male challenger behind her oh-so-quirky glasses. <laughs> yeah, she's not like other girls, all right. I retreated quickly into a crowd just getting out of their class to cover my tracks as I headed back to my dorm. See, Bourgeois Beard ain't seeming so bad by comparison now, is he? <laughs> you also got some questions that you probably want to ask him regarding this. As I walked inside, I slammed the door behind me and threw my book bag on the couch. At least my coursework was all caught up. I went down the hall and paused at Bourgeois Beard's door. I gingerly tapped upon the wood. Bourgeois Beard, hey, what do you want? Bro, why you still gotta talk to me like I'm a piece of trash? After all that I've done for you, you still gotta treat me like this? He doesn't know that OP's been playing both sides. <laughs> really, OP should be like bro status with him by now, right? OP says, I want you to open this door. Bourgeois Beard, eh, eh, I'm busy. OP, I don't care. Open the damn door. The rattling of empty cans sounded on the other side, and the communist copulator himself lumbered into view. He was short of breath and red in the face. He must have been busy with uh, something. <laughs> I tried to put that thought out of my mind. OP, hey, so I wanted to talk to you about all the flyering that's been going on lately. Bourgeois beard, uh, why? OP, so, you got your revenge on Magabeard, but here's the thing. He paid me to go take some of the flyers down, and I did. But I have to tell you this. When I met up with him, he said that he didn't actually put the flyers about you up. So, don't worry. I've been taking down the sexual predator ones, too. I mean, frankly, I just want this stupid fight to be over with, but... Something interesting happened tonight that I think you might also be interested in, Bourgeois Beard. What the hell? Why are you taking down the flyers I made? <laughs> OP, will you shut up and listen? So, I was outside some lecture hall pulling down flyers. These ones were about you, and somebody came up behind me and asked what the hell I was doing. And, uh, bro... Did you ever have a girlfriend before, Bourgeois Beard? No, dude. I told you. I'm a virgin. OP, did you ever get close to getting a girlfriend? Like, once upon a time? Maybe someone from one of your classes? Bourgeois Beard? I mean, I did ask this girl out one time. We were never official or anything, and one night, she just freaked out on me like a total radio edit, because I didn't agree with her that women should run the government after the revolution, <laughs> like they could even run a society. <laughs> Name one matriarchal society that hasn't collapsed. <laughs> Much like true communism, I don't really think it's been tried before, but okay, you stood up for your views, and I guess that's something to be applauded. <laughs> Maybe gave that chick a reality check, I hope. OP just says, look, I don't care. She is the one who wrote those flyers about you, and apparently she just keeps putting them up. Bourgeois Beard. Don't lie to me. I know it was Maga Beard. We've been through this. OP, you suspected that it was Maga Beard. And I am telling you that I know for a fact that it was her. She admitted it. I ran into her while I was pulling him down and we got to talking. She says that you assaulted her. Bourgeois Beard. But we never even became a couple. We never even had sex. OP, 
I know. And she says the same thing. Bourgeois beard. What? Is it why is she accusing me of something that I didn't do? OP. I asked her about it. Apparently you emotionally raped her. And those are her words, not mine. Bourgeois beard. That's ridiculous. How does that even work? <laughs> Nobody knows. It's just a thing that you could say. Wanna ruin somebody else's reputation? Here it is. Silver bullet. <laughs> We've learned a lot about propaganda throughout these stories, at the very least. OP, I have absolutely no clue. Maybe she's just mad that you didn't prostrate yourself to her because that's what it seems like. I'm not the one in the humanities classes. You tell me how it works. Oh, look at that, you nose. STEM student. Think he's got the big swinging dong. <laughs> Although maybe he's just calling it like he sees it. <laughs> I can kind of see where he's coming from, but I, I wouldn't put it out there like that. Bourgeois Beard cradled his head in his hands. He found himself lost in an entirely new garbage heap that was alien to him. He shook his head. Yandere Beard, his bygone love now scorned, was out for blood. Man blood! <laughs> Bourgeois Beard, uh, what do you think I should do? OP, well, you should probably start by apologizing to Maga Beard. He shouted, no, with a surprising amount of bravado. <laughs> he didn't care about the injury that he had inflicted on somebody who unduly had the finger pointed at him. That his sworn enemy suffered needlessly did not bother him in the slightest. Even if the accusations were entirely fabricated and the suspicions also entirely wrong. I shrugged. At least I felt that I could count on Bourgeois Beard to not manufacture any more outrage campaigns at this point in the game against Maga Beard, who turned out to be an innocent. I mean, he did punch holes in the wall, but yeah, he was promised a hundred bucks. Really, Maga Beard is basically clean, aside from, you know, not being clean. <laughs> but at least his den is nicer than Bourgeois Beard's, I guess. It's pretty interesting, when Beard's go head-to-head, -head, I try to find the one that's like, more human or more apt to uh, put themselves out there and, and struggle for success. You know what I'm saying? Not that Maga Beard definitely has those qualifications, but I can say for certain that Bourgeois Beard definitely doesn't. So yeah, pick him favorites, I guess. <laughs> so yes, Bourgeois Beard's attentions were now drawn to his spiteful ex who never was. I brushed past him and went to my room to settle in once more for a relaxing evening at home. It was destined not to be, however, because Bourgeois Beard followed me like a lost puppy. Uh, I'm busy in here, bro. Go ahead, throw his own line back at him. Feels good, man. <laughs> Bourgeois Beard. Hey, what do you think I should do, OP? I told you, bitch. <laughs> One, get out of my room. Two, say sorry to Maga Beard and maybe join forces to crush this leg beard. That would be a satisfying story arc, wouldn't it? Kind of stealth beard-ish in a way. Although it came about just a little bit differently. But OP just says, I don't know, dude. I'm done feeding you ideas. It's just been a mess every time I get involved. So you're in this on your own, bourgeois beard. Uh, but I need your help. What should I do? I need to get back at her. <laughs> OP. Do you, Bourgeois Beard? Do you? Because so far, petty revenge has just been a thorn in everyone's side. Break the cycle. You're lucky that the other dude was willing to let it lie, so maybe you should be an adult about this and, I don't know, talk to her and ask her to stop. Bourgeois Beard? <sighs> Do you think that'll work? OP? It works if you work it. <laughs> I picked that up from Narcotics Anonymous. No, he didn't say that. That's, that's my own addition. I shut my door in his face. I just didn't want to be involved anymore. I got comfy in my bed and wound down for the evening. Tonight, more movies on the laptop. Seems like you got an infinite supply. You on the Pirate Bay, are you? 
tomorrow, catching up on my assignments, I was checking out, washing my hands of this matter entirely. I had a life that I had to lead outside of Bourgeois Beard's problems, and I had already done enough. Yeah, in both ways. I guess you made the mess, but you sort of tried to clean it up, and now you learned your lesson, you're backing on out. I'm coming around on OP. He's not such a bad guy after all. Maybe, sort of. <laughs> Besides, whenever I get involved in things, it always seems to just blow up spectacularly. I began to drift off when a pounding on the door stirred me from my sleep. Oh, you jerk. <laughs> Quickest way to get me angry, wake me up in the middle of a lovely sleep. I heard Bourgeois Beard's door open from across the hall. Half awake, I was confused. Usually he yelled at me to deal with things like that, but here he was doing it himself for once. Was I dreaming? I mean, maybe. I heard voices coming down the hall. They were muffled through the walls. I lapsed once more into unconsciousness. Asserting my personal mantra, not my goddamn problem. Go to sleep. Not my circus, not my monkeys. And yes, you have sort of absolved yourself of the circus. The monkeys are still running around, but once you sold the circus, that's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it too much. I awoke the following morning and found myself surprised to find Bourgeois Beard still up, rustling around the kitchen for some cold Popeye's chicken. His eyes were circled by darkness, but he had a giant smile upon his face. He greeted me as I came out of the room with an uncharacteristically chipper, hey, Good morning! Ah, oh, sounds like Osgood. <laughs> Something was amiss. As the fog cleared from my mind, I remarked that he was up unusually early. Bourgeois beard. <laughs> oh yeah, it's been a long night. Hey, you don't mind getting out of the house for a bit today, do you? OP? What? Why? Bourgeois Beard? Well, uh, I kinda need the place to myself. Uh, please? OP? Yeah, sure. Whatever. But only because you asked nicely. It won't be for a bit, though. I need a shower and I'm gonna get some breakfast. Bourgeois Beard? I kind of need you to go now, OP. Can't you just put it off? Bro, I said what I said. I'm going to go when I go. Count yourself lucky that I agreed to this at all, considering that yes, indeed, I live here as well. And OP has much the same stance. No, I live here. You're not just going to throw me out like that for whatever the hell it is you're doing. I'm going to take a shower and I'm going to have some breakfast. Bourgeois Beard. Uh, come on. I've got a friend over right now. And I'm trying to get some alone time with him. It's one thing when you're sleeping, but now that you're awake, I can't. Uh... OP. Can't what, dude? Bourgeois Beard. Well, uh, I don't want you to hear us. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> OP, who is us? Hear what? Oh, God. Please tell me that you didn't do what I think you did. He definitely did, bro. <laughs> what a mess. Total La Ogre vibes coming right along. Bourgeois Beard. I mean, she agreed she isn't going to put up any more flyers, OP. I got a good thing going. Come on, help me out here. And our story just drops like that. What have you done with this cliffhanger? <laughs> oh no. It's totally like La Ogre on repeat, is it not? Did Bourgeois Beard just lose his virginity to another leg beard? <laughs> What's going on out here, you guys? All these leg beards out here just taking scalps, notches on the bedpost, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's so uncomfortable. It's like, yeah, he assaulted me, and then I came over and assaulted myself. It was empowering. <laughs> 
absolutely crazy. I mean, again, my suspension of disbelief hanging by a thread, but also, like I said, we're in it now, in it to win it, and I gotta see how this one goes. <laughs> so ridiculous. Oh, so many beards flying around. Is this the last we'll hear of Maga Beard? Are we now shifting focus to Bourgeois and Yandere Beard? I'm seeing a lot of different ways that this could go, so I hope that you guys will stay tuned and find out with me whenever we get some more of that tasty, tasty cringe. And then you decided to hit me with that, you hit my real dad. <laughs> son. Yo, son. What's up? You're not my dad. Bourgeois Beard, Part 8. Sandstorm. Dugga 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 you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> oh, the real ones know. God damn it. Hey guys, <laughs> finally found myself a little free time to get this done again. Welcome back, user valuable excuse 3288. <laughs> we finished up arc one of Bourgeois Beard, and now it's time to delve into arc two. The arc that I like to call Seizing the means of reproduction. <laughs> reproduction. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm pretty sure exactly what people thought was going to happen is going to happen, but I want to see how it unfolds. Red X has the story on a playlist, which you can listen to if you're not up to speed. Yes, it's in the description. I also linked it on a title at the very beginning, so you can uh, fill yourself in on the parts that you missed and whatnot. But before we get into the story, we of course have to have our cast list. BB, that is Bourgeois Beard, the boldest of revolutionaries, and now an actual communist copulator himself. Oh, congratulations, buddy, even though you did bang a leg beard. <laughs> it happens more often than we think. Spiteful, trash-dwelling goblinoid, loyal only to the motherland, unrepentant author of misdirected slander campaign against another student, but still willing to make peace because, you know, his peepee -pee was touched. And that's the most important thing, isn't it? <laughs> Priorities. YB is Yandere Beard, the scorned not-girlfriend of Bourgeois Beard. Author of the ruthless slander campaign directed against Bourgeois Beard for an act that he did not commit. For some unholy reason, they've decided that maybe it's best if they, you know, uh, patch things up with a bit of PNV. <laughs> yes, it's not gonna go well, I'll tell you that much. I know not why you would welcome such a creature into your house. But soon you shall reap your just rewards, bourgeois be it. <laughs> and we also got OP. Hey, uh, that's me. <laughs> got between a filthy rock and a garbage place. I'm just trying to survive this semester as best I can, while admittedly getting some kicks in while I do so. Yeah, you got your kicks in. Now I see you trying to reel it all back in. <laughs> You're like, okay, I'm a bit in over my head here. What a tangled web we weave, when first we choose to deceive. <laughs> Maybe you get that one tattooed or something. So, uh, I sat there, stunned. What unholy acts were performed across the hall while I slept? Oh, it's best not to think about those sorts of things. <laughs> My dream had not been a dream. Someone did return with Bourgeois Beard in the middle of the night. Someone that you've met before, I think. <laughs> As the veil of sleep lifted itself, I was easily able to surmise just who it was that had arrived. I could see that refrigerator-shaped humanoid materializing from the ether. Oh no. <laughs> How does this always happen? See, Legbeard's got some of these feminine wiles, you know? Neckbeard's relatively blunt, straightforward. Legbeard's still a mystery, man. I'm trying to figure it out. And we might be able to in yet another, uh, what has become hybrid saga. <laughs> Neck and Legbeard story. Oh, a mess. An absolute mess. OP says, please, tell me that you didn't do what I think you did. 
bourgeois beard. Bourgeois beard. What? And she said, and maybe you should talk to her like an adult. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> and one thing led to another. And, you know, she came over. And then we, uh... Yeah, you came over. <laughs> OP. Yeah, look, sure. I said talk to her. But I definitely didn't say to stick your wang in crazy. <sighs> you done goofed, man. <laughs> it really has. She's going to go straight to the police and get a rape kit and Bourgeois Beard's going to jail. Although, uh, I guess there wouldn't be an arc three if that were the case. Is arc two just like the ending? Is that the conclusion arc? I guess I'm not too sure yet. But it is a possible ending. It's like the worst choose your own adventure that you ever read. <laughs> Bourgeois Beard says, She's not crazy. She was just upset that we broke it off. Uh, we're figuring things out. And we're patching it up now. Uh, things are going to get better from here on out. Oh, you sweet summer child. <laughs> Besides, she's a total firecracker in bed. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sure. OP retorts, there's nobody you have that you can compare her to. She could lay there like a dead fish, and you'd probably still be into it. Eh, whatever, dude, that's not the point. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> this is gonna bite you right in the ass, I swear, bourgeois beard. I'm making things better. We're gonna patch it up, OP. She said she wouldn't put up any more flyers. She said she was sorry. I don't have to worry about anybody slandering me anymore. Give it some time, and everybody will forget about everything, and I'll come out on top. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you will. Because that's how these neckbeard stories go, isn't it? The neckbeard always comes out on top. <laughs> There's no way he could lose. Maybe the top bunk in prison, but I don't think he's man enough to take it. <laughs> OP says, are your worries really over? She made up the charge against you once, and now you slept with her. What if she decides to go and do it again? Now she actually has something that she can use against you. You're a goddamn idiot, dude. This is going to end so poorly. <laughs> Everybody sees it coming. Just the train rolling down those tracks, but you can't stop it. Events have been set into motion, and all you can do is sit back and watch the wreckage. <laughs> Bourgeois beard. Uh, why would she do that? She said that she wouldn't. Yeah, I believe her. <laughs> OP, will you listen to yourself? Have the last two weeks taught you nothing? Whatever. I'm done with all of this. I don't want to be any part of it, man. I'll leave the house today because you asked nicely, but I swear to God, she needs to be gone by the time I come home. This is all bad. <laughs> No, it's going to be fine. She promised it's going to be fine. <laughs> this is fine. I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. Uh, oh, Bourgeois Beard just <laughs> writes it off. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I, I live here too, OP. You can't just tell me what to do. You might not live here for long. <laughs> Campus security is going to show up and be like, Hey, we got your DNA on this little swab. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Enjoy sitting in this cell. <laughs> I don't understand why he would decide to do this, especially knowing all that he knows. OP, are you really going to say that to me right now? Screw you then, dude. I'm not going anywhere. Go do your nasty deeds in the Popeye's dumpster for all I care. I am staying home. <laughs> Flip reverse it. Bourgeois beard. Uh, what? You can't do that. You said. OP, I said I would leave you the house because you were being nice about it. I said I want nothing to do with 
whatever atrocities you're committing in your trash pile of a bedroom. And I said that she needs to be gone when I return. And then you decided to hit me with that, you hit my real dad crap. <laughs> son. Yo, son. What's up? You're not my dad. <laughs> if you can't honor my wishes, then uh, I'm not going to honor yours. I'm not going anywhere. You can just deal with it. Ooh, snap. What have we learned? That nobody is anybody's real dad. I don't even know how the human race perpetuates itself. <laughs> I push past him and into the kitchen. I fix myself some morning fare and leisurely ate at the dining room table. Nothing quite like ramen noodles for breakfast after a dinner of, uh, ramen noodles. <laughs> A well-balanced diet indeed. <laughs> when that was done, I headed to the bathroom and cleaned myself up. About halfway through the shower, the blasting subwoofer shook the walls of our tiny apartment. Ugh, our neighbors must really love us. It was barely 8 a.m. and already we were blasting music. Despacito? Despacito. <laughs> it was loud electronica. Oh, it is Sandstorm. Okay, I nailed it. <laughs> Unapologetically thrummed through the walls of the building. They must have decided to get freaky, and Bourgeois Beard, scared that I would hear their unsacred consummation, and also worried that my hearing would affect his performance, decided to put on that old psychological block. Darude. Sandstorm. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, if I had to pick something, that is probably one of the first beard songs I would pick. It's like one of the first meme songs, isn't it? It's Despacito before Despacito. <laughs> the music was only on for a few minutes before it was off again. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, it must have been a short-lived session of ecstatic passion and quiet once again settled over the student block. Bro, he didn't even last for one song. <laughs> I mean, if it's his first time, I guess I get it. You gotta clean the pipes out and whatnot, but really, it sounds like you've been going at it all night and still haven't gained any stamina from that. It's just sad. It makes me sadder than anything else in the story, honestly. <laughs> if you're gonna go to jail, at least make it count, right? <laughs> God damn it. I exited the shower to protracted and unbroken post-orgasm silence and wandered past the door, wherein muffled voices whispered sweet nothings to each other. In my room, I settled in at my desk and began my reading and homework, pausing maybe every hour or so when the same exact song came on again and again for the umpteenth time on repeat. Dude must have really liked Sandstorm. <laughs> I guess because it was the only song that he played. Fortunately, it never lasted very long, and after maybe five or ten minutes, the house would return to silence, and I could get back to work, quietly humming a very specific, mind-numbing melody to myself <laughs> as I thumbed through the pages and scrolled in my answers. Now, part of me wanted to defend him and say, hey, maybe that's the only song that he downloaded. But uh, we're in an age of streaming. You can listen to literally millions of songs at any time that you like. And he just keeps going back to this one. So, yeah, I'd say that he is uh, relatively obsessed for some unknown reason. There just ain't no accounting for taste in music or women, apparently. <laughs> After many, many hours later... And perhaps maybe the 30th freaking time that that song came on that day and finally went silent again, I heard the door from across the hall open. I guess Yandere Beard finally had to leave, and I could hear the lovebirds singing as they went down the hall together. Not long after that, someone came shuffling back down the hall alone. I figured since I was still bobbing my head to the uninterrupted melody of Sandstorm and couldn't focus... I would just go get myself some dinner and maybe talk to Bourgeois Beard a bit about everything that was going on. I opened the door to find Yandere Beard heading back to Bourgeois Beard's room. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, caught between a rock and a hard place and uh, another pile of garbage. The three-way drama never stops. 
a, a menage trash, if you will. <laughs> OP says, uh, oh, uh, hey, <laughs> Yandere beard. I remember you. OP, nope, I've never met you before. <laughs> you must be mistaken. Look, I gotta go get something to eat and get back to my work, so I can't really talk. Yandere beard. Are you sure I've never met you before? I could have sworn that you were taking down flyers just the other day. Stick to the story. Gaslight the hell out of her. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> when in doubt, deny everything. OP? Nope. Must have been someone who looks like me. There's lots of people on this campus, you know. I've never seen you before, Yandere Beard. Don't lie! I said you needed to drop out of school, and you said you were going to do it. What the hell are you still doing here? Shouldn't you be on your way out? Oh, you thought I was serious about that. <laughs> You're even dumber than you look, OP. Nope, I don't remember any of that. <laughs> That's the line. Sorry, but you must be mistaken. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've uh, got to get on with my freaking life. I pushed past her as she rolled her eyes and headed back into the trash den, from which the telltale stank of mushing groin spilled into the hall. <laughs> what does love smell like? Not like that. <laughs> they made for a potent, malodorous mix that was reminiscent of depression, loneliness, and mental illness. The ode despondency. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Now saturated the air of my house. Oh, despondency. <laughs> God damn it. I'm going to write it down for reals. Put it on a t-shirt or something. My appetite disappeared <laughs> as the smell crept into my nostrils. One of my problems was solved, at least. I decided instead to go to the bathroom. I splashed some water on my face as I washed up and took a deep breath. Things were getting strange. Really, really strange. When I exited, Yandere Beard stood in the hall. Black eyes looked over me from her problem glasses. <laughs> OP, what do you want? Why don't you go back in his room? I don't have time for you, Yandere Beard. I know you've met me before. You were the guy taking down those flyers the other day. I don't like that you were trying to gaslight me. <laughs> Again, just stick to the line. I don't know what you're talking about. You crazy. Put her handbag in the freezer or something. <laughs> That'll make her really think she's losing it. OP, well, I don't like you, period. Uh-oh, the mask has gone down. You deviated from the line, OP. Ugh. <sighs> Now you're in for it. Yandere Beard says, That's uncalled for! OP retorts, You know what's uncalled for? You accused my roommate of rape because you guys didn't hook up once upon a time and made a huge deal out of it that really could have ruined his life. There's nothing for me to like about you. I don't know what game you're trying to play here, but I'm not taking part in any of it. You can have him. I don't care, but you stay the hell away from me, Yandere Beard. What? I said I was sorry. I told him I wasn't going to put up anymore. We're moving on, and we're very happy together. It's all water under the bridge now. I don't care. <laughs> there you go, that's the next line. Shut up, I don't care. OP, yeah. Water under the bridge for him and you, maybe, but you stay away from me, Yandere Beard. Not a problem! <laughs> but it is a problem, I'm pretty sure, or else we wouldn't be sitting here hearing about it. She turned and shut the door to her love lair behind her, returning to the trash in which Bourgeois Beard slept and dwelt. The subwoofer kicked up again with thrumming bass. Was it Yandere Beard who had a thing for Sandstorm? Maybe they both did. My head cannon was born, and I could no longer disassociate that song with stanky neckbeard sex. Well, I think you've just ruined it for about a, <laughs> a few thousand other people. 
So thank you for that, OP. <laughs> Next time I hear Sandstorm, I'm going to think of O oh, Despondency. <laughs> uh, uh, I ignored it the best I could. The pulsing music was driving me nuts and breaking my focus. Every word I read was I gave up studying for the rest of the night, dug out a pair of headphones, and just sit back to watch some videos. I zoned out as best I could. Eventually, the sandstorm subsided, <laughs> and I looked at the clock. It was getting very late. I assumed that Yandere Beard had went home, and Bourgeois Beard was now playing video games, all by his lonesome, in his room. Everything was once again as it should be. I wound down and passed out. Let me go ahead and make an educated guess that the Legbeard did not go home. You see, once they are invited in, they make a habit of just taking up residence. We saw this in Unfortunate Nookie just the other day. If she's not ending Bourgeois Beard's life immediately, then that means she's uh, going all parasite with him, which means she'll need to be forcibly removed at some point. Let's see <laughs> if my theory holds up. That following Sunday morning, I awoke and began my morning routine. Shit shower shave, breakfast. Things had returned to normal. Bourgeois Beard was passed out, and the rude sandstorm no longer assaulted my senses that early morning. Equilibrium was back. Or oh, maybe I am wrong. <laughs> I spent the morning putting myself to task on the books until about mid-afternoon when I knew Bourgeois Beard would finally wake up. I was curious to find out just how far down the rabbit hole he had in fact descended and find some more tenable solution to the problems at hand. No, no, no. We're not finding any solutions, okay? Once you said you're out, you're out. You gotta just sit back and watch, if anything. You don't even really have to watch. Disconnect completely is the only really safe way to handle it. <laughs> if you could block people in real life, like in that episode of Black Mirror, that is what I would suggest. But OP, he can't seem to help himself. <laughs> the hours rolled by, and he, Bourgeois Beard, eventually rose from his room. Haggard and bleary and freshly returned into the waking world. As cruel as that is. <laughs> I got up from where I sat and headed out into the living room to join him. As I approached, his head poked up from the fridge where he loaded some cold dumpster chicken onto a plate. OP, hey man, uh, how was your night? Bourgeois beard. Oh, hi OP. Yeah, it was good. I slept great last night. Yeah, that generally happens after you empty your seminal vesicles. <laughs> OP, is she finally gone? Bourgeois Beard. Yeah, she left late last night. Hey, hey, OP, I gotta talk to you about something. Wow, I am shocked that she actually left. My theory has just fallen apart before my eyes. Tragic. Unless Bourgeois Beard's lying, I still hold out hope. Anyways, OP says... Oh, God, what do you want now, Bourgeois Beard? Well, uh, your dairy beard doesn't like you, OP. Like, at all. She says you're rude to her, and that you tried to gaslight her, and, uh, that you make her uncomfortable. And, uh, I just got a girlfriend now, and I, I don't want her to feel uncomfortable in my house. So I was thinking that maybe it would be best if you found somewhere else to live. Yeah, you should move out. If that was an option at all, you think I wouldn't have done that already? <laughs> you think I want to live in your trash nest? <laughs> what the hell? OP, you're trying to kick me out because she doesn't like me? Bourgeois beard. Well, I mean, she... OP, if I move out of here, it's going to be because I decided to move out of here. It's not going to be because your psycho girlfriend doesn't like me. Okay, but you probably should have decided to move out of there already, right? <laughs> I don't understand the reason that you're sticking around with this dude. He's a jerk. He, he lives in trash. He makes your existence miserable. Was moving out an option this entire time? Why have we not done that already? <laughs> God damn it. Bourgeois Beard. 
Uh, you could just go down to the housing office and tell them it's not working out here and see about getting another place. OP, you know, dude, as much as I would love nothing less than to have a roommate who's uh, actually normal, I don't even know if it works like that. I think you need a legitimate reason to go and get switched into different housing units here on campus. They don't just do it just because you ask. Space is already limited here, dude. Do you know how hard it is to even get into one of these places? I don't think that would work at all, bourgeois beard. Well, I don't know. We make something up. I don't want to lose her because... OP, because she'll accuse you of raping her. And this time, you were stupid enough to actually put your wang inside her and therefore give her the proof that she needs to throw your ass into prison. Idiot. Bourgeois Beard went silent. OP, look, dude, how about this? Why don't you just go over to her house instead? She doesn't have to come here, and she doesn't have to interact with me at all if you guys do that. Honestly, I don't want her coming here anyways. I don't like her at all either, and I don't want her around my home. This way, you can still have your crazy girlfriend, I can still have my space, and nobody has to waste time moving in the middle of the semester. The problem basically solves itself. Though, to be honest, maybe I will look into getting another place at the housing office anyways. Honestly, I've had enough of, well, everything. And that includes you, man. Definitely a road worth pursuing. I don't know how we got this far into the series without even realizing that that was an option. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> Although the solution does seem amicable. Okay, you don't like me? I don't like you? Everybody go hang out at your house. And then I could actually be alone and not have to listen to Sandstorm 30 times in one day. <laughs> I don't even want to listen to it one time in one day. Bourgeois Beard's eyes grew misty and his lip quivered. Was he actually hurt by me saying this? We'd been nothing but at each other's throats the moment that we met each other. Somehow, despite everything, he had come to regard me as some kind of friend. Oh, God. <laughs> that means he doesn't have any friends except you, OP. You're the closest he's got. And I take back what I said earlier about him being a Minuteman because that is a much sadder part of the story. Oh, bourgeois beard. He's just so pathetic. The sympathetic part of me wants to reach out and give you a hand up, but I know that you wouldn't take it <laughs> because you're so set in your ways. You can't help somebody that insists on picking mediocrity. So, uh, yeah. I hope he finds some real friends, but I will never be one of them. Perhaps what boggled my mind more was the fact that he was totally fine with asking me to move out when it was his own idea, but when I suggested that perhaps I was gonna move out because I didn't actually like being around him, I had gone too far somehow. <laughs> the attachments had grown too deep, too fast. I definitely knew that I had to burn this bridge while there was still time. I let out a deep sigh. The housing office was becoming a very appealing option exceedingly quickly. Yeah, don't let him wrap you up in them beardy tentacles. Don't let him sink the meat hooks in. OP seems like a pretty standoffish guy, and I like that. One of the things that intrigued me about the saga so much, and the reason I decided to get into it, is because OP drew such a hard line in the sand. So, yes, hold that line. Let's see what a neckbeard does to an OP who isn't completely spineless. It's probably going to be the pity option, isn't it? <laughs> it definitely is. OP, okay, don't get butthurt about it, dude. It was your idea for me to move out in the first place. But, you know, it probably would be for the best if I did look into an alternative housing situation anyways, because it's abundantly obvious that you and I don't mix well. It's been nothing but bullshit and problems since I walked through that door. But, I just want you to understand that I am not doing this because of that troglodyte that you're banging. Uh, she's not a troglodyte. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, one man's beautiful, perfect buttercup angel is another man's troglodyte. That's just how it is <laughs> in the real world. I made a point of it then to stop by the campus housing office after class tomorrow and retired to my room. And so concludes part one of the second arc of Bourgeois Beard. Real world once again calls, and I gotta take care of that. But I'll be back in time with the continuation of our tale, and together we can brave the storm of sand. Sandstorm, fuck it. <laughs> okay, bye, OP, bye! <laughs> bye, have a beautiful time! Honestly, I'm pretty shocked that Yandere Beard hadn't, like, tightened the noose around Bourgeois Beard at all. Although, I guess having the noose around his neck is, uh... Pretty good way to get him to do whatever she wants, otherwise she will go to the police. This relationship will continue as long as she wants it, or else she's going to burn down Bourgeois Beard's entire life. And although he is exceedingly dense, I think deep down in his heart, he knows that. That's why despite considering OP a friend, he goes by her word and tries to get him out of the house and such like that. Although, I don't even understand why he considers them to be friends. God, you are just such a mess, Bourgeois Beard. Maybe OP will uh, get moved into Maga Beard's housing situation, and <laughs> if that's the case, my suspension of disbelief will completely snap and I'll be uninvested in the story. But I am very curious about what Maga Beard is getting up to, just how beardy he actually is. There are quite a lot of questions in this saga that remain unanswered, but it seems like we're going to be going for a while longer, so uh, I look forward to it. It comes out at a relatively nice clip, once a week, something like that. I can handle it. We find a slot for it. So uh, thank you, as always, for posting. Thank you, friends, as always, for listening. Sometimes all it takes is a woman for a man to get his act together. <laughs> Go to your Peter house. Go to your Peter house. Bourgeois Beard, Part 9. Rats. It could be like rats, like, oh, something terrible happened, darn it, but I don't think that's where it's going. I scrolled through the post to see how long it was, and I saw mentions of a pet shop, so little spoilers there. <laughs> it's going exactly where I think it's gonna go. I'm not a psychic, but sometimes words just uh, pop out when I'm throwing the story into the read time estimator. 12 minutes is the estimated read time. <laughs> Anyways, hi there, gang. Hi, use a valuable excuse. Hi, Red X. Oh, I get my own little hello. That's so nice. <laughs> Finally got some time to sit back down and continue the tale of Bourgeois Beard. Quite a tale it is. For those that aren't in the know, you can find a playlist of all the events here. And that is the wonderful Red X playlist. My god, I can't say that it pleases me as much as seeing like a giant wall of links, but it is more concise. So <laughs> for the reader's sake, yeah, I do like the playlist dropped in there. Uh, we've got our cast list, of course. BB, that is Bourgeois Beard, the communist copulator himself, and Sandstorm aficionado, a Bourgeois Beard. After being subjected to a horrific slander campaign from the ex who never was, he decided to patch up their failed romantic efforts and stick his schlong in crazy. And my friends, let me tell you now, never, ever stick your schlong in crazy. I don't care how hot she is, but this particular uh, crazy girl is, is not hot at all. It is Yandere Beard, YB, the spiteful crush of Bourgeois Beard, built like a danger-haired fridge, wearing problem glasses, <laughs> authored a smear campaign against her now honey boo, and was the crazy in whom the schlong was stuck. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, y'all remember what I said like five seconds ago about sticky schlong and crazy? Nope, don't do it. I'm pretty sure there's a point in this story where she's gonna try and send him to jail. Other people in the comments were theorizing that she might try to stick him with a baby that isn't his. There's all kinds of stuff that could go wrong. So yeah, that's really good advice. Get it tattooed somewhere, I swear. 
<laughs> We've also got OP, of course. Hey, that's me. A uni student caught between a garbage rock and a trash place, trying to survive the semester and admittedly getting in some kicks while doing so. Yes, much to the ire of <laughs> basically everybody watching. It's like, why are you doing this to yourself, OP? It's like, okay, I'm gonna stay out of it for reals this time. Nah, <laughs> just kidding. I gotta do one more thing, though. <laughs> it's just so ridiculous. Uh, and now, without further ado, we jump back into the story. So, daybreak came once more. It was a Monday morning, and it was sure to be a busy day. Classes were in full force, and one by one I went and listened to the lectures and turned in my assignments and stared hopelessly at the ever-mounting pile of work that I needed to complete. Yet as college, this is like the first year of college for you? It's not gonna get any easier, bro. But hey, come close, let me encourage you. Uh, at the end of all this struggle, you will have a piece of paper that costs a few thousand dollars, so... There's something. <laughs> you can put it on a postcard. Tell your folks. At least you will have a thing that definitively proves you're smarter than me. <laughs> Although you're probably just gonna ask me. I would have told you. <laughs> it would all have to wait, however, all this work. Because today I was gonna see about getting out of this freaking mess, this trash-filled hellhole, once and for all. The housing office was calling for me. Oh, blessed. You gonna move in with, uh, I don't know, do you got a friend or something? Go back to mom's house. <laughs> Even that is better than this. So I retreated home during the middle of the day for some quick lunch, and then finished up with my last class early that afternoon. It was probably pushing about 3 o'clock by the time everything was completed, and I walked out of the lecture among the masses of the rest of the students. Usually, at this point, I would return straight home, but I had an appointment that I intended to keep with the housing office. Oh, good. At least you are legitimately trying to put some distance between you and Bourgeois Beard at this point. I don't know how it took nine parts to get there, but <laughs> we got there eventually. It had been a fun ride, but with the new presence of Yandere Beard in Bourgeois Beard's life, I felt that it was time to cash out while the chips were up. I made my way to the administrative wing of the campus and stepped into the housing office. Several staff disinterestedly stared into their glowing computer screens at the desk as I approached, and I cleared my throat to speak. <clears throat> OP, hi there. I had a couple of questions for you. The clerk looked up from her screen, again disinterestedly, she had the aura of someone who was being needlessly disturbed. That's administration for you, I do suppose. Yeah, she can't wait to get home from looking at bad screen to start looking at good screen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Your Mac friend, Brent Rambo. It used to be I'd do inventory management on a computer all day, and I was miserable, and then I'd go home and get on my computer, and I was, uh, less miserable? <laughs> Still kind of miserable, but I could bury it in any way that I please, at least. So already, I feel for this administrator. OP continues. Uh, so, I'm in a dorm here on campus, and I'm just curious. What would I have to do to get assigned to a different room? Clerk, can't do it. Campus is full up. OP, what? Clerk, we don't got no free dorms. Enrollment was really high this semester, and everything's taken. <laughs> Shit out of luck. OP, so you're saying I'm stuck there. Clerk, I can't assign anything else to you until the end of the semester. You're welcome to apply then, but right now, I can't help you. Then let me talk to somebody else, is my response. <laughs> Who is above you? I'm gonna go complain to them. Call me a Karen if you need to, but in a disinterested uh, corporate bureaucracy, this is sometimes what you need to do in order to get stuff done. So OP just says, uh, I mean, maybe there are some extraneous circumstances. This is kind of an urgent request. The clerk, look, unless the place is unlivable, I can't even try to get you somewhere else. OP, hmm... 
What do you mean by unlivable? <laughs> oh, no. Uh, yep, yep, yep. If this isn't considered unlivable quite yet, I know something that'll push it over the edge. The clerk. If the place is falling in on itself, or the utilities don't work, or if it's got a severe infestation, those are really about the only things that qualify. Of course, if there are damages like that to the apartment, we're gonna have to look into how they got there, and you might be billed for the repairs. OP, I see. That's good to know. <laughs> Filing this away for later. Not much later, mind you, just later in the day. <laughs> the clerk, what? OP, nothing. So you're saying I gotta wait until the semester ends before you can help me out, huh? Clerk, yep, sorry. Best I could do. You come back in a month or two when the semester's close to wrapping up and you could file a petition to get your dorm changed, but right now, my hands are tied. Good luck. And good luck to you, useless public servant. <laughs> Have fun playing Farmville or whatever the hell it is you're doing on that computer. <laughs> but I don't say any of that out loud. You just smile and say, okay, thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Have a beautiful time. Ah, bureaucracy. Don't you just love it? I'm saying you should go over that woman's head. Somebody in that building is willing to help you. Sometimes, uh, it's just a battle of wills. You gotta complain a bit louder. You know what I'm saying? Again, a little bit of care and mood showing, but I don't care about getting called names. I care about results. <laughs> but OP seems to take it in stride. Okay, so barring some monumental disaster being precipitated on my current living situation, I was stuck. For a moment, my mind went to scheming. Surely there was enough trash in Bourgeois Beard's room to justify me catching a couple of sewer rats or a box full of cockroaches and setting them loose in the building. <laughs> oh, God! You forget you have to live in this place, too. What if you release the roaches and rats and they still don't let you move? <laughs> I think you're in an even worse predicament than before. Maybe I could just flip our circuit breaker and... Convince him to try and fix it. <laughs> then I recalled that it was my devious machinations that had only fueled the current situation in the first place. And I just leaving it alone would be the much smarter decision. Oh, look at that glimpse of self-awareness peeking through. <laughs> and somehow OP is still going to throw that thought in the trash, I'm pretty sure. If I was to get out early... I would have to find an extracurricular method of doing so. <laughs> See? He's like, I'm scheming. I shouldn't scheme. But I'll just scheme a little more. <laughs> See if I can't come up with a master plan. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. For a moment, I considered getting a job anywhere I could and just renting a freaking room. But my mind hearkened back to the colossal piles of mounting work that I had. I had taken just a few too many units this semester to consider work as a viable option in any serious capacity. My grades would suffer for it, and so that wasn't exactly on the table either. Oh, it's always on the table. Don't cop out, bro. You just need a job that's like a do-nothing job. <laughs> Go sign up as a, a waiter at a failing restaurant or something like that. But yes, if I could not get a new dorm room assigned to me, and I couldn't afford one, however, then uh, perhaps there were some other extracurricular options that I could pursue. <laughs> God damn it, OP. Uh, help me help you, that's all I'm saying. For a moment, I considered calling Mogabeard and asking him if I could sleep on his couch until the semester ended, but... Something told me that he would also want me to pay him with money that I currently did not have. <sighs> I was effectively just stuck. With my tail tucked between my legs, I returned to the apartment. Bourgeois Beard had left for the day, or so it seemed. His bedroom door was wide open, and the dude was nowhere to be found. He must have left for his own classes, and I had the house to myself. Yeah, he's on that evening class schedule, which is pretty killer. 
considering that you have to share a house. Everybody's on different shifts? Okay, maybe I can live with it. If it wasn't a trash pile. <laughs> As I stood there in the silence, I swore for just a moment I could hear the squeaking of sewer rats, but it was just wishful thinking, I think. I reminded myself that my way out of here would not present itself so easily. <sighs> it was a wash. I decided to just settle in and get to work for the evening. The hours flew by in that quiet house, and I dozed off. Bourgeois Beard was nowhere to be seen that evening, and I counted my blessings. And then he wakes you up in the morning with sandstorm. Du -du 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 <laughs>Oh, God damn it, he's back! When I woke the next day, I was surprised to find that Bourgeois Beard's room was still empty. Maybe he moved in with Yandere Beard. Better start cleaning this shit up. He might have a little freak out, but at least you'd be in a place that's livable. <laughs> Smack him in the mouth and shake him and tell him the revolution's never happening! Stop! <laughs> be different! <laughs> Had he been out all night? I guess it was quite likely he had a nice big refrigerator to cuddle up with now and I imagine that he was over there this very minute conjuring up a sandstorm. <laughs> I paused at the threshold to his room. I had no desire to brave its horrors once more, but staring at that rat's nest jarred my mind to my cop-outs from the night before. Yeah. Rat's nest. All right. <laughs> you are gonna do it, aren't you? Jesus, OP. He just can't help himself. He he's such a snaky boy. <laughs> I went to classes that morning and that afternoon. When I returned home, Bourgeois Beard was still nowhere to be found. He seemingly had been completely consumed by Yandere Beard. <laughs> The trap was open, and it had been sprung. I pondered for a moment as I stood there at the threshold. I did still have a few bucks tucked away from my financial aid in my bank account. I had expressly rationed it out to survive as much of the semester as possible. But with the dumpster food coming in and occasionally being palatable, I was actually in the green. You ate the dumpster food, OP? Why didn't you tell me of this before? You ate his food? You're becoming one of him! <laughs> oh, this is just so unacceptable. Now we gotta redo the whole saga with the uh, OP as the neckbeard voice. <laughs> I said, screw it. I dumped the contents of my backpack out on my bed and took out my empty pack with me as I went back out of the house. I made my way off campus and across the street to the nearby shops. I had set the GPS in my phone to the nearest pet store. <laughs> I couldn't help myself anymore. I know you couldn't. <laughs> OP, he's a simple man. He sees a scheme and he just can't help but carry it out. <laughs> the ride had gone on long enough and I wanted off. The ride never ends, buddy. <laughs> On a long enough time frame, the situation with Bourgeois Beard and Yandere Beard would come to a head, and campus security would come knocking down our door, and I did not want to be there when that happened. Yeah, that is an inevitability. I don't think it's even going to take that long of a time frame. <laughs> Give it a month. So yeah, maybe OP does need to speed this process up. But really, if you're not implicated in anything, then why does it matter if campus security knocks? They come and take your roommate away. Okay, cool. Now I got a dorm all to myself. <laughs> Seems like a self-solving problem to me. I walked into the little pet shop and browsed around. Tropical fish swam in their tanks. Reptile tongues forked in the air as I paused to walk past them. Gerbils trawled through torn garbage and their own shit. <laughs> Maybe you should buy a little gerbil friend. They would get along with the neckbeards for sure. I found a worker who was pricing some stuff on a shelf, and I said, Hey there, you guys have any rats? Clerk, Oh, yeah, we got a few in the back. You want to go check them out? OP, um, sure. 
He led me down the rows of merchandise to a series of cages filled with rats. They were admittedly very cute, with their little claws and beady eyes and naked tails. I don't know, some for everyone, I guess. I don't know if you guys knew this, but I am a huge fan of rats. <laughs> they are the coolest pets. They'll kick the crap out of gerbils every time. Gerbils, disgusting. Rats, so cleanly, so friendly. They're pack animals. They just want to be your best friend forever. Until they start stealing Cheerios out of your <laughs> breakfast bowl or something like that. But even that, I let it slide. I love ratties. So I asked the clerk how much they were. And I balked at the cost when he told me that... They were about 20 bucks each. Holy God, those are some high quality rats. Snake feeding rats are like <laughs> maybe three or four bucks at the most. $20 rat, that's like from a private breeder, which I have bought private breeder rats before, and they live a lot longer than uh, pet store rats, but rat lifespans aren't that long anyways, so I don't know. Do as you will, I suppose. Although I know uh, OP's not buying this for a pet. <laughs> he is gonna let it loose in his house, but it's not a pet. OP, 20 bucks for a rat? You're kidding. Clerk, nope. You're looking at about 20 bucks out the door for one of these little guys. I did not have money like that. Not if I was gonna cause an infestation overnight. <laughs> I needed an economical option, and I didn't have the time to wait for them to breathe and take over the dormitory wing. <laughs> didn't the clerk say that they're going to investigate how all of this happened? I mean, I guess Occam's razor, you just point to the trash pile in the beard's room. But, I don't know, maybe I'm paranoid. What if they go get the CCTV footage from the pet store? Find this receipt somewhere in your belongings? Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> this could go wrong a hundred different ways. Why not just wait it out, OP? I guess because that makes a less interesting story. <laughs> OP, alright, well, uh, what about mice? Clerk, yeah, we got a bunch of pinkies. You looking for frozen or live? OP, live, preferably. Clerk, yeah, <laughs> I hear that. You got a snake at home or what? OP, yeah, he likes some raw and wriggling. <laughs> Clerk, we got a whole mess of them in the back of the shop. How many do you want? OP, uh, how much are they? Clerk, you're looking at about a dollar each. OP, all right, give me 20 of them. Can you uh, make sure there's a good mix of males and females? <laughs> Clerk, uh, sure. OP, what? I, I got a lot of snakes at home, and it's feeding time. <laughs> if it's just feeding time, then why do the genitals of the, the mice matter? Do they taste different? <laughs> I guess slightly. This plane could blow up in so many different ways. OP just spent his last 20 bucks to buy a bunch of pinkies. What are you going to do, feed them with an eyedropper until they grow big enough? <laughs> Which I have done with one single rat from the pet store. He turned out to be a cute little black and white one. I named him Cow. But that little bastard was not easy to raise, okay? I had to bring him to work and everything. How people gonna feel you're walking into class with a, <laughs> a pinky rat? Oh man, everybody's gonna know. It's gonna go so bad. <laughs> but the clerk didn't ask these questions. He just went off to the storage room of the shop and came back with a box full of squeaking little rodents. Really little rodents. <laughs> he paused to ask me if I needed help with anything else. I responded in the negative, went up to the cashier with my box of infestation, <laughs> and paid the good man. All that was left was to deliver my payload. Are we talking like pinky pinkies? You're just gonna put them on the carpet and they're gonna die there? <laughs> <laughs> this is not a good plan. I placed the box in my backpack and headed back to the dormitory. I closed the door behind me and walked into the vacant apartment once more. Bourgeois Beard still was nowhere to be found. I took the box from my backpack and headed into his vacant room once more. The stale odor of unwashed armpits and festering jism. <laughs> 
<laughs> assaulted my senses. The garbage had been shuffled since I last had been in here in some pathetic attempt to clean the den. All the bags had been judiciously piled up in the farthest corner of the room away from his bed. Sometimes, all it takes is a woman for a man to get his act together. <laughs> Go to your Peter house. Go to your Peter house. Uh, oh, that's beautiful, man. Surely they're going to be together forever. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, I headed over to the heap and paused beside it. I kicked a tiny hole in the wall near the baseboard <laughs> and then tore open the corner of one of the trash bags exposing its juicy contents to the world. The odor of rankling food and stale beer poured out from the hole of the trash bag. Oh God, I hate it. Bourgeois Beard would never know the difference, honestly. It's not like he ever actually touched any of this stuff, and the aroma had already perforated everything within smelling distance. <laughs> I guess this is a good science experiment, if nothing else. You see which pinkies will survive on a diet of moldy food and stale beer. <laughs> How is this gonna work out, bro? How do you see this going? I also don't think kicking a hole in the baseboard would make a convincing rat hole. <laughs> they could have come in like any which way. You didn't really have to, I mean, it doesn't really do that much damage. But why leave evidence of your presence, I guess, is the real issue that I have. Anyways, uh, OP thinks that this was the perfect crime. <laughs> the dragon's horde had become the weapon that would now slay said dragon once and for all. My freedom was at hand, along with the freedom of all those little mice in the box that I held in my hands. I opened it up and looked inside. They scurried and scampered all over each other. <laughs> I guess they're not really like pinky pinkies. Couple weeks old, they got hair, they'll figure it out. That's fine, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I unceremoniously turned the box upside down, right out in front of the little hole and the torn garbage bag with a smug and satisfied smile. Be free, my little ones, and perform the acts that your rodent-like nature compels you to do. Eat. Breed. Infest. <laughs> <laughs> and infest they surely shall. Give it a couple weeks, man. You gotta have more mice than you know what to do with. And when you see one of them in the kitchen, you just smile like a proud father. <laughs> You're like, hi, babies. I smiled and watched them retreat into their newly found garbage nest when I heard something that made my blood run cold. Uh-oh. The front door slammed shut and a familiar winded wheezy breathing made its way down the hall. I was caught red-handed. I turned around and beheld him standing there with a mini fridge beside him in the doorway. Ugh, it was too soon. <laughs> My precious little minions had not yet had time to set to work. I couldn't risk them yet. I had to improvise and fast. That is kismet. What sort of timing? <laughs> this dude has a proximity alarm in his room or something like that. How does something like that happen? What kind of lie could you possibly tell to get yourself out of this? Bourgeois beard. What the hell are you doing in my room, OP? I told you not to come in here. OP, your door was open, man, and, uh, I smelled something horrible. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's a good lie. So I figured I'd come in and check it out. Whatever it was, I could smell it in the hall, and I figured that I should probably throw it away. Smooth. <laughs> Bourgeois beard. Uh, what did I tell you about touching my stuff? Bro, you, got, you don't got front like an alpha for your lady there, okay? I have no interest in your garbage hoard. But OP capitulates for the sake of the scheme and says, You know what? You're right, dude. I'm out of line right now. I shouldn't have come in here. Should have just shut the door. Bourgeois Beard exuded the smug aura of an alpha male waggling his peen over his territory. 
<laughs> yeah, we all know that peen waggling. Who hasn't been there once or twice? On the waggling side and, and the waggler side, both. <laughs> Bourgeois Beard was asserting his dominance in front of Yandere Beard, and just this one time, I would play along and act like he was in charge. I had to buy more time while my little swarm retreated into the mounds of filth and the walls and found their niche in which to multiply. This was their shot at life and a chance to do my bidding. I could not fail. <laughs> you think they're really that observant? They're both living in the trash pile. I don't think an extra bit of crinkling garbage is gonna catch their attention, honestly. <laughs> But, uh, OP nervously glanced out of the corner of his eye, down at the garbage mound and the tiny hole that I had made. I kicked some dirty clothes on the floor in mock sheepishness, pushing it closer to the caved-in section of wall, which I had made in an effort to cover it. Bourgeois Beard, uh, So, are you gonna leave? OP, well, I mean... Bourgeois beard. Dude, get out! <laughs> and this is when you waggle your peen right back and say, Make me! <laughs> what are you gonna do then? Then again, I don't really know or remember about the size disparity between Bourgeois beard and OP. <laughs> but if OP is bigger than I say, Yeah, do it. Make him move you. Invite him to embarrass himself. But instead, OP. Plays contrite once more, letting out a fake sigh of exasperation and saying, All right, I made my way past the gruesome twosome who stood between me and the hall, muttering my fake apologies. As I sidled past them and got to my door, I could feel their stares upon me. I went to open the door, but Bourgeois Beard stopped me. Bourgeois Beard, uh, Did you talk to the housing office today? Oh my god, he's got connections or something. <laughs> What's going on with this guy? OP? Yeah, I did actually. Oh no, I think OP told Bourgeois Beard that he was going to do that in the last episode. Alright, I remember now. Bourgeois Beard's not a sidekick. Don't worry, everybody. <laughs> Bourgeois Beard? Hey, what did they say? Are you getting another place? OP? They said they couldn't do it. All the dorms are full up. They told me that I could apply for a different dorm room at the end of the semester, but that right now, they couldn't do anything. I hate to say it, but it looks like I'm stuck with you for the next couple of months, Bourgeois Beard. You're joking, right? Why don't you just get a job and, and rent a place? No, you bitch. <laughs> get out of my face. Try to run my life. OP says... Because I'm taking too many classes for that on too irregular a schedule. I'm not going to let my grades suffer just because you want me gone. So just blast some more Darude and pretend that I don't exist for all I care. I could hear the incredulous scoffs of both Bourgeois Beard uh, and Yandere Beard uh, as I stepped into my room. <laughs> they mumbled to each other, probably about how much of a jerk I was and then retreated into the garbage nest. I sent up a small prayer to the heavens for the rapid multiplication of the swarm. You're gonna have to make a sacrifice or something. <laughs> this is not the sort of prayer that gets answered. This is about all I have time for today, though, and we'll return to another installment of Bourgeois Beard in the not-so-distant future when my schedule is a bit more free. Now, a big part of me wishes that I hadn't seen anything in advance and spoiled it for myself and possibly even for you <laughs> while putting it into the read time estimator. This is why I don't read things in advance, because I want to get my first reaction, but out of damn near 500 videos, this is the first time that it has happened, probably because I was so freaking curious about <laughs> what it was that was going to happen in Bourgeois Beard. My unconscious mind is just like, grab a word. <laughs> you know what's gonna happen, just grab a word. And I surely did. I gotta be a, more than a little frustrated at OP, but I guess he is trying to take matters into his own hands. He seems to be a restless sort of dude. A lot of nervous energy going on in these posts, you know? 
Whereas I would be content to just let sleeping dogs lie, ride it out, you know, let him get caught up in his own crap and shipped off to jail, possibly. <laughs> and just uh, do my own thing. Pretend that they don't exist at all and allow them to do the same to me. But I guess infesting the apartment you live in with uh, 20 rats is also another way to go. <laughs> Good lord, man. I probably would have been really tempted to keep at least one or two of those rats for myself because I just love rodents so much. They're so adorable. But yeah, that would probably implicate me more than anything else. So, okay, little babies, I'll see you around the house sometime. <laughs> <laughs> and I do suspect that the swarm will take if they're able to walk around and eat stuff all on their own. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see what kind of fallout that causes. <laughs> and I hope that you guys will join me for it. Well, congratulations, bro. She obviously must have lied to you, and now you're going to be a daddy. <laughs> you are the father. Bourgeois Beard Part 10, an unexpected surprise. Yeah, the ending <laughs> was the unexpected surprise for me, bro. I thought it was going to go on and on, but I, I think 10 parts is a, a good thing to end it at. You know, I think Link Beard was 10 parts. Stealth Beard was somewhere around 10 parts. It seems to be the right length for a saga. Anyways, Hey friends! Hi, Red X! Hello, use a valuable excuse. We'll miss you! Bye-bye! <laughs> Bye-bye! It looks like I've got some time to write, so let's continue the story of Bourgeois Beard, shall we? You can find the rest of it over here, Red X playlist. Oh, that's so beautiful! <laughs> Before we get into the story, let's get into the cast list. We've got YB, that's Yandere Beard, the scorned lover who never was who now is of Bourgeois Beard. <laughs> A danger-haired, refrigerator-shaped humanoid, unrepentant of her vicious misrepresentation of my garbage-dwelling roommate. Yeah, but all that's water out of the bridge now. You don't need to worry about that none too much. She let him stick it in her, so, uh, I guess <laughs> we just forgot about the horrible things that happened between the two of them. Bourgeois Beard, that's BB, the communist copulator himself. Ugh, victim of a massive propaganda campaign wherein he was slandered as a sexual predator. He lives in the trash, and he eats the trash, and he most assuredly is the trash. I eat trash. I'm the trash man. <laughs> I'm the trash man. And then I start eating garbage. OP, oh, hey, that's me. Uh, just another uni student who's caught between a garbage rock and a trash place, trying to survive this semester to the best of my abilities, and admittedly also getting in my kicks while doing so. Kicks include infesting his roommate's neckbeard horde and uh, causing other people to commit mouse genocide as a result. I really feel bad for those mices. I don't know if I pushed that enough in the last episode. It's, it's really not a nice thing to do. Sentient creatures should not be a means to an end, but I don't know, man. <laughs> We've established some things about this OP, and I, I can't say that I'm super surprised. Anyways, with my infestation in place, <laughs> I retired to my room that evening. The week wore on in earnest. My moments of solitude perfunctorily interrupted by the pulsing melody of techno as I struggled to keep pace with my coursework and whittle away the hours. Does he really not want to listen to anything else? There's <laughs> centuries of music out there. There's all kinds of stuff to dip your toes into, but just this one song forever. <laughs> the beard knows what he likes, I guess. Bourgeois Beard thankfully kept to himself during this time, either locked away in his room with Yandere Beard, or disappearing for a whole day or two to spend time with her over at her place. Bless. <laughs> the solitude was nice, needless to say, and it left me time to check in on how my swarm of rats was coming along. I mean, aren't they mice, not rats, because there's a difference? And also they were, uh, I think, hoppers instead of pinkies, if they're able to subsist by themselves at this point. 
but I guess that's just rat nerd stuff. <laughs> I don't expect that OP would know this offhand. On the nights when Bourgeois Beard wasn't around, I would fill up cups with water and leave them by the caved-in hole in the drywall, or I'd drop a block of ramen near the entrance to the home that I'd made for my minions, and of course, Bourgeois Beard could never tell, because his room was already a den of absolute chaos. And when I would return to examine the libations I had left for my furry little friends, who will soon be dead, let me remind you. <laughs> Don't call them your friends, you've sentenced them to death. But I am appreciative that you're not making them eat bleach pizza, at the very least. Then they wouldn't be thriving much at all, you see. <laughs> I was pleased to see that these offerings were being gnawed upon with increasing intensity. They were growing, they were thriving, and I was swelling with anticipation. A day would come wherein they would be too loud or too numerous for even that dopey communist to ignore the fact that something was growing inside the walls of his room. I'm just gonna hide under the sink till y'all go to sleep, then I'm gonna come out and make my poops and your kicks. I don't actually think that he would care that much. <laughs> He'd be like, okay, I guess that's how it is now. They will also help fight the people's revolution <laughs> or whatever. Uh, the real rub is gonna come when they flow out of his room. They run out of room inside of his walls and start chewing into the neighbors, which is basically bound to happen with any infestation. So, with that week concluded, I was surprised to find myself actually being caught up with my homework. I had, for the first time in a while, some time for myself. <gasps> ah, blessed. <laughs> I needed some exercise, honestly. Being trapped in my dormitory by the dim glow of a computer screen or having my face stuffed in a book was taking its toll on my mental well-being. And I decided that I'd go for a jog, maybe go window shopping for some stuff that I'd never be able to afford as a college student. Yeah, but it's good to know what you want, right? <laughs> People are like, what do you want for a birthday Christmas? I'm like, here's my Amazon wish list. <laughs> here's 300 items you can pick from. You could get a cheap t-shirt or uh, fancy electronics. Most people will opt for the t-shirt, but I don't mind that at all. I just feel grateful that you was thinking of me. So yeah, I do window shopping too, but uh, on the computer, which probably is not good for the mental health, but <laughs> it's whatever. I'm alive for now. What do you want? <laughs> Sometimes self-torture can be fun. <laughs> I always say a window shopping is fun. Uh. It's a droopy dog thing. <laughs> Does anybody remember droopy dog saying that? I remember seeing it in a cartoon once, and it stuck with me to this day. I don't know why. My brain's weird. <laughs> All of this was, of course, a nice change of pace. The warm spring weather, the sunlight, and the fresh air did wonders for myself. With the day getting late, however, I was now ready to return home. Well, that was a brief trip, wasn't it? Tell me some of the stuff you want, OP. What are your hopes and dreams, huh? <laughs> As I crossed the threshold into the house, I saw Bourgeois Beard sitting alone in the living room. He was seated on the couch and just staring off into the distance. He was in his own little world. As I came in, he came around and I cocked my head at him. Usually he'd be locked in his room playing video games. Never had I once seen him just sitting in the front room doing nothing. Was that some girl troubles? <laughs> OP. Uh, hey dude, what's going on? Bourgeois Beard. Uh, hey OP. OP, what you doing? <laughs> Bourgeois Beard. I'm just thinking. <laughs> OP, oh yeah? What you thinking about? He drew in a deep breath that shuddered his gelatinous frame. Something was upsetting him, I could already tell. Had his relationship with Yandere Beard already soured? Did they get in a fight? Maybe. I had to pry. Bourgeois Beard. Yandere Beard thinks she's pregnant. <laughs> it's not his. <laughs> Somebody called this out already in the comments. 
and she missed her period, and she's going to get a pregnancy test right now. LP, I see. Simple question. Have you been using contraception? Bourgeois beard. No. And she said she couldn't have kids. And she told me that she got her tubes tied to fight the patriarchy. <laughs> uh, oh, stop it. <laughs> that tickles me pink, man. <laughs> Jesus. OP. Well, congratulations, bro. She obviously must have lied to you and... Now you're gonna be a daddy! <laughs> you are the father! <laughs> Maybe, if she's not lying again. I mean, whether the kid is actually his or not, yeah, you could be a, a father to the child, but... Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know about shackling yourself to that forever. She goes send you to jail and or take half your stuff <laughs> the first chance she gets. Beware, bourgeois beard. Beware! I mean, my response was probably not the right response, <laughs> but uh, it worked for me. Bourgeois beard shook with nervous energy as I finished my exclamatory laudation. He stayed silent. He was not happy about this revelation one little bit. <laughs> I mean, nobody's ever truly ready, you know? You just kind of roll with the punches. You thought you were a big enough boy to uh, have sex without any contraception? Well, guess what? You're a big enough boy to deal with the consequences, aren't you? <sighs> Bourgeois Beard says, I'm not ready, man. I got my whole life ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> Having a baby won't kill you, Bourgeois Beard. <laughs> I can't finish school if I have to raise a kid. I can barely afford to feed myself. Besides, how am I going to lead a revolution <laughs> if I have to play dad? I got priorities, OP, and this will stop all of them. <laughs> uh, lead the revolution, he says. How about you just uh, recruit the baby into the revolution? And then you'll have, you know, you and baby and, well, that's the whole revolution <laughs> for now. But maybe we'll grow in numbers with uh, the rat swarm that is shortly uncovered. <laughs> uh, holy shit, man. I'm just shocked he's still on about that stuff. It's so deeply ingrained into his personality that it is... Uh, Fascinating, but also really, really frustrating. <laughs> oh, bourgeois beard. OP tries to cheer him up, I guess. OP says, look on the bright side. Look who you got pregnant. She's probably going to abort it. <laughs> and then you can continue to be a genetic dead end, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, OP is such a dick, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he has never stopped being a jerk through this whole saga, and I mean, again, I, I kind of got to respect him for it. <laughs> it's so hilarious. Uh, you see, there's a silver lining to everything. You'll be able to LARP well into your golden years. <laughs> uh, bourgeois beard. You, you think she'd really abort it? OP, have you looked at who you're banging? Yeah, she'll probably do it. <laughs> She's also probably going to make you pay for it, though. Might be time to ask your mom for some moolah again. Is this a money-grubbing scheme? Is she trying to make him raise another man's child? There's so many ways that this could go, man. I think Bourgeois Beard might actually even be sterile because of all the bleach pizza he ate. <laughs> That's my work in theory, anyways. Bourgeois beard. I can't ask my mom for money. She cut me off, dude. OP? Yeah, well, I would too if I were her. <laughs> you said some rude stuff to her, man. Maybe if you apologize, tell her that you goofed, and that you need her help to make sure that you don't inadvertently ruin your life, she might help you out. I mean, I can't speak for her, though. 
Take it as a growing pain, <laughs> bourgeois beard. Well, what if she doesn't want to abort it? <laughs> OP, why wouldn't she, dude? She probably thinks having a kid is oppression or some stupid crap like that. Dude, you're probably already in the green. I don't know, man. She probably will, but <laughs> essentially you're just blowing around on the winds. You don't really know how this is all going to turn out. So, yeah, I can see why it's a, a bit of a freak out for Bourgeois Beard. But, again, you, you made this choice. You're like, oh, no contraception? That's fine. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> well, here it is. <laughs> Bourgeois beard. Well, she has said stuff like that before, but what if she changes her mind? OP? Well, then you're fucked. <laughs> He's so encouraging. And you are going to be paying a lot of child support. Whatever, I gotta study. Good luck with your parenting problems. <laughs> uh, oh, God. I am gonna miss you, OP. None of the other OPs we've had have treated a beard this rough. <laughs> Just no pity for him at all. Bourgeois beard actually hasn't done all that much wrong, but... <laughs> I'd be lying if I said I wasn't enjoying it on some level. So, I left Bourgeois beard to his own devices in the living room and retired for the afternoon, settling in on my bed with my laptop. Yeah, movie time! <laughs> Half of me felt bad for him, but then I remembered that he was the author of his own misery, and fixing his problems was not my prerogative. He'd been stupid enough to stick his dick in crazy after all, and we all know what they say about doing that. Don't. <laughs> I put on something stupid and just zoned out, pausing only to listen to Bourgeois Beard shuffle into his room and close the door behind him. And then a gunshot. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it wasn't long, however, before I heard his door open again. A soft tapping came at my doorframe. I got up to see what my roommate could possibly want from me. Maybe he wants to borrow a coat hanger. Oh, that's a terrible joke. <laughs> Opie opens the door and says, What do you want, Bourgeois Beard? Hey, uh... I think something weird is going on in my room. I was just laying in my bed, thinking about stuff, and I swear I could hear something moving in the wall. <laughs> well, it didn't take him very long to uncover it, and he's actually more proactive about it than I thought a neckbeard would ever be, so uh, props to you, bourgeois beard, I suppose, on this at least. OP says, huh, how interesting. What did it sound like, <laughs> Bourgeois Beard? I don't know, but it was definitely small, and I thought I heard a squeak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just ignore that, bro. Play some Call of Duty or something. Uh, listen to Sandstorm. I know you like that song. Relax and don't think too much about it. <laughs> OP says, oh, man. Sounds like you got rats or something in there. Shuffling in the walls? Squeaking? You probably brought him in from diving through all that trash for food, bro, and didn't even realize it. <laughs> Just shameless, OP. It is not your prerogative to fix this Beardo's problem, but don't exacerbate it. <laughs> but what is done is done, I suppose. And, uh, hate OP if you must, but it was a pretty solid plan to force the college's hand to get him into a new room or whatever. I'm just sad that a few hundred rodents had to die in the process. Ah, <sighs> not worth it. Should've just kept your head down, stuck it out. But that wouldn't make a very interesting story, now would it? <laughs> Bourgeois Beard says, Ah, crap. I can't afford an exterminator. Just wait outside the mouse hole with a hammer. You gonna be all right. <laughs> OP. I mean, well, that sounds like a campus problem to me. If I were you, I'd go down to the housing office and let them know that they've got a rat infestation in this dormitory, man. 
I'm sure the school would be more than willing to cover the expenses because that kind of stuff is serious. They carry diseases and crap. If they're in your room, then it's only a matter of time before they start spreading throughout the building, assuming that they haven't done so already. Wow, that's a great plan of action, OP. Almost like you had this entire thing planned out from the beginning. <laughs> Bourgeois beard. I don't got time for this, OP. I gotta figure out what Yandere beard and I are gonna do about her baby. Her baby. <laughs> It's not your baby, it's her baby. Write that one down. Bourgeois Beer seems like a nice guy. I hope his wife's boyfriend lets him play on the Xbox as much as he wants. <laughs> OP just shrugs and says, Welcome to adulthood, my dear friend. There's never enough time in the day to do what needs to be done. Look, it, it probably won't even take that long at all. They'll probably just ask what unit you're in, and then call the exterminator. No big deal. Bourgeois beard. Uh, can't you do it? <laughs> I've done enough for you, OP. Nah, man. I got a mountain of work that I've got to get done. You're taking less units than me. Besides, they're in your room, and you probably brought them in here in the first place. Oh, look at these accusations. OP just dropping lies from his lips like it's nothing at all. Now that is one thing that I don't like at all. So OP just says, no, 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 this is your problem. You go down to the housing office on Monday and you let them know that we've got some vermin in the walls. Besides, you don't keep your mind off the baby thing for a little bit. It'll be good for you. Make a man out of you yet, bro. <laughs> kind of. Some approximation of a man anyways. Bourgeois beard. Eh, fine. I'll go talk to them. OP, I'm holding you to it, dude. I'm trying not to get sick because we've got a rat infestation. Bourgeois beard. I said I was gonna do it. Jesus. OP, I'll believe that when I see it. Okay, but just to be clear, uh, rats are really clean and lovely, and it's really the fleas that carry the diseases, so... While I don't want them in my house uninvited, disease is probably the last thing on the list that I have to worry about. I'm more worried about them like, you know, breaking into the pantry and pooping in my cornflakes. Like, oh, is this Raisin Bran? No, <laughs> don't eat that. <laughs> oh, so I shut the door on Bourgeois Beard and I smiled. The cards were coming up OP. While the infestation I had deposited in his room never reached an untenable threshold, it had already done its work. He simply had to hear, to complain, and to bring the scrutiny of the housing office down on our little dormitory. My freedom was at hand, all the sweeter that I most likely wouldn't even get the bill. <laughs> I wanted to bellow with laughter like an evil genius. <laughs> I wanted to rub it in his face and snub his nose in it. I didn't, however, and I simply returned to my movies with the same smile still plastered on my face. It is really some evil genius type of stuff though, isn't it? <laughs> Sacrificing so many rodents in order to, what, just move. <laughs> <laughs> it's so ridiculous, dude. How can you not feel the least bit bad for what you've done? Ugh. But it is what it is, I suppose, and yeah, I gotta respect OP's honesty. So, Sunday came and went, uneventfully. Monday passed quickly into obscurity, until late that Monday evening, when Bourgeois Beard finally came lumbering in through the door. I was reading a textbook on the sofa when he arrived, and I immediately greeted him with the exuberance of a puppy. OP, did you go to the housing office? <laughs> you seem way overexcited. Did you have a hand in all this? But instead, Bourgeois Beard just says, I did. OP, good. I saw one of those mousy little bastards on the counter today when I woke up this morning. We need to get this dealt with ASAP. So what did they say? What's going on? Bourgeois Beard. Uh, they're going to call an exterminator uh, to come check out the place in the next couple of days. OP? Oh, that's good. I hope they get it sorted out quickly. 
How is expecting parenthood treating you? <laughs> Bourgeois beard. Uh, not good. I saw your dairy beard in my poli sci class today, and she didn't want anything to do with me. I tried to talk to her about the results of her pregnancy test, but she just shoved me off and wouldn't tell me the results. I asked her if she was going to get an abortion or keep it, and she got angry with me and told me to leave her alone. OP? Uh, yeah. That'll happen, I guess. Eh, I'm sure she'll come around. After all, you're her baby daddy now. <laughs> oh, a fate worse than death, I would argue. You are bonded to this woman for life now. Hopefully you can get a bit of trauma bonding done with the baby, since, you know, <laughs> you both have to live under the boot heel of Yandere Beard. The sullen look on Bourgeois Beard's face only amplified with each little jab that I extended in his direction. I mean, I can't lie. I was enjoying the entirety of this situation. <laughs> You're sick, OP! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I guess I'm enjoying it too. I'm sick too. Half of me suspected that young Dairy Beard wasn't actually pregnant at all. Or if she was, that it wasn't even Bourgeois Beard's child. If she was pregnant, I didn't have faith in Bourgeois Beard being wise enough to ask for a paternity test. Eh, again, not my problem, I reminded myself. The evening concluded with very little fanfare, as did the next couple of days. As I woke up to get ready for classes the next morning, I could hear the pronounced knocking of someone at the door. I opened it to see a middle-aged man dressed in gray coveralls, wearing a shirt that depicted a roach getting zapped by lightning. This must be the exterminator that the housing office was so kind to call for us. OP, hey, good morning, exterminator. Hey, I got a call that there were rodents in this apartment. I'm here to check it out. Can I come in? OP, absolutely. Uh, allow me to show you around. <laughs> Welcome to my trash heap. <laughs> I let him in the house, past the caved in drywall, and up to Bourgeois Beard's door. I banged on the door frame mercilessly, hoping that I jarred him loose from the kindest of slumbers in the rudest way possible. <laughs> OP still hates this dude, man. No pity, no sympathy, no nothing. <laughs> it's so wild. From the other side of the door, a cascade of garbage came tumbling down, and I heard a cry of, Ah, fuck! Once more. <laughs> then the door opened, and Bourgeois Beard, half asleep, stared at myself and the new arrival. Bourgeois Beard, uh, Who's this? OP, it's the exterminator that the housing office called. He's here to check out the place. I figured since you were the one who was hearing stuff, he should probably look in your room first. Bourgeois Beard, uh, can't this wait for another hour? Exterminator, no! <laughs> I knew I liked that guy. <laughs> no nonsense, no fuss, no muss. I got a job to do, let me in your damn room. I kind of like him too. Bourgeois Beard mumbled his quiet grievances as he let the exterminator into his abode. I can only imagine how overpowering the sensory assault was to unacquainted senses. Then I remembered that this guy was an exterminator and probably had to deal with filthy crap every day of his life. You think so? I wouldn't peg exterminators like a dirty job. Drop a couple of bug bombs in the house and GTFO. <laughs> Easy day. But yeah, I guess they do gotta crawl around in attics and whatnot. Anyways, the pronounced degree of acridity in this den was probably nothing to this hardened warrior's resolve. <laughs> That's why he's got the Arnie voice. Still, I like to think that he was quietly judging Bourgeois Beard as he waded through this literal garbage heap. I left the two together as I departed for my classes for the day. The only thing that was left was to wait for the fallout that was surely to come. 
and also the new apartment that was to come. Hey, congratulations. Your scheme, <laughs> you weren't punished for it at all. You actually won a prize from it. And yeah, indeed, the fallout did come. The exterminator had tendered his report to the housing office, all right, and informed them not only of the rodent infestation, but the mountains of garbage piled in that armpit butt cum scented room. <laughs> oh, God. And, of course, the structural damage to the building itself. It seems, too, that in the time I left those little mice to their own rapidly maturing devices, they had begun to spread out through the building, gnawing their way through wood and drywall deeper and deeper into the structure, as mice are wont to do. And the exterminator couldn't resolve the situation just from Bourgeois Beard's room alone, no, the entire building would require fumigation for complete removal. Those poor little Mises, they don't even know what's coming for them. Get, get a, at least a couple of them out, OP. Show some sort of remorse for using them in this way. Ah, it's so sad. The dragon's hoard that he had accumulated did not, in fact, bode well for Bourgeois Beard. A hefty bill for the to-be-rendered services of the exterminator materialized on our door one day, along with a passively aggressive written note about how the entire building would need to be fumigated. Whoopsie. <laughs> the students were notified that the administration intended to resolve the issue before the infestation spread to outlying structures, and students occupying the structures were encouraged to find alternative lodging as fast as possible until this situation could be resolved. Well, that seems inconvenient. Like, what are you supposed to do? You're just kicking me out of my house? Not gonna pay for a hotel or anything? What kind of freaking Mickey Mouse joke college is this? <laughs> oh, boy, would you look at the time? You gotta get the fuck out of here. No, I don't accept any of this. Honestly, OP should act enraged and then, like, gather up some students and file a class action lawsuit against the college. <laughs> That's really the only way that he could one-up himself at this point. Sue the college for something that I did. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I, myself, thinking that my escape had been masterfully engineered, however, was in for a rude awakening. I had nowhere to turn. I was free, but freeing myself meant that I was now in free fall. That class action sounded better and better, isn't it? <laughs> there was nowhere for me to go. For a second, I tried calling Maga Beard and asking him to let me sleep on his couch, but he had already opened his doors to another student from the dormitory, and it would just be too many people beneath his roof. To be fair, after spending time with his complete polar opposite, ugh, I was rather done with people like him in general as it was. I had no money, and the reality was that I had to choose between passing my courses or renting a place. I had nobody to turn to at the campus anymore. I plucked up my courage, called home, and let my family know that an unanticipated turn of events had effectively ruined my quest for a college degree. You shot yourself right in the freaking foot. <laughs> uh, that's probably the best end that this could have, honestly. The family understood. I packed my bags, dropped out of class, and returned home, not even seeing through the entirety of the semester. Upon returning, I said, screw it. Got a job doing construction, where I was surrounded by actual normal people for a change. And I saved up my pennies until I could afford a vehicle and eventually my own place. I still work with the same company to this day, and I must admit, it's a comfy life. Devoid of madness and self-important political grandstanding. Honestly, I don't miss any of it. Sometimes, though, I wonder whatever happened to Bourgeois Beard and Yandere Beard. Had they actually conceived a little socialist sodomite of their own? <laughs> <laughs> Did she ever get salty enough at Bourgeois Beard to actually level the charges of rape at him after they had sex? I mean, I can't really say because I legitimately don't know. There's no nice bow which I can tie onto the end of this story. 
If I could have it end any which way, I must admit, I would hope that it would be a happy ending for Bourgeois Beard. Stupid, idealistic me wants to believe that people can change their ways and subsequently change their fortunes, but I don't think that the stars or the heavens above will ever be so kind to that magnanimous pervert. <laughs> Honestly, the fact that OP chopped his own balls off and had to leave from college because of the thing that he did, that is the nice bow for me. I still have a lot of questions, especially about Maga Beard. We didn't get a whole heck of a lot about him. But yeah, Bourgeois Beard, Yandere Beard, uh, what's going on with them? You should look them up and let me know what happened. Do you still remember their first and last names? I could pay for a little uh, something something and we could figure out exactly what happened. Go ahead, send me a message on Discord. Hopefully we can piece it all together before the compilation comes out and I can, like, add a little addendum right here telling everybody what happened. Honestly, a beautiful story. Uh, some big karmic bitch slapping going on here and what else can I really ask for? The best laid plans of mice and men, as they say. Oh, ho, ho! It's especially applicable here. <laughs> I really did enjoy this story, and I hope that you guys did as well. I hope you'll like, comment, and or subscribe. If you did, of course, maybe check out uh, them links in the description. You know, we got all kinds of playlists if you're looking for a different flavor. Podcasts, I'm everywhere. Spotify, iTunes, etc. There's also plugs, Teespring if you're trying to rock the merch. Mine and my wife's channel, Mr. and Mrs. Red X. My Amazon affiliate link, which currently goes to my microphone. But if you click through there, buy anything else on Amazon, I get a little kickback, which is super cool. You don't pay any extra, just to be clear. They just uh, break me off a little something at Amazon. And God knows they have enough money, so... <laughs> if they can send some my way, I'm grateful for it. Especially if you were gonna buy something on Amazon anyways, right? You can also share the video around on your social medias because that's a super cool thing to do. You can also say hi to me on my social medias, which are Twitter, Discord, Facebook, all linked down there for your perusal. We've also got my Patreon and my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons. I'd like to thank them all as I do every episode. So thank you, Jerry, Jerry much. Robert Waits, Camille, Sarah, Jarhead, Jerry, Ura, Logan Wolf, River Jerry, blah, 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 Conrad Inge. Hello, Mr. Red X, sir. I'm still in the secure containment unit at Red X Industries. I have two negative tests, but they won't let me leave. Welcome to the new normal. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is how it has to be. <laughs> Captain Cloud, Jerry, Hong Kong, <laughs> Aaron W, <laughs> Twisted Child, Sarah Wanoage, Cinnamon Susie, Four Old Lang Sign, Fire Drake, Giggle Jerry, Hee Hee, Are You Rary, Gnub, Yajir, Do You Fit Yup, Tip Tat. I know it's the most different Jerry spelling backwards, but isn't it more fun to say it or try say it? <laughs> we also got Jerry the Pirate, Arr. Silent Revolver, the original Jerry, Jerry Kitsune, <laughs> Matthew Simmons, Satori, 211 Jerry, The Return of Jerry, a jury of jubilantly juggling Jerry. <laughs> oh God, what are you doing to me? And a Justy Dragonia Jerry, Alunia, Althea, Ananaki, Assassin Pug Jerry, Bang Bang, Atheist Jerry, he's so euphoric. <laughs> Aurora Wildheart, Bailey Joy, Bearded Jerry, watch over that guy. Bitch Gremlin, Blade the Hero, Blame his Fish, Blip Bloop Jerry, Blue Dubs. <laughs> Commander J Tag, I'm losing it already. Dennis Dayton, Dinosaur Nightlight, Disposable Waifu, Dr. Larks, welcome to the fold. Emergent Jewel, Aaron Lennox, Rose No Studio, Gypsy, Hadrian BR, have a minty New Year's Jerry's. That's right, super fresh, ultra fresh. I'm Slim Jerry, yes, I'm the real Jerry. All you want the Slim Jerry's such a stimulating. We don't have any other Slim Jerry's. <laughs> Irish Pirate, top of the morning to you. <laughs> and to your friends, Itchy Nuts, just scratch it, bro. A pimp named Jay Crisp, yes, you have to say the whole thing. J.M. Coon, Jennifer Schaefer, Jerismus Barbatus Cervicus. That's like Jerry with a barbed cervix. <laughs> My Latin is poor. <laughs> Uh, Jerry Blacktail, Jerry Nice, Jerry Evil, Jerry the Small Jerry did the other Jerry's, Jerry the Outlaw Mother Truck, a Hong Kong. Jerry was a race car driver, but I raced him in a boosted 87 Super and I blew a head gasket. <laughs> he tried to drive so goddamn fast, that's the point. Jerry, and I'm here to plow your snow, and also uh, plow your mom. <laughs> Uh, have at it, I suppose. John Hero, John Jerry, Jingleheimer Schmidt. Oh my god, that's my name too. I don't believe it. <laughs> Simbufa, Judge Jerry, I am the beard. It's <laughs> a Judge Dredd reference, isn't it? Nice. KJW Kajow, Crewy, Miss Monday, Lord Jerry, yo, leader of the Thunder Jerry's, uh, my lady dicks. Uh, we also got Jackets Rule, Melgar Destroyer, Mr. Jerry 13. He dropped the attic door key in his eye, hot pancakes while tripping some one legged server. Gonna have to wait a little while. <laughs> Mr. Carrot 797, Mikola Dimikiev, Natari, Nightmare Jerry. Or gave me Jerry Steve. Congrats on the marriage. Patron saint of chicken nuggies, Saint Jerry. Rahman. Phantom of the Pines. Jerrykins and Jerry Beth. Professor Tom Mariarty. Ramtide Lacrimates. Rose Jerry Miller. <laughs> T 
Tears of Kirby, Suri to the Lolita, Saucy Octopus, ah, Silo Imp, Staples, aka Jerry Yeet, Stephanie Goodner, Synaptic Boomstick, Brilliant Tamago, uh, Turning the Police, Tenta Monster, The One True Fusky, Tom, uh, what is the Jerry on the inside? The Cows, uh, Treeburg, Viking Jerry. We can't the lock on the attic and fell bobble Jimmy chew through the asbestos and escape. Be safe, everyone. <laughs> Will Mags, Comrade Mooney, Kira, you're a wizard, Jerry. Redwind, Goose says Honk, Naga Viper, Sight, Jerry the Cyborg, Saints Blessing, two inches of real alpha male. I'm scared. <laughs> a normal Jerry. Asbestos, please tell me you're not going to fight the human torch, Bobble Jerry. <laughs> Because it's fire retardant. <laughs> Hunter of Jerry's, the power of all things tasty. It is Tom, because Tom and Jerry never get along. Admiral T, Tank, Alunia, Amara, Atomic, Jerryzilla, AZ, Babsy Goon, Banish Knight, Barbushka's Irradiated Jam, Broken Spine, Horseradish, Cake Jerry. That's the original different Jerry. California Jerry Girl, hooray. Chevron 7 Lock, Chris Mesca, Cinnamon Bunny Dog, Corporal Admiral Furry Warrior, Woo Jerry, <laughs> Crib Titties, Cuban Jerry, The Fine Jerry, Dopamine Dangerous. So dangerous because we're going to OD, son. Electrical Funnet, Ghost of Alpha, He Knot, HMT Mayor, Holy Berry Jerry. <laughs> So many Jerry's, holy Barry. <laughs> or is it Halle Berry, Jerry? What's going on? Hydra Jerry, <laughs> Jeffrey, Jeffrey, my name's Jeffrey, Jer Alt of Rivia, <laughs> Jerry and Tom versus Happy New Year's Wavy Apocalypse, Jerry the Sussy Baka, Jerry's mom has got it going on. <laughs> That's all I want, and I've waited for so long. <laughs> Jerry all the Rivera, you check out that mustache. Jerry Bean, yum, Jerry Roxas, yay, Jerry's SDI got a new engine, congrats. <laughs> Jerry role-playing game. Uh, Judge Jerry and Executioner. Kid Marvelous. Son of Dude Perfect. <laughs> King Tom. Kitsikin. Life of a Guardian. Little Ann Woods. Lucia Lovecraft. Machia. ch ch, -ch, -ch CD. <laughs> Maybe next time, Midnight Sun, Milk Fed Gimp, <laughs> Miss Duchess, Not Invisible Angel, One Leg Jerry, Working at IHOP, or Gaming Cam, QWQ, Ghosty Raptor, She's My Jerry Pie, Go Drink a Mountain Dew, with a big surprise, Sheep Steve, <laughs> okay Steve, Smitty, Smitty Warman, Jaggerman Jensen, Snary the Snom Jerry, if you didn't know, Spoony the Rogue, Spoopy Scary Jerry, Tons are relevant all year round, <laughs> Steve Punk Kelly, The Gaslighting Terry, your keys are right there in the peanut butter, I, I don't know why you put them there, I was making a sandwich, I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the Necro Jerry card, the original Jerry, not to infinite Jerry and beyond, definitely. Tuna fish Jerry is some fishy going on. Yet another imaginative iteration of Jerry. <laughs> uh, Tom promised Jerry swears. Oh no, bad Jerry. And Tom, you good boy, no swears. Just facts, so excited. Go ahead and look by, uh, by everybody in the next video. Got it? Cool. <laughs> also, thank you to my one dollar patrons. Thank you guys so much. The Jerry Army, we strong. Jerry's and not Jerry's alike. You know. I definitely appreciate you guys helping me out, especially uh, during January, February, where the AdSense is like super low. I'm still making a, a full-time YouTube living, but uh, just barely. <laughs> so I can't thank the patrons enough, honestly. If anybody else wants to sign up, support, I would definitely be grateful for that. But if you can't afford to do it right now, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you'll come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. Because really, uh, the views is how my beard stays buttered. <laughs> In order to join us, you'll need to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Maybe like, uh, watch us some old Red X videos. Big brain time. <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I shall see you in the next one, and until then, bye bye